Do you feel like you don't speak enough French? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Chemise, shirt, chemise, chemise, shirt. Quelle chemise préfères-tu? Which shirt do you prefer? Quelle chemise préfères-tu? Pantalon, pants, pantalon, pantalon, pants. Remonte ton pantalon. Pull your pants up. Remonte ton pantalon. Robe, dress, robe, robe, dress. Je regrette de ne pas avoir acheté cette robe. I regret not buying that dress. Je regrette de ne pas avoir acheté cette robe. Dire. Say. Dire. Dire. Say. Comment je peux dire « Where is the station » en français How can I say « Where is the station » in French Comment je peux dire « Where is the station » en français Appel. Call. Appel. Appel. Call. Appelle-moi ce soir. Call me tonight. Appelle-moi ce soir. Trouver. Find. Trouver. Trouver. Find. Je crois que nous pouvons trouver un compromis. I believe we can find a compromise. Je crois que nous pouvons trouver un compromis. Propre. Clean. Propre. Propre. Clean. La serviette n'est pas propre. The towel is not clean. La serviette n'est pas propre. Sale. Dirty. Sale. Sale. Dirty. Cette assiette est sale. This plate is dirty. Cette assiette est sale. Carotte. Carrot. Carotte. Carotte. Carrot. Je coupe la carotte avec un couteau. I cut the carrot with a knife. Je coupe la carotte avec un couteau. Oignon. Onion. Oignon. 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 La soupe à l'oignon. Miam! French onion soup. Yummy. La soupe à l'oignon. Yum. Laitue. Lettuce. Laitue. Laitue. Lettuce. La laitue avec de la vinaigrette, c'est bon. Lettuce with vinaigrette is good. La laitue avec de la vinaigrette, c'est bon. Mouton. Cheap. Mouton. Mouton. Sheep. Le mouton mange de l'herbe. The sheep eats grass. Le mouton mange de l'herbe. Lapin. Rabbit. Lapin. Lapin. Rabbit. Ton lapin est très mignon. Your pet rabbit is very cute. Ton lapin 
est très mignon. Phoque, seal. Phoque, phoque, seal. Il y a des phoques en Antarctique. There are seals in Antarctica. Il y a des phoques en Antarctique. Nuage, cloud. Nuage. Nuage. Cloud. Il y a beaucoup de nuages. There are lots of clouds. Il y a beaucoup de nuages. Ensoleillé. Sunny. Ensoleillé. Ensoleillé. Sunny. Nice est une ville ensoleillée. Nice is a sunny city. Nice est une ville ensoleillée. De la pluie. Rainy. De la pluie. De la pluie. Rainy. Il y a de la pluie. It's rainy. Il y a de la pluie. Bébé. Baby. Bébé. Bébé. Baby. Il chante une berceuse à son bébé. He sings a lullaby to his baby. Il chante une berceuse à son bébé. Fille. Girl. Fille. Fille. Girl. Je crois connaître cette fille. I think I know this girl. Je crois connaître cette fille. Garçon. Boy. Garçon. Garçon. Boy. C'est un vilain garçon. He is a naughty boy. C'est un vilain garçon. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to get back on track after language learning failure. If you've ever made language learning a goal, you've also likely experienced failure. Maybe you quit studying for some time. Maybe you came back to try again later. But how do you bounce back after failing? Well, it might be easier than you think. In this episode, you'll discover one, the key points to consider after failing a goal, and two, the steps to getting back on track with language learning. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the cooking conversation cheat sheet. Learn all the must-know cooking phrases with this new cheat sheet. Download it for free right now. Second, our brand new visual flashcards. Want to speak more of the language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new printable visual flashcards, you'll learn over 1,500 words. Just download and print them out. Third, can you talk about your favorite shows? Learn how to say, no spoilers, what are you watching right now? And other useful words and phrases for video on demand. Fourth, what's your New Year's resolution? With this bonus phrase list, you'll learn to say, read more, save money, learn a language, and other common goals. Fifth, must know words and phrases for the new year. If you're learning the language and can't yet talk about the new year, then access this one minute vocabulary lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to get back on track after language learning failure. So, how do you get back on track with language learning after failing? Think back to your school days. Did you ever miss a homework assignment? Most of us did. You'd have to make it up and do the next one. You had to double up on your work. So if you've ever missed a goal, you might be tempted to do the same thing. Finish your old goal and achieve a new one. However, that might not be such a good idea. A key point to remember after failing a goal is don't set the same goal again. Let's explain why. One, 
If you've failed the goal before, there's a good chance that the goal might be too much for you. In that case, you want an easier goal. Two, you need to give yourself a chance to succeed. And if that requires setting a super easy goal that you actually can reach, then so be it, do that. For example, if you tried to learn 100 words in one month and failed, but you wanna try again, go for something smaller, like 20 words. Between trying and failing the 100 word goal again or reaching a smaller 20 word goal, you're much better off with the 20 word goal. It'll be better for your motivation to hit a super easy goal instead of failing multiple times in a row. It'll get you back in motion with language learning. Now that you know how to get back on track, here are some steps you can take. One, think back to the last language goal you set and failed. Was it last year's New Year's resolution? And was it something like, I just wanna be fluent, or I want to speak the language? You can let us know what your old goal was in the comments. Two, aim for a smaller, more realistic goal. With that last goal in mind, think about how you might make a new, easier goal. Remember, your goal should always be one, small, two, measurable, for example, one minute of conversation, 100 words, 10 grammar rules, 10 lessons, etc. And three, have a small time frame with a deadline. In other words, it's a goal for the week or for the month, and the deadline is January 31st, for example. So if your failed goal was to just speak fluently, aim for something smaller. Set a goal like, I wanna speak for one minute this month, or I wanna be able to introduce myself by the end of this week, or I want to master the alphabet by the end of this week, and schedule a deadline for yourself. All of these goals are small, measurable, specific, and easy to achieve. You'll easily know if you've reached one minute of speaking, if you've learned the alphabet, or learned how to say, my name is, in the language you're studying. So, now that you have a goal, three, Find a way to fit language learning into your life. Instead of creating new routines that you may have trouble sticking with, work with what you already have, your existing routines. If you already spend 10 minutes on chores in the morning, you can listen to a lesson and learn a bit of language. If you take a walk, you can listen to a lesson then. If you watch YouTube for an hour in the evening, you can spend five or 10 minutes watching one of our lessons. Piggybacking off of your existing daily routines is the easiest way to introduce language learning into your life. Okay, now let's talk about learning material. Four, get back on track with easy learning material. An easy way to restart learning is with our audio and video lessons. All you have to do is hit play and follow along. And if you have to, you can multitask. For example, as we mentioned, you can be doing chores and listening in. Taking steps like these can help you form study habits. It's a lot easier to listen and do what you usually do, as opposed to buying a textbook, setting aside time, sitting down, and trying to go through it, especially if you're not used to learning a language. Finally, another very easy thing you can do is take advantage of our word of the day lessons. These are daily emails that teach you one new word a day. The goal of these emails is to get you used to learning and create a simple routine. If you can stick with spending one quick minute every day learning a new word, then you can grow to stick with almost any other routine. So to recap, we often fail and give up on our goals because we overwhelm ourselves. Whether it's with an unrealistic goal, a heavy routine, or complicated resources, you want to do the opposite, avoid overwhelming yourself. If you failed a goal before, aim for a smaller goal. Avoid heavy learning routines and piggyback off of your existing daily routines. If you take a walk, then use that time to listen to audio lessons. And finally, use easy learning material, such as our audio and video lessons on our website. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to adjust your routine and learn language from home. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What if you could go from struggling to speak to speaking with confidence? Reviewing is a huge part of achieving this. In this video, you'll learn six ways our language learning program helps you review. Number one, replay your lessons. If you're using our language learning program, you can download lessons and review them at a later date. 
And since lessons are three to 15 minutes long, your preparation and review sessions won't take a lot of time. The easiest way to review is to simply replay past lessons. Of course, make sure you pay attention. Number two, read the lesson notes. Imagine you've finished reading a big book or watching a video course. Do you remember everything you've learned? Of course not. When you get a lot of information at one time, it's normal not to be able to recall all of it immediately. But you can refresh your memory by going back to reread, rewatch, and take notes. It takes effort. This is why you get lesson notes with every lesson. These notes give you the lesson in writing, so you can review the conversation, the vocabulary, grammar, and cultural points quickly. Number three, listen to lines from the lesson conversation with the dialogue tool. The dialogue tool is a premium feature that our users love because you get line by line breakdowns of conversations. For every line of the conversation, you get audio, the transcript, and the translations. This tool helps you master entire conversations, speak faster, and improve your listening. You can listen to each line one by one, read along, and repeat out loud. Repeating out loud will help your speaking skills. And because you can listen as much as you want, you can also use this tool to work on your listening skills. Number four, the vocabulary slideshow. With this, you can review words and phrases from a specific lesson. Just press play and watch the slideshow. For each word, you'll hear the native pronunciation. You'll also get the meaning, the text, and translations right there on the screen. You can even put the slideshow on loop to review as much as you want. Number five, practice your speaking skills with the voice recorder. With the voice recorder tool, you can record yourself and compare your speech to that of native speakers. This can help you find out where you can improve your speaking skills. It's a great way to practice speaking and perfect your pronunciation. Number six, review conversations with the dialogue audio track. The dialogue track gives you just the conversation. It's purely the target language, no translations. You get it for every lesson. Listen to it again and again until you completely understand every single word. This is a great way to see how much you understand and it's a great language immersion tactic. Wanna learn new words and phrases fast so you can speak and understand more of your target language? In this video, you'll learn all about space repetition flashcards. You'll learn about why this particular study tool is so useful and how using it can help keep vocabulary words fresh in your mind. First, here's what's new with our flashcards. You can now access your flashcards on any mobile device. They're mobile responsive. So visit the site on any device, iPhone, iPad, Android, or any tablet. Access the flashcards and learn anywhere, anytime. But what if you're a new language learner and have never seen this tool before? Second, what are spaced repetition flashcards? What are they? And how do spaced repetition flashcards teach you words and phrases better than regular flashcards? First, imagine a regular flashcard. Imagine a teacher is quizzing you with paper flashcards. On the front, you see the word in the target language. The meaning of the word is on the other side. Your teacher shows you the target language word and asks you what the word means. If you get the answer right, your teacher puts the card in a pile of correct answer cards. If you get the answer wrong, your teacher puts the card in a pile of wrong answer cards. Spaced repetition flashcards are like a digital version of this, but a computer sorts your answers into correct answers and wrong answers, and then chooses which cards to quiz you on accordingly. With a spaced repetition flashcard, you see a word. You mark whether you know it or not. You learn whether you are right or wrong. Then you get the next word. But what exactly is spaced repetition? Third, how spaced repetition works. This is the part of the tool that makes the flashcard so powerful. If you get a word wrong, you'll see that card more often until you get it right. The card will keep popping up until you remember the answer. Spaced repetition flashcards help you focus on the words you don't know yet or the words you're weak with instead of asking you to review words you already know well. If you get a word right, you'll see that word again in perhaps two days. If you get the word right again after waiting two days, you might see the word four days later, then 16 days later, and so on. As you study and remember words, the flashcards will appear less frequently. This is because you're remembering the vocabulary and don't need to spend time studying the words you already know. Spaced repetition flashcards help you study words at the right time. 
The flashcards will track your progress. This means you don't have to remember which words you got right or wrong. The flashcards you are quizzed on will be customized to your knowledge level every time you study. And the quizzes will also help you keep your memory fresh. Remember, we don't learn things simply by seeing them once. By repeating our studies over a period of time, we remember things better. And the best part is that you can study vocabulary and phrases in just a few minutes a day. So if you're on the train or bus going to work, you can put that time to use. Take out your phone and learn new words. Just a couple minutes every day will help you learn new words fast. A common question that first-time language learners ask is, where do I begin? Classically, the answer to this is, with guidance. Finding the right teacher can be tricky, especially online. There are a lot of options to choose from. We've got one we'll tell you about. In this video, we'll show you how our Premium Plus learning option can provide you with guidance to help you reach your language learning goals. Our Premium Plus study tools are designed to support and guide learners. There's access to thousands of lessons, a voice recording tool, and spaced repetition flashcards. Most importantly, Premium Plus users get a personal language instructor who can provide weekly assignments. Let's talk about these items in detail. Number one, gain unlimited access to audio and video lessons. As a Premium Plus member, you'll have full access to the lesson library and other premium features. Best of all, you're not limited to one level, and you can learn to your heart's content with upper-level courses. There are lessons on various topics that tackle crucial language learning elements like reading, writing, listening, speaking, and conversation. More specifically, there are pathways. Pathways are collections of lessons that focus on a specific topic. Some pathways are even geared towards proficiency tests. There are also pathways in the lesson library to help you prepare for certain events, such as speaking at a restaurant, buying a ticket, or making friends. One of the most helpful is the top 25 questions you need to know pathway, which can help you in your everyday life. Each lesson has lesson notes to read while you listen to the audio lesson. This will help you follow along with key points. Lesson notes generally contain the dialogue, new vocabulary, the target grammar points, and cultural insights based on the dialogue. Podcasts and lesson notes are available on the Innovative Language app, so you can also learn on the go. Number two, practice speaking with the voice recording tool. Pronunciation is an important part of language learning. Proper pronunciation ensures understanding during conversations with native speakers. Many learners think speaking is one of the most challenging components of learning a language. To help with this, the voice recording tool is a great way to improve speaking skills. Lesson dialogues are spoken by native speakers, so you can record yourself repeating after them to practice speaking naturally. Your Premium Plus teacher can assign you tasks to help you progress with any new sounds you might be learning. For these assignments, your teacher can listen to your voice recordings of the sounds and help you learn how to pronounce them. Completing these tasks under the guidance of your teacher can help you boost your confidence in speaking. This feature is also available for vocabulary words and sample sentences. Being able to hear these recordings improves pronunciation skills, especially when incorrect intonation can change the meaning of a word entirely. The voice recorder examines your speed and tone. Don't forget to also follow up by sending a recording to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Number three, increase your vocabulary with spaced repetition flashcards and more. One of the best ways to learn vocabulary is with spaced repetition flashcards. Spaced repetition is a system designed for learning something new and reviewing it in varying time intervals. You can create and study flashcard decks, whether from your word bank or a specific vocabulary list. For example, if you need to visit a post office, the post office vocabulary list for your target language would be beneficial to study prior to your visit. Premium Plus offers various features to expand learners' vocabulary, including free gifts of the month, such as the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. Find opportunities to use them with your teachers, friends, or classmates. For even more practice, each lesson has a vocabulary slideshow and a quiz to review the lesson's vocabulary. There's also the 2000 core word list, which includes the most commonly used words in your target language. Starting from the 100 core word list, you'll gradually build up your knowledge of useful vocabulary. These lists can be studied with spaced repetition flashcards too. With the flashcards, you can change the settings to your liking. The settings range from different card types to number of new cards per deck. 
Give yourself vocabulary tests by changing the settings. After studying a number of flashcards, change the card types to listening comprehension. You can then test yourself by writing the translation of the word or the spoken word or phrase. Changing your settings allows you to remember vocabulary and learn how to identify the words. This can be especially helpful when learning to recognize new characters in certain languages. Number four, get your own personal language teacher. Your language teacher will work with you and your goals to create a personalized and achievable study path. Once you share a short-term or a long-term goal with your teacher, you can establish a plan or pathway to lead to success. Coordinate with your teacher regularly to ensure the personalized learning programs are still working for you. If not, you can always change it up. There are so many ways your Premium Plus teacher can help you. If you have a speech you need to write, they can help you come up with the right way to say what you want to say. If there's something you need help translating, your teacher can lend you a hand. Or, if there is a specific movie or song you want to consume in your target language, your teacher can gear your lessons to help you achieve your goal. Being in planes, trains, and buses can be an uncomfortable experience for many people. Often, there are small, cramped seats, not many things to do, and sometimes the experience is even scary. Despite this, you often see people working in these environments. How do they do it? In this video, you'll learn three tips to help you be able to study anywhere. The first one is, adjust to your environment. Most of us would probably agree that a plane or a bus is not the best place to study. These environments are usually dark and cramped, and you may have a crying baby next to you. But the point is, there's never a perfect time or place to learn. The reality is that a lot of us use transportation every day. We face environments that are typically considered unsuitable for study. Trains get crowded. You can't do much in your car. Even in your own home, you'll get distracted by the TV or Facebook or something. And some days you'll be sick. You'll be tired. You'll have dinner plans. Once you accept that there's rarely such a thing as the perfect time to study, you can start thinking about how to make the best of the environment you have at that time. For example, if you ride a train, you might stand up for a long time. It might be difficult to focus on a book. In a case like this, you can use the Innovative Language 101 app to study, listen to the audio lessons, or do the word of the day by email. There are ways that you can learn in just about any situation. The point is, you need to adjust your study method to your environment. So take a look at your day and see where your time goes. Are there any gaps in between your activities where you feel like you can't study? And is there any way you can adjust? Two, take advantage of your limited time. We've surveyed tons of learners over the years, and every year we find that the number one reason most people don't learn a language is they say they have no time. But there's a chance you may have some spare time to study. You might just not recognize it yet. Let's say you commute for 30 minutes every day. You can ask yourself, how do I put these next 30 minutes to use? Or if you finish work at 7 p.m. and spend an hour doing nothing, you can think about what you might do in that hour that will help you work towards your goals. You don't have to use all 30 minutes of your commute or the full hour of your free time, but you can definitely fit in a short lesson or take other steps towards your goals. Three, have an on and off mindset. When you work, it can be really helpful to have a kind of on-off switch for when it's time to work and time to rest. You can apply the same idea to your language studies. When it's time to study, you can focus solely on that. You don't spend time thinking about doing it, you just do it. It doesn't matter where you are or what kind of studying you're doing, as long as it gets done. And when you're done with a lesson, reward yourself. It can be as simple as telling yourself, great job. When you're finished with the time you promised yourself for studies, feel free to focus on the next thing. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Love Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to ask someone out in your target language? With this new cheat sheet, you'll master tons of romantic phrases, just in time for Valentine's Day. Download it for free right now. Second, the Slang Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free eBook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, can you talk about containers in your target language? Learn how to say box, bottle, bin, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, 
must know Valentine's Day vocabulary. Can you talk about Valentine's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the top 15 encouraging phrases. Want to be able to say positive phrases like believe in yourself and don't give up? Then get this bonus phrase lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12 month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to use parting greetings. This is Karen Lee, and she's talking with her former homestay mother, Mathilde Martin. As Karen says goodbye, her children join her in saying goodnight. Focus on the way each person says goodbye. À bientôt. Bonne nuit. Repose-toi bien. À plus tard. Once more with the English translation. À bientôt. See you soon. Bonne nuit. Good night. Repose-toi bien. Rest well. À plus tard. See you later. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. First, do you remember how Karen says, See you soon. À bientôt. This starts with the preposition, à, which means something like until in this context. À. À. Next is bientôt. Soon. Bientôt. Bientôt. All together. À bientôt. Means something like until soon, but it translates as see you soon. À bientôt. À bientôt. Is fairly informal, which indicates a close relationship between Karen and Mathilde Martin, her former homestay mother. Do you remember how Sasha says? Good night. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Literally means good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. You use Bonne nuit. Good night when someone is about to go to bed and often when you don't plan on seeing someone again that night. Do you remember how Ben says, rest well? Repose-toi bien. Rest well. Repose-toi bien. First is, repose-toi. Meaning rest. Repose-toi. Repose-toi. Note. Repose-toi. Is from the verb. Se reposer. Meaning to rest. Se reposer. Next is. Bien. Well. Bien. Bien. Together. Repose-toi bien. Rest well. Repose-toi bien. 
Note, this is appropriate for informal situations. Do you remember how Mathilde says, See you later? A plus tard. See you later. A plus tard. This starts with the preposition, Ah. Which means something like until in this case. Ah. Ah. After this is. Plus. More. Plus. Plus. Pronunciation note. In most cases, you pronounce the S sound in. Plus. However, in this specific expression, you don't have to. Tard. Means late. Tard. Tard. Altogether, it's. A plus tard. This means something like until later, but translates as see you later. A plus tard. Mathilde uses this to say goodbye to everyone. Even though it is slightly formal, it's a friendly way to say goodbye. With friends, French people tend to shorten a plus tard to a plus. In this case, you must pronounce the S. A plus. See you. A plus. A plus. Let's look at the parting greetings once more. Listen and repeat, or speak along with me. A bientôt. A bientôt. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. À plus tard. À plus tard. Repose-toi bien. Repose-toi bien. À plus. À plus. Salut. Salut. Au revoir. Au revoir. Did you notice the last two parting expressions I used? Salut. Au revoir. The first expression used was Salut. Hi. Salut. Salut. In informal situations, you can use the greeting Salut. Salut is a common greeting in French. However, it's only suitable for informal situations, such as when saying goodbye to friends. Note Salut is also a common greeting translating as hi or hello. Because of this, you can use Salut both as a greeting and a parting expression. The second parting greeting Au revoir means see you. Au revoir. Au revoir. It's a formal greeting you can use when you're sure you're going to meet the other person again. You can use it to address one or more people. Au revoir. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, see you soon? À bientôt. À bientôt. And how to say, good night? Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Do you remember how to say rest well? Repose-toi bien. Repose-toi bien. 
and how to say, see you later. A plus tard. A plus tard. Do you remember how to say, see you? Hint is the shortened version of a plus tard. A plus. A plus. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're talking to Mathilde. Respond by saying good night. Ready? Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Listen again and repeat. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha Lee and you're finishing class. Respond by saying, see you soon. Ready? A plus. A bientôt. Listen again and repeat. A bientôt. A bientôt. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben Lee and you're finishing coffee with your college friend, Justine. Respond by saying, see you. Ready? A plus tard. A plus. Listen again and repeat. A plus. A plus. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Many of us are spending more and more time at home. So how do you make the best of this time and learn your target language? Learning at home can be tough with all the distractions. And in this episode, you're going to discover the pros and cons of learning at home and how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Love Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to ask someone out in your target language? With this new cheat sheet, you'll master tons of romantic phrases, just in time for Valentine's Day. Download it for free right now. Second, the Slang Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free ebook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, can you talk about containers in your target language? Learn how to say box, bottle, bin, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, must-know Valentine's Day vocabulary. Can you talk about Valentine's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one-minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the top 15 encouraging phrases. Want to be able to say positive phrases like believe in yourself and don't give up? Then get this bonus phrase lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Recently, many people have started to work and take classes from home. With language learning, since it's something people do in their own time, a lot of it is done at home anyway. But that doesn't mean that all of this hasn't affected how people learn. If you used a language learning app or listened to lessons during your commute, but you don't commute anymore, the pandemic has probably ruined your flow. 
With many of us spending more time at home, being able to learn from home efficiently is a good skill to have. Because while learning or working from home sounds good, it's not exactly easy to do. Part one, the pros and cons of learning at home. First, the pros. There's convenience. You can learn whenever you want. You also have more time in the day since you're not commuting or walking from the train station into work. It's also easier to practice speaking. Many people might find it hard to practice on the train or at a lunch break or in the office during work. It might sound a little strange, but at home, you can dedicate more time to practicing speaking. What's your favorite pro of learning at home? Leave us a comment. Now, what about the cons? Distractions. There are a lot more distractions at home. There's the TV, there's the couch and the food and family members coming in and out. Next, there's no physical or mental separation between rest and work, which is crucial for focus. It's the same reason why people prefer going to the gym instead of working out from the comfort of their own home. If you're in a place where there's only one goal, like working out, and you're surrounded by people working out, you'll have no problem doing it. But if you're in a place you associate with rest, eating, and watching TV, you might have trouble focusing. But if you're spending more time at home, then you should at least make the best of it and learn your language at home. Part two, how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. So here's how you do it. First, pick a dedicated place for learning and preferably not your bed. Just like an office is associated with working time and your bedroom is associated with rest, you need a place associated with language learning. It could be your desk in the corner of the room. It could be your basement as long as it's far from distractions and places of rest. Second, pick a time. That way, for example, when it's 9 p.m., you know it's time to put in 10 minutes of language learning. Three, time box your study sessions. What's time boxing? Time boxing is simply setting a fixed amount of time for an activity. For example, you're going to dedicate the next 10 minutes to language and nothing else. If you usually have trouble concentrating, time boxing is a good way to set boundaries and get things done. Four, start small. Just like with setting small, measurable goals and realistic routines, don't set aside two hours for study time. Instead, try to time box five, 10, or 15 minutes and stick with that for a week or two. You can always increase your time later once you get more comfortable with your routine. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. Instead of trying to master a lesson and the lesson dialogue in one shot, space out your learning throughout the day, in the morning, afternoon, and at night. So take an audio or video lesson and read along with the lesson notes in the morning. You'll get acquainted with the conversation, all the words, and grammar rules. Don't rush to memorize it all. You'll come back to it later in the day. And do this for around five to 15 minutes. During the day, practice shadowing the dialogue. Practice recalling the words. Do this for around 10 minutes. You can also write out the lesson dialogue, practice using the grammar rules, or drill the words with flashcards. And at night, come back and review for about 10 minutes. You can re-listen to the lesson or just the dialogue track. By doing multiple sessions in one day, you'll be a lot more comfortable with the language, simply because you spaced out your learning and came back to review. And while it may feel repetitive, it's the repetition that helps you master the language over the long term. Six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. It would be hard to practice if you were commuting or out on a walk, but if you're at home, you can easily speak out loud without drawing attention or feeling embarrassed. So to recap, one, pick a specific place for learning that's far from distractions like your bed. Two, pick a specific time for studying. Three, time box your study sessions. Four, start small. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. And six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the power of learning a language with someone else. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. 
If you wanted to learn a language even just 25 years ago, you would have needed to go to a library, take in-person classes, and dig for the right resources. Before you could even begin regular practice sessions, you had to find the tools you needed to learn. Now, with just a quick Google search, you can find literally anything you need to learn a language online. If you forget how to conjugate a verb, you can refresh your memory right away on Wikipedia. If you want to watch a foreign language movie with subtitles, you can search for one on YouTube. You can even have one-on-one -on -one lessons with native speakers of the language you're studying. Tons of platforms offer video and audio lessons. These days, the challenge is finding the resources that are right for you. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can get the most out of our language learning resources. Number one, aim for one podcast a day. At the beginning of your studies, it's easy to set a big target, like two hours of language practice every day. But for most of us, that's not realistic. After a long day of work or school, it's difficult to commit to more hours studying language. Instead, you can make your goal to do small things consistently. This can help you move forward, sometimes almost without you noticing it. Try to listen to one podcast every day. They're only 10 to 15 minutes, so everyone can make time for that. You can review previous podcast lessons or listen to new lessons. Just make sure you get in one each day. Number two, use the lesson review tools. If you want to maximize your learning after you listen to a podcast, make sure to use the lesson review tools. Reviewing what you've learned is an important part of learning anything. The more you see or practice a specific word or phrase, the better you'll remember it. Number three, review the 2,000 most common words in spaced repetition flashcards. In each language, there are some words that make up the majority of written and spoken conversation. You can use this knowledge to focus your studies. If you learn the 2,000 most common words in the language you're studying, you'll have a great foundation. The vocabulary lists in our program are a great tool for this. You'll get example phrases with the target words. You can listen to the correct pronunciation and intonation of each word. Use these lists along with a spaced repetition program and create your own flashcard deck. This is a great thing to have on your phone. You can study vocabulary on your commute, when waiting for someone, or while traveling. Number four, make use of short periods of time. How much time do you spend every week doing things like commuting, shopping for groceries, walking, or cleaning? Probably more than a couple of hours, right? These are examples of time you can be using to build your language skills. You can use it to listen to language podcasts, and you can do this without specifically scheduling a time to practice. If you have all the resources you need wherever you are, you can use every opportunity you have to practice. You can download all of our lessons to your phone. Each season of podcasts will be stored as an album, so it's easy to put on your headphones and listen to a quick lesson whenever you've got the time. Number five, have the right expectations. It's easy to find all sorts of so-called quick language learning systems and secret tricks that promise fluency in just a couple months or even weeks. While you might find some good tips now and then, most of these claims are not based in reality. Make sure you don't measure your own progress against these impossible standards. If you've been told you can completely master a new language in three months, but by the end of your studies you've made just a little bit of progress, it can be demotivating. Fluency in a language can take years to attain, and getting the confidence to use that language can take more time. Set small goals for yourself when you're learning. When you achieve them, celebrate. Learning a new language is not a short-term journey, but with our resources, you can see improvements every day. If you want to get more tips on learning language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Have you ever wondered if you could learn a language faster? We asked our experienced learners for their best tips, so you can steal these and use them for yourself. In this video, you'll discover five tactics for faster language learning. Number one try more challenging lessons to improve faster. If you're wondering, why should I try a harder lesson? 
Think about the gym. Studying is a bit like working out. If you want to get bigger and stronger, you need to exercise with heavier weights. But you might think, if I try a harder lesson, I won't be able to understand everything. Remember, that's normal. When you can't understand 100% of a lesson, it means there are things in the lesson for you to learn. Keep in mind that you should challenge yourself, but not choose lessons that are impossible. And make sure to use the tools you have to study the things you don't know. With our learning program, teachers break down the conversation in every lesson. You also get the translations and explanations right there on the lesson page. There are also lesson notes, transcripts, and dialogue study tools for you to use. Remember how you felt when you started studying and try to keep that beginner mindset. When you realize you don't understand something, don't run away from it. Instead, use the tools you have to work to understand it. This will help you learn faster. Number two, put your learning on autopilot. Imagine you have a bunch of learning apps and textbooks. Maybe you have a bunch of study tools on your smartphone or a bunch of books piled on a table you wanna read. Where do you even begin? A lot of learners begin with a lot of enthusiasm, so they buy a lot of resources, but then get overwhelmed. They're not sure where to start or what to do or how to continue. Let's think about a textbook. It's easy to understand how to use a textbook. You follow the pages. Begin with chapter one, then go to chapter two, chapter three, and so on until you finish the book. The road forward is clear. You don't have to think about anything except moving forward with your studies. So how do you apply this kind of autopilot approach if you're not using a textbook? You can actually do this with our language learning program's tracking feature. With our progress tracking dashboard, once you've chosen your learning level, we'll give you a recommended lesson pathway and feed you lessons one by one. The dashboard will tell you which lessons to take from lesson one to lesson two to lesson three. You'll be guided as you work on improving. Number three, read lines from the lesson dialogue out loud slowly. Then reread and increase your speed. This tactic is powerful for two reasons. It helps you become able to read faster and speak faster. Speaking smoothly is something many beginners say they struggle with, so this kind of practice can be very beneficial for beginning learners. With our language learning program, for every lesson, you get a conversation. Read the dialogue with the line-by-line -line dialogue. Read out loud slowly once, then reread a bit faster, then again, and keep increasing your speed until you can say the lines comfortably and sound like a native. You can take it a step further and try to memorize the dialogue too. Try recalling it after your study session and say the lines out loud. This kind of review will help you progress and help you remember. Number four, review old lessons to master them completely. Review is essential for your learning. If you come across a new word, you won't remember it if you see it only once. It takes repetition to remember something. Make sure to take time to review past lessons. Give your brain a chance to remember the things you studied previously. For example, if you try our listening comprehension lessons and you don't understand absolutely everything, check the translations and try listening again. Use the study tools you have available to make the most of your review sessions. Number five, download the dialogue tracks and listen to the conversations. This is a super popular immersion tactic. Here's how it works. When you're done with a lesson, download the dialogue track. You'll get the conversation in your target language. Then make a playlist of the dialogue tracks. Each track is about 10 to 30 seconds long. You can even put the tracks and playlists on your device and listen to them throughout the day, just as you would listen to music. This helps make the language feel a bit more natural, more like part of your everyday life. Instead of music, you're immersing yourself in conversations. This can be a great way to work on improving your listening skills. This video covered five tips to help you learn a language faster. For even more ways to learn faster, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. All cultures have a form of music. Music is one of the most basic tools we can use to learn a language. 
parents use music and songs to teach their young children simple words. Music can help us focus, help us remember better, and thus help us as we acquire a language. Music can aid our coordination and physical development, too. So, how do we use music to support our language learning now, as grown people? In this video, we'll look at four ways to use music to study a language. Imitating structures and rhythms is important when learning a language, and the same is true for music. When children play with other children, they listen to songs, move their bodies as they play games, and try to imitate what they see and hear. This practice of regular imitation aids children as they gain their language skills. Repeating song lyrics like those from nursery rhymes helps kids retain words and expressions. Children may not know the meanings of all the words in the songs they sing, but they remember the songs, the vocabulary, and the rhythms. Children practice making sounds by mimicking the pronunciation of words. This can be the first step to the child understanding the meaning and use of a word. You might not realize it, but you probably still remember many of the songs and rhymes you learned when you were a child. We're able to remember expressions, words, and ideas effectively when they're put to music. This is also the reason you can memorize the lyrics of songs you like rather easily. Patterns like those in many popular songs are repetitive. We review the rhythms and the words each time we listen. Everybody's different, so if you want to use music to support your language learning, we're here to provide four different ways. Number one, passive listening. One way to study with music is through passive listening. You can do this with songs you have in your target language on your computer, a CD, your favorite streaming site. You can use this method as long as you have access to music in the language you want to study. Turn the music on and let it play in the background while you do something else, like studying, cooking dinner, or cleaning the house. Do this regularly and let your mind get used to the idea of hearing your target language in your environment. This kind of familiarity with the language will help you as you work towards fluency. Passive listening is one form of language immersion. As you listen to the background music over and over and get more comfortable with it, you'll start to notice keywords, intonation, grammar patterns, and so on. With enough practice and with enough different music to listen to, you might even start to recognize certain sounds and words when you hear them somewhere else. Number two, memorization. You can use music to help build your vocabulary and memorize words effectively. This method focuses on studying lyrics and songs to improve your ability to recall the words. Look up the lyrics to a song you're listening to and review them line by line. You can read the lyrics as you listen to the song or try to remember the next line in the song before it is sung. Memorization practice like this enhances your listening skills and boosts your reading skills. Number three, sing along. Our first tip in this lesson was to listen passively. This tip, however, is to listen actively by singing along to your music. Look up the lyrics of a song you like. Play the song and try to sing along. You may also be able to find videos on YouTube of popular songs with the lyrics included. If it's difficult at first, don't worry. Remember, regular review and practice is essential. Just as we usually need to hear a song in our native language a few times before we remember the words, you can expect to need to listen several times over a few days before you feel comfortable with all the words. Through practicing this way, you'll learn grammar, spelling, and pronunciation. You'll also get to enjoy a song you like. Moreover, this type of exercise will help you work on your reading and listening skills. A good way to check your progress is by trying to sing the song by yourself. You can sing with no music, or you can try looking for a karaoke version of the song you like. If you can sing all the words, great. If not, you can go back to the lyrics and study a bit more until you master the track. Number four, transcription. To do this exercise, listen to the song. As it plays, write down or transcribe the lyrics. You can start and stop the song at the end of each line to slow things down a bit. If you begin your studies with this method, you might catch only a few words. But don't get frustrated. Play the song and write down everything you can hear. Then play the song again and write down the words that you missed the first time you listened. With practice like this, your listening skills will improve, and so will your spelling. These are just a few ways that you can use music to study another language. Be patient and don't forget to enjoy the music you're listening to as you study. If you want to start simple, try listening to children's songs in your target language. The song lyrics tend to be repeated a lot, and this can help you identify key words quickly. Learning a language through music is fun. It can help you focus your attention and improve your memory. 
this can be a great part of your self-study plan. If you want to get more tips on learning language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. 
make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Love Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to ask someone out in your target language? With this new cheat sheet, you'll master tons of romantic phrases just in time for Valentine's Day. Download it for free right now. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and much more. Third, can you talk about containers in your target language? Learn how to say box, bottle, bin, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, must know Valentine's Day vocabulary. Can you talk about Valentine's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the top 15 encouraging phrases. Want to be able to say positive phrases like believe in yourself and don't give up? Then get this bonus phrase lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12-month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Ben Lee and he's on the train. A fellow passenger drops his wallet as he exits the train. Ben picks up the wallet and chases after the man. He calls to the man by saying, Excuse me. Excusez-moi. Listen to the following three short dialogues between Ben and the man. Ready? Excusez-moi. Oui? Ben hands the wallet to the man. Merci beaucoup. De rien. Ben turns to board the train, but the doors shut. Je suis désolé. Ce n'est rien. Once more with the English translation. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Oui? Yes. Ben hands the man the wallet. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. De rien. You're welcome. Ben turns to board the train, but the doors shut. Je suis désolé. 
I'm sorry. Ce n'est rien. It's all right. Let's take a closer look at these three conversations. First, do you remember how Ben Lee says, Excuse me? Excusez-moi. In this context, Excusez-moi is used to get someone's attention and translates as, Excuse me. Excusez-moi. First is, Excusez meaning excuse excusez 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 is from the verb excusez meaning to excuse excusez next is moi me moi moi together it's excusez-moi excuse me Excusez-moi. This is a formal expression. Ben uses it because he's speaking with someone he doesn't know. Note, this expression can also be used as a mild apology. But here, Ben uses it to get the attention of the person he's chasing after. Do you remember how the passenger acknowledges Ben by saying, Yes? Oui? Oui? Yes. Oui? Oui? The second part of the conversation takes place after Ben returns the passenger's wallet. Do you remember how the passenger politely says, Thank you very much? Merci beaucoup. First is, Merci. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Next is... Beaucoup. A lot. So much. Beaucoup. Beaucoup. All together... Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup adds more emphasis when you want to show appreciation. When you simply want to say thank you, Merci is enough. Do you remember how Ben says, You're welcome. De rien. First is De meaning of De De Next is rien, nothing, rien, rien. Together, de rien means something like of nothing, but translates as you're welcome. De rien. After the train doors shut and Ben misses his train, do you remember how the passenger apologizes to Ben by saying, I'm sorry? Je suis désolé. First is Je I Je Next is Suis Am As in I am Suis Suis Is from the verb Être Meaning to be Être Together, je suis, I'm, je suis. Last is, désolé, sorry, désolé, désolé. All together, je suis désolé, I'm sorry, je suis désolé. Do you remember how Ben replies? It's all right. Ce n'est rien. This starts with Ce This 
s s Next is ne which means is not ne 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 not ne e is e ne is contracted with e to form ne last is rien nothing rien rien note rien is a negative pronoun and must be paired with ne altogether ce n'est rien means something like this is nothing but it translates as it's all right ce n'est rien this is a common phrase used to express that things are all right in more casual situations you can remove the contracted form of ne ce n'est rien becomes c'est rien note ce is contracted with est to form c'est for easier pronunciation c'est rien c'est rien you can use this expression with friends or family in the conversation you learned de rien as you're welcome in response to merci thank you je vous en prie is another way to say you're welcome je vous en prie note this phrase is more formal than de rien je vous en prie can be used like the english you're welcome in response to merci it means something like i beg of you to do something but translate as you're welcome je vous en prie in informal situations you can say je t'en prie here te replaces the more formal vous and te is contracted with en to form t'en je t'en prie in the conversation you learned je suis désolé i'm sorry in the case of mild apologies such as accidentally bumping into someone the phrases excusez-moi and pardon pardon are commonly used let's look at the expressions once more listen and repeat or speak along pay attention to the body language excusez-moi excusez-moi oui oui merci 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 beaucoup merci beaucoup de rien de rien je suis désolé je suis désolé ce n'est rien ce n'est rien let's review respond to the prompts by speaking aloud then repeat after me focusing on pronunciation ready do you remember how benly says excuse me excusez-moi excusez-moi and how the passenger says yes oui oui 
Do you remember how to say thank you? Merci. Merci. And how to say thank you very much? Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Do you remember how to say you're welcome? De rien. De rien. And how the passenger says, I'm sorry. Je suis désolé. Je suis désolé. Do you remember how Ben says, it's all right? Ce n'est rien. Ce n'est rien. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee and you receive a popular French candy from your French teacher. Say, thank you very much. Ready? Merci beaucoup. De rien. Listen again and repeat. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Lee, and a passenger bumps into you. Respond by saying, It's all right. Ready? Je suis désolé. Ce n'est rien. Listen again and repeat. Ce n'est rien. Ce n'est rien. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you see a man drop his wallet. Get his attention. Ready? Excusez-moi. Oui? Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now, you know how to use essential social expressions in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Many of us are spending more and more time at home. So how do you make the best of this time and learn your target language? Learning at home can be tough with all the distractions. And in this episode, you're going to discover the pros and cons of learning at home and how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. How to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Recently, many people have started to work and take classes from home. With language learning, since it's something people do in their own time, a lot of it is done at home anyway. 
but that doesn't mean that all of this hasn't affected how people learn. If you use the language learning app or listen to lessons during your commute, but you don't commute anymore, the pandemic has probably ruined your flow. With many of us spending more time at home, being able to learn from home efficiently is a good skill to have. Because while learning or working from home sounds good, it's not exactly easy to do. Part one, the pros and cons of learning at home. First, the pros. There's convenience. You can learn whenever you want. You also have more time in the day since you're not commuting or walking from the train station into work. It's also easier to practice speaking. Many people might find it hard to practice on the train or at a lunch break or in the office during work. It might sound a little strange, but at home, you can dedicate more time to practicing speaking. What's your favorite pro of learning at home? Leave us a comment. Now, what about the cons? Distractions. There are a lot more distractions at home. There's the TV, there's the couch and the food and family members coming in and out. Next, there's no physical or mental separation between rest and work, which is crucial for focus. It's the same reason why people prefer going to the gym instead of working out from the comfort of their own home. If you're in a place where there's only one goal, like working out, and you're surrounded by people working out, you'll have no problem doing it. But if you're in a place you associate with rest, eating, and watching TV, you might have trouble focusing. But if you're spending more time at home, then you should at least make the best of it and learn your language at home. Part two, how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. So here's how you do it. First, pick a dedicated place for learning and preferably not your bed. Just like an office is associated with working time and your bedroom is associated with rest, you need a place associated with language learning. It could be your desk in the corner of the room. It could be your basement as long as it's far from distractions and places of rest. Second, pick a time. That way, for example, when it's 9 p.m., you know it's time to put in 10 minutes of language learning. Three, time box your study sessions. What's time boxing? Time boxing is simply setting a fixed amount of time for an activity. For example, you're going to dedicate the next 10 minutes to language and nothing else. If you usually have trouble concentrating, time boxing is a good way to set boundaries and get things done. Four, start small. Just like with setting small, measurable goals and realistic routines, don't set aside two hours for study time. Instead, try to time box five, 10, or 15 minutes and stick with that for a week or two. You can always increase your time later once you get more comfortable with your routine. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. Instead of trying to master a lesson and the lesson dialogue in one shot, space out your learning throughout the day, in the morning, afternoon, and at night. So take an audio or video lesson and read along with the lesson notes in the morning. You'll get acquainted with the conversation, all the words, and grammar rules. Don't rush to memorize it all. You'll come back to it later in the day. And do this for around five to 15 minutes. During the day, practice shadowing the dialogue. Practice recalling the words. Do this for around 10 minutes. You can also write out the lesson dialogue, practice using the grammar rules, or drill the words with flashcards. And at night, come back and review for about 10 minutes. You can re-listen to the lesson or just the dialogue track. By doing multiple sessions in one day, you'll be a lot more comfortable with the language, simply because you spaced out your learning and came back to review. And while it may feel repetitive, it's the repetition that helps you master the language over the long term. Six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. It would be hard to practice if you were commuting or out on a walk, but if you're at home, you can easily speak out loud without drawing attention or feeling embarrassed. So to recap, one, pick a specific place for learning that's far from distractions like your bed. Two, pick a specific time for studying. Three, time box your study sessions. Four, start small. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. And six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about the power of learning a language with someone else. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week.
And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. There are a lot of people working to learn another language, but there are also a lot of people who grew up speaking two or more languages without even thinking about it. If you're able to speak two languages, you're bilingual. If you can speak more, you're multilingual. In many countries, being bilingual or multilingual is normal or even expected. But in some countries, people grow up speaking and learning one language. If you speak one language, you're monolingual. So, what can monolinguals learn from bilinguals or multilinguals? This video will look at what it's like to be comfortable in two or more languages. Here are six pieces of information relating to bilingualism and multilingualism that you can use in your language learning. First, bilingualism and the brain. How does being bilingual or multilingual affect the brain? Do you dream in both languages? Do you see subtitles in your head for the other language as somebody's talking? The answers to questions like these are different for everyone. Some people may dream mostly in the language they're most comfortable with, and occasionally in another language. Some people may be able to effortlessly move between the languages they know, while others may get stuck from time to time. These are all normal parts of knowing more than one language. People who were exposed to another language since birth may have certain advantages in language acquisition over monolinguals. They may already be familiar with certain sounds and sound combinations that monolinguals are not familiar with. As a language learner, you're probably quite familiar with this. If you've already mastered a language and have decided to start learning a new one, you're probably going to unconsciously make connections to words in different languages. You'll think to yourself, this word has the same vowel sound as another word I know, so it should sound pretty similar. When it comes to studying things like new vocabulary words and grammar, however, monolinguals, bilinguals, and multilinguals all need to spend time learning and memorizing. So in your own learning, don't be discouraged by people who speak your native language and your target language. They may have had a totally different learning experience than you. Consider your language studies, not language abilities. Second, language mistakes and confusion. You may be wondering if bilinguals ever confuse languages in their heads. Generally, people who are fluent in multiple languages can separate the languages mentally. However, there are situations where people momentarily forget words, even in our native languages, or we think of a word in one language but not in another. In some cases, we might even want to use a word that exists in one language but not in the other. An interesting concept from academic literature on this topic is perfect bilingualism. It's the idea that someone can speak two languages perfectly at an equally high level. Many people assume that someone who grew up speaking two languages would be able to use both of them perfectly and sound flawless, but this is generally not true. Bilingual people are often more comfortable talking about certain topics in specific languages. There are also situations where bilingual people may pronounce words with a slightly different accent than monolingual people. Interestingly enough, there's also a similar pattern among bilingual couples. Bilingual couples usually have a single dominant language. Even if they can speak another language with fluency and ease, people will usually use the language that's most efficient and comfortable. Third, bilingual societies. Can you imagine a place where you talk to your family in one language, your neighbors in another, your boss in a third, and write letters in a fourth? This might sound like a dream for many language enthusiasts, but in some societies, it's normal. This type of multilingual society occurs on border regions all throughout the world. In northern Iraq, for instance, people usually speak Kurdish, Turkish, and Iraqi Arabic, and many of them use modern standard Arabic and English at school. In some parts of China, people might learn English at school, speak their city's dialect of Mandarin when out shopping, speak standard Mandarin at work, and perhaps even speak another language when at home with their families. Some of these people might even say they're bad at languages. When people say this, it's often because they grew up using these languages, not learning them in school. When they were using a language at a friend's house and got their pronunciation corrected, there was no anxiety involved. This kind of learning is different than learning in a school setting, where tests and classrooms can cause pressure and discomfort. Media exposure plays a huge role, too. 
Many people around the world are functionally bilingual in English thanks to TV and YouTube. Sometimes parents, even in societies where people speak several languages, will put on educational English videos for kids to watch. But what's even more fun is something that's enjoyable for the kids that's already in English. You can do this too as an adult language learner. There's a time and a place for coursework, but if you're able to shut off the learning part of your brain and simply absorb content you're interested in, you'll be surprised at what you can pick up after a couple of months. Fourth, heritage languages. You might know someone from an immigrant family who speaks a different language at home than they do with everybody else. That language is referred to academically as a heritage language. Basically, a language that someone learned at home without using it very much anywhere else. You can imagine that such an arrangement would produce huge variation in language ability. Some people have heritage languages that they learn from visiting their grandparents once a week. Others learn through rigorous homeschooling routines enforced by their parents. Heritage learners often have some marked differences in their speech compared to speakers who grew up in a monolingual environment. They might have an accent that's affected by the dominant language they grew up with or they might feel uncomfortable using some grammar or vocabulary that they're not as familiar with. But on the other hand, they might be able to smoothly use things like tone, grammatical gender, and other aspects of language that are extremely difficult for learners to master. Their listening comprehension is also likely good. Another big difference is in reading and writing. You probably don't remember, but reading and writing took time to learn. It may be difficult to motivate yourself or a child to learn to read or write in a new language, especially if that language has a different and complicated script. We may be tempted to rely on the reading and writing skills we already have instead of learning something new. If you have a heritage language and you're working on reactivating it, be kind to yourself. Maybe you feel like you should know how to read or write in your heritage language, but you don't, and that's okay. You can work on building those skills as any other language learner would. A great way to build literacy is to read text with audio that you can listen to at the same time. You can use the lesson notes from our language learning program or watch videos with subtitles. This is easy to do from the comfort of your home. Fifth, gaining fluency in a second language. There's a lot of divided discussion about whether it's possible to learn a language to a native level. It's important to consider what native level means. Maybe a native speaker of your target language can talk about their work flawlessly, but they can't speak in depth about a topic beyond their field. You don't expect yourself to be able to talk about absolutely everything with 100% perfection in your native language, so don't expect that you'll magically be able to communicate perfectly in the language you're learning either. Moreover, it's important to remember that nobody speaks flawlessly all the time. We all make mistakes, and we know how to correct ourselves and clarify information. The best speakers in the world make mistakes, even on stage. Everybody stumbled over their words before. Does that mean they're not fluent in their own language? Of course not. You can do some amazing things to get a native-like accent in a foreign language, but they all take a great deal of work. Lots of people convince others that they're native speakers for the first few minutes of conversation. Does it really matter if you end up making mistakes after 40 seconds? 40 minutes? Remember, the perfect speech is not required to speak like a native. As we've talked about in this video, lots of bilingual and multilingual people have strengths and weaknesses too. Sixth, can a bilingual person forget a language? Language skills can deteriorate over time if they're not used. If you're very busy with one language and rarely use the other, you might see a drop in your abilities in the language you don't use as often. Completely forgetting a language takes a very long time, though. While you might forget a word here and there in one language, you likely won't lose a language completely unless you don't use it for decades. This is something to think about for anyone who is considering spending their life in another country. Make sure to keep your language skills up. Otherwise, as time goes on, things may be harder and harder to remember. Being bilingual or multilingual is pretty interesting. A lot of language learners compare themselves to bilinguals or multilinguals. Remember that bilingual and multilingual people put in work too, when they were kids. So don't feel discouraged if it seems like your own learning is slow. It simply takes time, and that's true for everyone. For even more tips and information related to language learning, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language.
And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! If a native speaker of your target language spoke to you, how much of their speech do you think you could understand? Your answer, of course, depends a lot on your vocabulary skills. In this video, we're going to cover five tips for memorizing vocabulary quickly. When you learn new vocabulary words, you increase your skills in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. As you learn a language, you gain the ability to recognize vocabulary words and learn when to use them. It's important to have a vocabulary that covers a range of topics so that you can understand important announcements, safety information, conversations between friends, and posts on social media. In this video, we're going to talk about why vocabulary is important, some features and the tools we offer that help you focus on memorizing, and some tips for memorizing words faster. Throughout this video, remember that consistency is a key component to memorization. If you haven't done this already, consider adding a number of vocabulary words you'd like to master to your monthly language goals. Okay, let's get to our tips. First, master our core word lists. We offer 11 core word lists. These lists are made up of the most common words in your target language. The 100 core word list is the best list for absolute beginners. After you master that list, you can move on to the other lists in the series. The 2000 core word list is a combination of all of the lists plus an additional 1000 words. Having knowledge of about 2000 vocabulary words in your target language will set you up for success. Knowing a variety of words in your target language is important because it allows you to speak about and understand many different topics. While grammar is certainly important, having the vocabulary you need to go about daily life, study, or make plans is essential. So, how do you use the core word lists? With our flashcard feature. Our flashcard tool can display the vocabulary word, show a picture and translation, and play an audio recording of the vocabulary. You'll work on improving your recognition, production, and listening comprehension skills. Using a tool like this helps you associate new words with images. You also get to hear pronunciation and pitch accents from native speakers. You have the ability to choose how many new cards you'd like to learn daily. By the way, using the 2000 core word list isn't the only way to review all key vocabulary words. You can also merge your preferred lists. If you lack confidence in speaking, studying vocabulary can help you. If you master the most common words in your target language, speaking will become a bit easier. Among our core word lists are popular topics relating to hobbies, nature, food, and recreation. If you need some help making sentences with your new vocabulary, you can take a look at the core word list example sentences for ideas. These are all steps you can take to improve your speaking confidence. Second, create your own sentences. Creating your own sentences is a great way to work on memorizing new vocabulary. You can create sentences related to your daily life so that you can easily remember the sentences and use them. You can also try creating sentences you think you're likely to need before a conversation with a native speaker. In addition to our core word lists, we also have a dictionary feature. If you need help finding a certain vocabulary word, you can search for it in our dictionary. The dictionary includes audio from native speakers, so you can hear how the word is pronounced naturally and at a slower speed. With a premium membership, you'll have access to your own personal word bank. You'll be able to add words from the dictionary and our lessons to this word bank and study them using flashcards. Another thing that can help you with memorization is reading along with lesson dialogues and listening to the host's explanations. When you find a sentence that stands out, or when you make a sentence you think will be useful, make sure to actually use the sentence. Your memory will grow stronger and stronger as you review sentences and practice saying them from memory. Third, read every day. How often do you read in your target language? Reading is a fun activity that can motivate you to spend some time studying new vocabulary. When you read, you encounter words you've seen in lessons, but you also find new words. Apart from reading for fun, our language learning program offers reading comprehension pathways for all levels. These pathways feature video lessons with vocabulary you're likely to see in real life. For example, an advanced pathway might include lessons for understanding promotional information, medical instructions, and directions. These pathways are designed to test your ability to recognize words. Another way to memorize words fast is by learning songs in your target language. 
If you're studying a language with sounds that are very different from your first language, this can be a really helpful tactic. You can make a monthly goal to memorize one to three songs you like in your target language. You can find the lyrics to the song with a search online, and you can search for a translation as well. As you listen to the song, read the lyrics. This can help you connect the sounds you're hearing with the characters or the letters you're reading. And remember, the songs can be from anywhere. It could be a kid's song, a new pop song, or a TV show theme. You can choose. The key is to find a fun way to read every day. This will help you improve your vocabulary. Fourth, test your listening skills. Test your listening skills with our listening comprehension pathways. Each of the pathways presents a conversation, asks a question, and then gives a breakdown. In our audio lessons, the hosts break down the dialogue by talking about the usage of key vocabulary and phrases. They also explain the grammar. After you listen to the breakdown, the dialogue is easier to understand. Make sure to re-listen to the lesson dialogues to review these important concepts. Another way to use our site for listening comprehension is by changing the flashcard settings. With our flashcards, you have the option to focus on building listening comprehension. If you choose this setting, the front of your flashcard will play an audio clip, and the back will show the answer. Additionally, if you're a Premium Plus member, you can practice listening with your native speaker teacher. You can request audio responses from your teacher instead of text. If you understand their message, you can respond with an audio file of your own, or with text. If you don't fully understand, you can ask your teacher for help. One more thing you can do is use TV shows to practice listening. You can choose a segment of a show to practice. Watch it once with subtitles, then once without subtitles. Determine how much you can comprehend, then look up the words you don't know. Fifth, take vocabulary quizzes. There are many ways to test yourself with vocabulary quizzes. Each of our lessons includes a vocabulary slideshow and quizzes that you can use for review. We also have video vocab pathways, which introduce new vocabulary based on certain themes, and they include pictures. You can also try making your own written tests with our flashcard feature. Change the flashcard settings according to your preferences. You can choose between recognition, production, and listening comprehension card types. Based on the card type you chose, write down either the vocabulary word or its translation when the card appears. Check your answers and give yourself a score for your study session. Writing vocabulary by hand is another great way to work on memorizing words. Earlier, we talked about learning vocabulary with songs. A fun and effective way to test your vocabulary and writing skills is to fill in the blanks. Copy and paste the lyrics of a song into a document and replace some of the words with blanks. Test your knowledge of the lyrics by filling in the blanks with the correct words. You can make it a little easier by including a word box, a list of vocabulary to use somewhere in the song. You can also do this with dialogues you want to practice from TV shows. To make sure you get all of the tools mentioned in this video, subscribe to our premium plan. You'll get access to all of our resources, including the core word lists and the flashcard tool. So to recap, in this video, we talked about five tips for memorizing new words. They were master our core word lists, create your own sentences, read every day, test your listening skills, and take vocabulary quizzes. These tips are fun and effective ways to help you reach your vocabulary goals a bit faster. If you want to go the extra mile, subscribe to Premium Plus to get access to your own native teacher. What are your vocabulary goals? How will you achieve them? Share your answers in the comment section below. And for even more tips on how to remember vocabulary fast, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors that determines someone's success, and it's true for language learning too. While it's important to choose a course and study method that's right for you, at the end of the day, the results you see are a product of the effort you put in. However, the quantity of time spent studying a new language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about how to actively engage your mind while studying. Number one. Think of your brain as a muscle. 
You might be familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen something similar on a poster on a wall. In the world of sports and workouts, there's a common idea that the discomfort you feel when running, lifting weights, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle being trained. Just as we need to push against our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental ones when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two, practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to spoken language and do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts in your target language for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or our lessons. During this exercise, you might feel like you're able to pick out only a few words here and there. During this practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if no words or just a few words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. When you reach a point where you can't understand any more words, go ahead and look at the subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again and read along with the text. Odds are that you'll see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, look up the unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful way to help you retain what you study. Number three, practicing with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is the best way to push your language skills. Using what you've studied to communicate in real time is how you'll really challenge yourself. Try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Remember, consistency is important when you're learning a foreign language. If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try visiting a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. For example, if you're a native English speaker learning a new language, you can find a native speaker of your target language who is learning English. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve his or her English. Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. It's okay to move far outside of your native language. You'll expand your mind and your skills. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming upstream. It's by keeping your head up through these ups and downs that you will experience the satisfaction that comes with learning a foreign language. Keep moving ahead. And for even more tips on how to engage better in your language learning, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. 
Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus will teach you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. Sixth, free language learning audiobooks. Want free access to our huge library of beginner-level audiobooks? Then click the link below. Save the audiobooks to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to France. Oog Henry, a passenger sitting next to him, introduces himself by saying, Hi, my name is Oog. Nice to meet you. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Oog. Enchanté. Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note, both Oog and Mark use only their first names. Ready? Bonjour. Je m'appelle Oog. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Once more with the English translation. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Oog. Enchanté. Hi, my name is Oog. Nice to meet you. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. My name is Marc. Nice to meet you. Let's take a closer look at Mark's response. Do you remember how Mark Lee introduces himself? My name is Mark. Nice to meet you. Je m'appelle Mark. Enchanté. Let's start with the expression. Enchanté. This literally means enchanted, but it translates as nice to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, my name is Mark? Je m'appelle Mark. First is... Je. I. Je. Je. Next is m'appelle, which translates as call myself. M'appelle. M'appelle. This starts with me. 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 Next is appel. Call. As in I call. App Appel. 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 Is from the verb. Appeler. Meaning to call. Appeler. Me. Is contracted with. Appel. To form. M'appel. Together. Je m'appelle. Literally means. I myself call, but it translates as, my name is. Je m'appelle. Next is the name. Marc. 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 Together it's. 
Je m'appelle Marc. My name is Mark. Je m'appelle Marc. The pattern is Je m'appelle Name. My name is Name. Je m'appelle Name. To use this pattern, simply replace the name placeholder with your name. Imagine you're Karen. In French, Karen. 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 Say, My name is Karen. Ready? Je m'appelle Karen. My name is Karen. Je m'appelle Karen. In written French, the spelling of the expression enchanté will depend on the genders of a speaker. For male speakers, enchanté. For female speakers, enchanté. Note the additional e at the end of the word. The pronunciation of these two variations will be exactly the same. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Lia. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Lia. Enchanté. Je suis Sadia. Enchanté. Je suis Sadia. Enchanté. Did you notice how the last speaker uses a different pattern? She says, Je suis Sadia. Enchanté. I'm Sadia. Nice to meet you. Je suis Sadia. Enchanté. First is, Je. I. Je. Next is, Suis. Am. Suis. 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 Is from the verb, Être. Meaning, to be. Être. Next is the name. Sadia. 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 Altogether. Je suis Sadia. I am Sadia. Je suis Sadia. The pattern is. Je suis name. I am name. Je suis name. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. Je m'appelle Name. My name is Name. Je m'appelle Name. Let's review the key vocabulary. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour. Bonjour. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say I? Je. Je. And how to say I call myself? Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Do you remember how Mark says, My name is Mark? Je m'appelle Marc. Je m'appelle Marc. 
Do you remember how to say, nice to meet you? Enchanté. Enchanté. Do you remember how Mark says, my name is Mark, nice to meet you? Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Do you remember how Hugues says hi? Bonjour. Bonjour. Do you remember how Hugues says hi? My name is Hugues. Nice to meet you. Bonjour, je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Bonjour, je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen. Karen. Respond to Hugues' self-introduction. Ready? Bonjour, je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Listen again and repeat. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sadia. Sadia. Ready? Bonjour. Je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Sadia. Enchanté. Listen again and repeat. Je m'appelle Sadia. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Sadia. Enchanté. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Leah. Leah. Ready? Bonjour, je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Lia. Enchanté. Listen again and repeat. Je m'appelle Lia. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Lia. Enchanté. In France, when two people meet for the first time, it's also common to just say your name on its own. Right after saying bonjour, you pause a bit and give your name. For example, bonjour, Lia, enchanté. Hello, Lia, nice to meet you. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to introduce yourself in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to France. Hugues Henry, a passenger sitting next to him, asks, Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. 
Note, the speakers in this conversation use formal French. Ready? D'où venez-vous? Je viens de New York. Once more with the English translation. D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? Je viens de New York. I'm from New York. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Oog Henry asks, Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? First is, D'où? From where? D'où? This starts with De. Which translates as from in this context. De. De. Next is Où. Meaning where. Où. Où. De. Is contracted with Où. To form D'où. Next is Venez. Come. As in, you come. Venez, venez, venez. Is from the verb. Venir. Meaning to come. Venir. After this is. Vous. Which is literally the plural form of you, as in, you all. But it's also the formal way to address a single person, as is the case here. Vous. Vous. Together. Venez-vous? Translates as, you come. Venez-vous? All together. D'où venez-vous? Literally means, from where come you. But it translates as, where are you from? D'où venez-vous? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I'm from New York. Je viens de New York. First is Je. I. Je. Je. Next is Viens. Meaning come, as in I come. Viens. 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 Is from the verb. Venir. Meaning to come. Venir. After this is. De. Which means from in this context. De. Last is the city. New York. New York. New York. New York. Altogether it's. Je viens de New York. This literally means I come from New York but can translate as, I'm from New York. Je viens de New York. The pattern is, Je viens de city name. I'm from city name. Je viens de city name. To use this pattern, simply replace the city name placeholder with the name of your hometown. Imagine you're from Sydney. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Say, I'm from Sydney. Ready? Je viens de Sydney. I'm from Sydney. Je viens de Sydney. When talking about where you're from, de is used before feminine nouns. All cities are feminine in French, so when talking about your hometown or home city, use de. You can also use this pattern with countries. However, countries can be either masculine or feminine. If you use this pattern with a country name that's masculine, use du instead of de. For example, je viens de France. France, France, is feminine. Je viens du Japon. Japon, Japan, is masculine. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. 
Je viens de New York. Je viens de New York. Je viens de Nantes. Je viens de Nantes. Je viens de Seattle. Je viens de Seattle. Je viens de Londres. Je viens de Londres. Je viens de Paris. Je viens de Paris. Je suis australienne. Je suis australienne. Did you notice how the last speaker uses a different pattern? She says, Je suis australienne. I'm Australian. Je suis australienne. First is, Je. I. Je. Je. Next is, Suis. Am. As in, I am. Suis. 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 Is from the verb. Être. Meaning to be. Être. Together it's. Je suis. Meaning, I am. Je suis. After this is. Australienne. Meaning Australian. Australienne. Australienne. Note. Australienne. Is feminine. This pattern is. Je suis nationality. I'm nationality. Je suis nationality. In Mia Martin's case, she uses the feminine adjective. Australienne. To describe herself. Je suis Australienne. In the case of a male speaker from Australia, he would use a masculine adjective. Australien. To describe himself. Je suis Australien. I'm Australian. Je suis Australien. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. Je viens de city name. I am from city name. Je viens de city name. Let's review the key vocabulary. Nantes. 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 Seattle. 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 Londres. London. Londres. Londres. Paris. 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say New York? New York. New York. And how to say from New York? De New York. De New York. Do you remember how to say I? Je. Je. Do you remember how Mark Lee says I'm from New York? Je viens de New York. Je viens de New York. Do you remember the formal way to say you? Vous, 
vous, vous. And how to say from where? Do, do. Do you remember how Hugues Henri asks, where are you from? D'où venez-vous? D'où venez-vous? Do you remember how to say London? Londres. Londres. Do you remember how to say Seattle? Seattle. Seattle. Do you remember how to say Paris? Paris. Paris. Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from London. Respond to Oog Henry's question. Ready? D'où venez-vous? Je viens de Londres. Listen again and repeat. Je viens de Londres. Je viens de Londres. Let's try another. Imagine you're Emma Auge from Seattle. Ready? D'où venez-vous? Je viens de Seattle. Listen again and repeat. Je viens de Seattle. Je viens de Seattle. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Liam Mercier from Paris. Ready? D'où venez-vous? Je viens de Paris. Listen again and repeat. Je viens de Paris. Je viens de Paris. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, Take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to tell where you are from in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to France. He asks the passenger sitting next to him, Oog Henry, are you a student? Êtes-vous étudiant? Listen to the conversation and focus on Oog's response. The speakers in this conversation use formal French. Ready? Êtes-vous étudiant? Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. Once more with the English translation. Êtes-vous étudiant? Are you a student? Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks, Are you a student? Êtes-vous étudiant? First is, Et. 
R, as in R U. Et, et, et. Is from the verb être, meaning to be. Être. After this is vous, the plural form of you, as in you all. But here it's the formal way to address a single person. Vous, vous. Together, êtes-vous? Are you? When addressing a single person, êtes-vous? Last is the word, étudiant. Student. Étudiant. Étudiant. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Étudiant. Is masculine singular. Altogether, it's. Êtes-vous étudiant? Are you a student? Êtes-vous étudiant? Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Oog says, No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. First is, Non. No. Non. Non. It answers Mark's yes or no question. Are you a student? Êtes-vous étudiant? After this, Oog specifies that he's not a student. Je ne suis pas étudiant. I'm not a student. Je ne suis pas étudiant. First is... Je. I. Je. Je. After this is... Ne suis pas. Meaning am not. Ne suis pas. Let's start with... Suis. Meaning am, as in I am. Suis. 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 Is from the verb... Être. Meaning to be. Être. Before the verb is... Ne. 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 After the verb is... Pa. 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 Together... Ne. Pa. Means not. Ne. Pa. Altogether, it's... Je ne suis pas. I am not. Je ne suis pas. Next is... Étudiant. Student. Étudiant. Altogether... Je ne suis pas étudiant. I'm not a student. Je ne suis pas étudiant. Oog then tells Mark his actual occupation. Je suis investisseur. I'm an investor. Je suis investisseur. First is... Je. I. Je. Next is... Suis. Am, as in I am. Suis. Last is... Investisseur. Investor. Investisseur. Investisseur. The word... Investisseur. Is a masculine singular noun. Together... Je suis investisseur. I'm an investor. Je suis investisseur. All together... Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. The pattern is... Non, je ne suis pas occupation. Je suis actual occupation. No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. Non, je ne suis pas occupation. Je suis actual occupation. Imagine you're Emma Auch, a student. The word for female student is... Étudiante. 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 Uk asks if you're a teacher. The word for a female teacher is... Professeur. 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 Say, no, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. 
Ready? Non, je ne suis pas professeur, je suis étudiante. No, I'm not a teacher, I'm a student. Non, je ne suis pas professeur, je suis étudiante. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. Non, je ne suis pas étudiant. Je suis investisseur. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis étudiante. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis étudiante. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis ingénieur. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis ingénieur. Non, je ne suis pas infirmière. Je suis médecin. Non, je ne suis pas infirmière. Je suis médecin. Non, je ne suis pas étudiante. Je suis professeur. Non. Je ne suis pas étudiante. Je suis professeur. Non, je suis barista. Non, je suis barista. Did you notice how the last speaker omits part of the response? Non, je suis barista. No, I'm a barista. Non, je suis barista. When directly responding to someone's question, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply answering, Non. No. There is no need to say, Je ne suis pas étudiant. I'm not a student. The pattern is, Non, je suis actual occupation. No, I'm actual occupation. Non, je suis Actual occupation. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. Non, je ne suis pas occupation. Je suis actual occupation. No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. Non, je ne suis pas occupation. Je suis actual occupation. Let's review the key vocabulary. Student. Étudiant. Étudiant. Étudiante. Étudiante. Teacher. Professeur. 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 Engineer. Ingénieur. 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 Nurse. Infirmier. Infirmier. Infirmière. Infirmière. Médecin. Doctor. Médecin. Médecin. Barista. 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me. Focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the word for a male investor? Investisseur. Investisseur. And how to say I? Je. Je. Do you remember how Hugues says, I'm an investor?
Je suis investisseur. Je suis investisseur. Do you remember the word for a male student? Étudiant. Étudiant. Do you remember how Hugues says, I'm not a student? Je ne suis pas étudiant. Je ne suis pas étudiant. Do you remember how Hugues Henry says, I'm not a student, I'm an investor? Je ne suis pas étudiant, je suis investisseur. Je ne suis pas étudiant, je suis investisseur. Do you remember the formal way to say you? Vous. Vous. Do you remember how Mark Lee asks, are you a student? Remember, Mark uses formal French. Êtes-vous étudiant? Êtes-vous étudiant? Do you remember the word for a female student? Étudiante. Étudiante. And the word for a male teacher? Professeur. Professeur. Do you remember the word for a female teacher? Professeur. Professeur. Do you remember the word for a male engineer? Ingénieur. Ingénieur. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're an engineer. Respond to Hugues' question. Ready? Êtes-vous professeur? Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis ingénieur. Listen again and repeat. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis ingénieur. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis ingénieur. Let's try another. Imagine you're Liam Mercier and you're a teacher. Ready? Êtes-vous étudiante? Non, je ne suis pas étudiante. Je suis professeur. Listen again and repeat. Non, je ne suis pas étudiante. Je suis professeur. Non, je ne suis pas étudiante. Je suis professeur. Let's try one more. Now, imagine you're Emma Auge and you're a student. Ready? Êtes-vous professeur? Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis étudiante. Listen again and repeat. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis étudiante. Non, je ne suis pas professeur. Je suis étudiante. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. 
When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to talk about your occupation in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn, one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight-hour day and you want to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you and you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside, and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So, that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. 
Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What's your reason for learning language? Is it a personal goal, a hobby, or do you have dreams of moving to a country where it's spoken? In this video, you'll learn why your reason is crucial for motivation and for your success in language learning. We'll look at the top 10 reasons for learning a language from language learners just like you. What's your number one reason for learning a language? Whatever your reason is, whether big or small, knowing it or knowing your why is crucial for success and motivation. Number one, I love the culture and the people who speak the language. This is a popular answer. Learning a language can be a great way to learn more about the culture and open up new ways to experience it. Number two, I want to understand my favorite songs, movies, and TV shows. That's right. Songs, movies, and shows are great ways to immerse yourself in the language. If you're spending your time learning and also immersing yourself, you'll learn faster. Number three, it's a beautiful language. Sometimes the answer is as simple as that. You have a genuine interest in the language itself. Number four, my family comes from a place where the language is spoken. This can be popular for students who have moved to a new country and might want to connect to their home country's culture. 
Learning a language lets them learn things about their heritage and communicate with people who can teach them more about their cultural history. If your grandmother speaks a different language from you, it can be pretty hard to connect. So a lot of people want to learn a language to connect to family members as well. Number five, I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. Similar to the reason above, perhaps you want to speak to your partner's parents or grandparents, but they don't speak your language. Not only can learning their native language let you connect with them on a more personal level, but it's also likely to impress them. Number six, I'm learning the language to impress someone. We have many students say that they want to learn a new language to impress someone in their life. This could be a teacher, a parent, a friend, or even someone they admire and look up to. It always feels good to accomplish something and have other people recognize and be proud of your achievement. And you see this very often in language learning. When you learn a new phrase or can make a longer conversation, the people around you are bound to be impressed. Number seven, a love of traveling. There's no surprise here. Many people want to learn a new language to be able to travel more. Because you can see new places and learn about different cultures, traveling is a popular hobby for many people. And what better way to connect with the people that you meet on your travels than by being able to speak with them in their native language. We have a lot of students who just want to learn some basic conversations to help them on their trips, but even this can help you day to day. Number eight, I want to live in a country that speaks the language. After traveling around, someone might discover a country that really appeals to them and they might decide they want to move there. But their language skills could use some work. Or maybe for a job or family reason, someone has to move to a new country. Not knowing the language can really make adjusting to a new home and even a new culture much more difficult. We have a lot of students who want to learn a language to help them when they move. Number nine, I just love learning languages. This is popular for people whose hobby is learning other languages. They fall in love with the process of actually studying and being able to speak in a new language. It's a huge feeling of accomplishment. Number 10, I want to open my mind and become more international. It's so important to expand your horizons and learn about more than your own culture. People around the world live their lives in different ways, and it's good to learn about them and how they interact. You never know what you could learn by opening your ears and mind to new things. Whatever your reason might be for learning a new language, as long as it keeps you motivated, it's a good one. Learning a new language is not an easy journey. It's one filled with lots of ups and downs. So keep in mind your reason and motivation for learning, whether it's so you can move to a new country or connect with a grandparent and let it push you towards success. And if you're ready to achieve your language goals, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, 
talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to power up your language? You can do this by using practical lessons that you can use in everyday life. In this video, you'll find out what it takes to power up your language right now. Imagine you're speaking a language without stopping to think. You have all the words and grammar to express what you want to say, and they're all flowing out of you as if you were a native speaker. That's when language becomes powerful. So how do you power up your language skills like that? Books and software alone won't help, but actual practical daily conversation lessons will. Native speakers that explain the conversation and teach you how to respond will power your language up. And so will these tools to help you master vocabulary and pronunciation quickly. First, power up your language with premium. This includes hundreds of audio and video lessons that will get you speaking. And you should know that we publish new lessons weekly. So on top of the current lesson library, there are even more lessons that you can learn along the way. And whatever your learning level is, we start you off with a lesson that's right for you. You can track your progress and see how much you've mastered with our site dashboard. Seeing your progress really helps you power up your language skills. It's really motivating to know that you're actually speaking and understanding a language that you couldn't before. Next, use the lesson notes. You don't get just the lessons. You also get detailed notes with each and every lesson meaning you get the complete lesson in writing and can easily follow along while you study. Plus, we've just recently upgraded them. The notes are brand new, easier to read, and work on any device, browser, or reader. Last, we have our premium study tools. As a premium member, you have unlimited website access, which means you also unlock our premium study tools. You'll get access to our 2,000 word core vocabulary list. These words are the most commonly used in everyday conversation, and they're essential to your conversational fluency. And you'll master them fast with our smart flashcard system and the word bank. You can perfect your pronunciation by reading from line-by-line -line transcripts. This means you'll have access to all the must-know words, and you'll be able to practice them with the correct pronunciation. Don't let your language learning slow down. If you're running low on motivation, power up your language learning with premium. Get all of our premium tools for studying. Just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to make consistent language breakthroughs? Here's how you do it with our advanced language learning system. In this video, you'll learn about four simple steps to make breakthroughs with our lessons. First, by breakthrough, we mean finally understanding and speaking language that you simply couldn't before. You finally break through. So if you're stuck at a beginner level or just aren't making much progress, this is for you. Here are four simple steps, but the first one is the most important one. Step one, accept that you need new lessons, new real life conversations, new words, and new phrases. So you're hearing something new and improving your language skills. Repeating phrases you already know won't help you move forward. That's a mistake most learners make. They stick to what they already know. 
But if you could start understanding more language in minutes and start making consistent breakthroughs, would you? Well, here's how you break through with our learning system. Remember, you need to have a source of new lessons and new conversations to expose yourself to language you don't yet know. So if you're listening to our new lessons, which we publish weekly on top of our existing lesson library, you're good to go. If not, start right now. These lessons get you speaking and understanding language in minutes. Here's how. Visit the site, choose a new series or learning level that you haven't done already, and start with the first lesson. Step two, listen to a new lesson and expose yourself to real life conversations. Now, you might not understand it at first, but in time you will. All the real life conversations you hear in lessons are broken down, explained and translated right after by our instructors. Plus, you can also read along with lesson notes so you never miss a word. So now you can actually understand the entire conversation. As a listener, you'll get exposed to brand new conversations and start understanding real life conversations. So what's the next step? Step three, you'll need to start speaking and repeating what you hear. That's the best way to start speaking any language. Do it from day one. With our voice recorder available inside the lessons, you can listen to each line of the conversation and then repeat and record yourself to see how close you are to a native speaker. Finally, step four. In case you missed anything, you can review with vocab lists, quizzes, and the line by line feature. The line by line breaks down the conversation so you can hear and read each line again and again. So even if you can't catch something the first time, you can review what you heard and be able to hear it on the next listen. But remember, the most important step is the first one. You must jump into new lessons and new conversations in order to make a language breakthrough. To make your language breakthrough, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the movies conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn to say phrases like, does this have subtitles? When does the movie start? And much more. Second, the how to talk about your feelings PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 words and phrases for feelings with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review it on any device. Third, 30 must know opposite adjectives. Learn how to say young and old, hot and cold, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about people's appearances? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn to describe others with words like tall, short, muscular, and much more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to give your phone number. This is Mark Lee, and he's at City Hall registering his address. The civil servant who is helping him says, Your phone number, please. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Note the civil servant in this conversation uses formal French. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Once more with the English translation. 
Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Your phone number, please. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. My phone number is 06 00 34 57 00. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the civil servant says, Your phone number, please? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Let's start with Numéro de téléphone. Meaning phone number. Numéro de téléphone. First is numéro number numéro numéro In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Numéro is masculine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Next is de of in this context. De de. Last is. Téléphone. Phone. Téléphone. Téléphone. Note. Téléphone. Translates as telephone or phone. We'll use the abbreviated version, phone, as this will include various kinds of phones, including mobile phones, landlines, and so forth. Together, it's. Numéro de téléphone. This literally means number of telephone, or telephone's number, but it translates as telephone number or phone number. Numéro de téléphone. Before this is... Votre. Meaning your, in this formal context. Votre. Votre. Note. Votre. Fundamentally means your, when referring to more than one person but it's also a formal way to say your when speaking to someone directly using formal French. Now, you might be more familiar with ton an informal word for your, as in ton numéro de téléphone your phone number. As this is a city office setting, the formal form votre is more appropriate. Altogether, votre numéro de téléphone Your phone number. Votre numéro de téléphone. Last is. S'il vous plaît. Meaning please. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Altogether, it's. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Your phone number, please. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Remember this request. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember Mark's response? My phone number is 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Do you remember the phrase for phone number? Numéro de téléphone. Phone number. Numéro de téléphone. Before this is the word. Mon. My. Mon. Mon. In this sentence, mon is masculine and singular to agree with numéro. Altogether, it's mon numéro de téléphone. My phone number. Mon numéro de téléphone. Next is et is, as in my phone number is. Eh, eh, 
Et is from the verb être, meaning to be. Être. Together, it's Mon numéro de téléphone est My phone number is Mon numéro de téléphone est Next is Le Think of it like the in English. Le Le Here Le is also masculine singular to agree with Numéro Note, in this sentence, the article le does not have a corresponding English translation. Next is Mark's phone number. 06-00-34-57-00 Note how Mark says his phone number. When giving your number in French, Include a slight pause after each group of two numbers. Altogether, it's Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. My phone number is 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 Zéro, zéro. The pattern is Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. My phone number is phone number. Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. To use this pattern, simply replace the phone number placeholder with your phone number. Imagine your phone number is 4, 4. Say, my phone number is 00112233344. Ready? Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00112233444. My phone number is 00112233344. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00112233444. In France, all numbers start with zero, with the exception of emergency services. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 11 22 33 44. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 6. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 07, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. 00, 01, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. Did you notice how I omitted? Mon numéro de téléphone est le... Zéro, 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 un, un, zéro, un, zéro, zéro, deux. Zéro, 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 un, un, zéro, un, zéro, zéro, deux. When directly responding to a request, 
it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply giving your phone number, there is no need to say, Mon numéro de téléphone est le. My phone number is. The pattern is. Phone number. You should be aware of this shortcut, but for this lesson, we'll use the sentence pattern. Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. My phone number is phone number. Mon numéro de téléphone est le phone number. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say phone? Téléphone. Téléphone. And how to say number? Numéro. Numéro. Do you remember how to say phone number? Numéro de téléphone. Numéro de téléphone. And how to say my phone number? Mon numéro de téléphone. Mon numéro de téléphone. Do you remember how to say, my phone number is? Mon numéro de téléphone est? Mon numéro de téléphone est? Do you remember how Mark says, my phone number is 0600 Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 06 00 34 57 00. Do you remember the formal way to say your phone number? Votre numéro de téléphone. Votre numéro de téléphone. And how to say please? S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Do you remember how the civil servant says your phone number, please? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee and your phone number is 08 72 36 90 66. Respond to the civil servant's request. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 8 7 2 3 6 9 0 6 6. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 8 7 2 3 6 9 0 6 6.
Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 8 7 2 3 6 9 0 6 6. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Lee and your phone number is 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 2 0 3. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Justine Jerome and your phone number is 00 99 88 77 66. Ready? Votre numéro de téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66. Listen again and repeat. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66. Mon numéro de téléphone est le 00 99 88 77 66. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to give your phone number in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone. I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about your family. This is Ben Lee, and he's at a coffee shop with his classmate, Justine Jerome. Ben is showing her some pictures. She points to one of them and asks, Is this your family? Est ta famille? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Once more with the English translation. Est-ce ta famille? Is this your family? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Justine asks, Is this your family? Est ta famille? Let's start with the word famille. Family. Famille. Famille. 
In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Famille is feminine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before famille is ta meaning your ta 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 is feminine and singular to agree with famille. Together, it's ta famille, your family, ta famille. Moving to the start of the sentence, eh, is, eh, eh. Note, eh, is from the verb, être, meaning to be, être. Next is, ce, this, ce. Ce. Together, it's s, meaning is this s. Notice the word order when asking a question. E is followed by ce. This. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject. In this case, note the pronunciation of s. S. It's pronounced as one sound. S. Is this? S. Altogether, it's. Est ta famille? Is this your family? Est ta famille? Note the rising intonation of the sentence to indicate that it's a question. Est ta famille? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Ben says, Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister, and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, et moi. This starts with the expression, Oui, meaning yes. Oui. Oui. It answers Justine's yes or no question. Is this your family? Est ta famille? After this, Ben points to the picture and says, C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. First is, C'est. Meaning, this is. C'est. C'est. Note. C'est is contracted with e to form c after this is mon père my father mon père père father père père mon my mon mon is masculine and singular to agree with père mon père Next is ma mère my mother ma mère mère mother mère mère ma my ma ma is feminine and singular to agree with mère ma mère After this is ma sœur my sister ma sœur Sir. Sister. Sir. Sir. Ma. My. Ma. Is feminine and singular to agree with. Sir. Ma sir. Next is. E. And. E. E. And last is. Moi. Me. Moi. Moi. All together. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. The pattern is. C'est family member, family member, family member et moi. This is 
family member, family member, family member, and me. To use this pattern, simply replace the family member placeholder with the appropriate word for my and members of your family. Remember that the word for my will be mon when your family member is male and ma when your family member is female. Imagine your family members are your father, your mother, your brother, and you. Frère is brother. Frère. Frère. Frère is masculine and singular. Therefore, my brother is mon frère. Mon frère. Say, this is my father, my mother, my brother, and me. Ready? C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. This is my father, my mother, my brother and me. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. C'est mon père, ma mère Ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père. Ma mère, ma sœur et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. C'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. Mes parents et moi. Mes parents et moi. Did you notice how I replaced mon père, ma mère? With mes parents? Mes parents et moi. My parents and me. The phrase Mes parents means my parents. Mes parents. Remember, in French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Parents is masculine and plural, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Parents. 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 Before this is Mais. My. Mais. Mais. Is masculine and plural to agree with Parents. Mes parents et moi. My parents and me. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? Oui. Oui. And how to say me? Moi. Moi. Do you remember how to say and? Et. Et. Do you remember how to say sister? Sœur, sœur. And how to say my sister? Ma sœur, ma sœur. Do you remember how to say mother? Mère, mère. 
and how to say my mother. Ma mère. Ma mère. Do you remember how to say father? Père. Père. And how to say my father? Mon père. Mon père. Do you remember how Ben says? Yes, this is my father, my mother, my sister, and me. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Do you remember how to say family? Famille. Famille. And how to say your family? Ta famille. Ta famille. Do you remember how Justine asks, Is this your family? Est-ce ta famille? Est-ce ta famille? Do you remember how to say brother? Frère. Frère. And how to say my brother? Mon frère. Mon frère. Let's practice. Imagine you're Sasha, Ben's younger sister. Respond to your friend's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? Es ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, mon frère et moi. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben's classmate, Noé Najar. You have a father, mother, and sister. Ready? Es ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon père. Ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur et moi. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben's classmate and language exchange partner, Justine Jerome. You have a father, mother, sister and brother. Ready? Est ta famille? Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi.
Oui, c'est mon père, ma mère, ma sœur, mon frère et moi. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now, you know how to talk about your own family in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family from a parent's perspective. This is Karen Lee, and she's studying with her French teacher, Sadia Simon. The teacher notices a picture on Karen's computer and asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Note, the teacher uses formal French. Ready? Est-ce votre famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Once more with the English translation. Est-ce votre famille? Is this your family? Oui. C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the teacher asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Let's start with the word famille. Family. Famille. Famille. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Famille is feminine and singular, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before this is votre meaning your when addressing one person in a formal context. Votre. Votre. Note. Votre. Fundamentally means your when addressing more than one person. But it's also a formal way to say your when speaking to one person directly using formal French. Now, you might be more familiar with ta. An informal word for your, as in Ta famille. Your family. As this is a conversation between two adults who don't know each other very well, the formal form Votre is more appropriate. Moving to the start of the sentence Est Is Est 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 Is from the verb Être To be Être Next is ce, this, ce, ce. Together it's s, meaning is this s. Notice the word order when asking a question. E, is, followed by ce, this. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject in this case. S. Is this? S. Altogether, it's. Est-ce votre famille? Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Note the rising intonation of the sentence to indicate that it's a question. Est-ce votre famille? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter, and me.
Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. This starts with the expression Oui. Meaning yes. Oui. Oui. It answers the teacher's yes or no question. Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? After this, Karen points to the picture and says, C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. First is, C'est, meaning this is. C'est, c'est. Note, Ce, is contracted with, Est, to form, C'est. After this is, Mon mari. My husband. Mon mari. Mari. Husband. Mari. Mari. Mon. My. Mon. Mon. Is masculine and singular to agree with. Mari. Mon mari. Next is. Mon fils. My son. Mon fils. Fils. Son. Fils. Fils. Mon. My. Mon. Is masculine and singular to agree with. Fils. Mon fils. After this is. Ma fille. My daughter. Ma fille. Fille. Daughter. Fille. Fille. Ma. My. Ma. Ma. Is feminine and singular to agree with. Fille. Ma fille. Next is. Et. And. Et. Et. And last is moi. Me. Moi. Moi. Altogether. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter and me. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. The pattern is C'est family member, family member, family member, et moi. This is family member, family member, family member, and me. To use this pattern, simply replace the family member placeholder with the appropriate word for my and members of your family. Remember that the word for my will be mon when your family member is male and Ma. When your family member is female. Imagine your family members are your wife, your son, your daughter, and you. Femme. Is wife. Femme. 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 Is feminine and singular. Therefore, my wife is. Ma femme. Ma femme. Say. This is my wife, my son, my daughter, and me. Ready? C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille, et moi. This is my wife, my son, my daughter, and me. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille, et moi. In French, the femme can mean both wife and woman. The intended meaning is understood through the context of usage. In this lesson, we only use the word femme as wife. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. C'est mon mari. 
mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, mon fils, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. C'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. Did you notice how the last speaker says the number of sons? C'est mon mari, mes deux fils et moi. This is my husband, my two sons, and me. Mes deux fils. My two sons. Mes deux fils. Let's start with fils. Sons. In this case, fils. Earlier in the lesson, fils. Translated as son. In this case, fils. Translates as sons, as there are two sons. Deux fils. Note the pronunciation and spelling of fils is the same whether it is plural or singular. Here, fils is masculine and plural, a fact that determines the form of other words in the sentence. Before this is de, two, de, de. Together, de fils, two sons, de fils. Before this is mais, my, mais, mais. Mais is masculine and plural to agree with fils. Together, mes deux fils. My two sons. Mes deux fils. To say my two daughters. Mes deux filles. My two daughters. Mes deux filles. Filles. Daughters. Filles. Fille is the plural form of fille, daughter, fille. Note, the pronunciation of the singular and the plural is the same. You should be aware of the plural form, but we'll use the singular nouns in this lesson. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? Oui. Oui. And how to say me? Moi. Moi. Do you remember how to say and? Et, et, and how to say daughter, fille, fille. Do you remember how to say my daughter, ma fille, ma fille, and how to say son. Fils, fils. Do you remember how to say my son? Mon fils, mon fils. And how to say husband? Marie, Marie. 
Do you remember how to say my husband? Mon mari. Mon mari. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, my son, my daughter, and me. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils, ma fille et moi. Do you remember how to say family? Famille. Famille. And the formal way to say your family? Votre famille. Votre famille. And do you remember how Sadia Simon asks, Is this your family? Est-ce votre famille? Est-ce votre famille? Do you remember how to say wife? Femme. Femme. And how to say my wife? Ma femme. Ma femme. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark's colleague, Paul Pouty. You have a wife and a daughter. Respond to Mark's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? Est-ce ta famille? Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Oui, c'est ma femme, ma fille et moi. Let's try another. This is Mark's boss, Denise Dumont. You have a husband, a daughter and a son. Ready? Est-ce votre famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, ma fille, mon fils et moi. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark's friend, Valérie Villiome. You have a husband and a son. Ready? Est-ce ta famille? Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Listen again and repeat. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Oui, c'est mon mari, mon fils et moi. Did you notice how Mark uses ta famille when asking about his friends and colleagues' families? Est ta famille? Is this your family? In less formal situations, like speaking with a friend or close colleague, the less formal ta, as in ta famille, is more appropriate. Ta, your, ta. 
ta. Note, ta is feminine and singular to agree with famille. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to talk about your family in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to greet someone at different times of the day. This is Sadia Simon, the Lee family's French teacher. Her schedule for the day is Mark Lee at 9 a.m., Karen Lee at 12 p.m., Ben Lee at 6 p.m. Listen to the greeting exchange between the three pairs. Pay attention to the time of day. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, Ben. Once more with the English translation. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Good morning, Miss Simon. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, Ben. Good evening, Ben. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. In the first conversation, do you remember how Mark says, Good morning, Miss Simone? Bonjour, Madame Simon. First is, Bonjour. Which literally means, good day, but translates as, good morning in this context. Bonjour. Bonjour. Note. Bonjour. Is a flexible greeting that can be used to mean good morning, good afternoon, or even just hello. You can use it all day until the evening. Next is. Madame. Miss. Madame. Madame. This is an honorific used for women. Finally, the teacher's family name, Simon. 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 Together it's... Madame Simon. Miss Simon. Madame Simon. Altogether it's... Bonjour, Madame Simon. Good morning, Miss Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. When including a person's name in a greeting, it's more common to say the person's name after the greeting. Note, using a person's family name in a greeting may come across as more formal. Do you remember the teacher's response? Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. First is... Bonjour. Good morning. In this context. Bonjour. Next. Monsieur. Mister. 
Monsieur. Monsieur. This is an honorific used for men. Finally, Mark's family name. Lee. Pronounced in French. Lee. 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 Altogether, it's... Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Bonjour, Monsieur Lee. Note this exchange is formal. In the second conversation, which takes place at noon, do you remember how Karen says, hello? Hint, it's the same greeting as the one used in the morning. Bonjour. Note that Karen's greeting is slightly less formal, as she doesn't say the teacher's name. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. The teacher's response is the same. Bonjour. This can translate as hello or good afternoon. Bonjour. Is a common way to greet people during the day. You can use it in formal and less formal situations. In the third conversation, which takes place in the evening at 6 p.m., do you remember how Ben says, Good evening, teacher? Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir is a common way to greet people during the evening and at night, in formal and less formal situations. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Next is... Professeur. This is the title meaning teacher in this case. Professeur. Professeur. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Professeur is feminine and singular. Altogether, it's... Bonsoir, professeur. Good evening, teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Do you remember the teacher's response? Good evening, Ben. Bonsoir, Ben. First is... Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Next is Ben's name pronounced in French. Ben. 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 Together it's... Bonsoir, Ben. Good evening, Ben. Bonsoir, Ben. Note that the teacher addresses Ben by his first name, as he is younger. This makes the greeting sound more informal. Let's look at the greetings once more. Listen and repeat, or speak along with me. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Salut. Salut. Did you notice the last greeting? Salut. In informal situations, you can use the greeting Salut. Hi. Salut. 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 Is a common greeting in French. However, it's only suitable for informal situations, such as when greeting friends. It translates as hi or hello, but it can also mean goodbye. Because of this, you can use Salut, 
both when meeting and parting. Let's review the key vocabulary. Professeur. Teacher. Professeur. 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 Teacher. Professeur. Professeur. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how Mark says, Good morning? Bonjour. Bonjour. Do you remember how Mark says, Good morning, Miss Simon? Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Do you remember how Karen says, Hello? Bonjour. Bonjour. And how to say, Good evening? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Do you remember how Ben says, Good evening, teacher? Use the feminine version of teacher. Bonsoir, professeur. Bonsoir, professeur. Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben Lee and you're attending your morning class. Respond by saying, good morning. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour. Listen again and repeat. Bonjour. Bonjour. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Lee, and you're attending your afternoon class. Respond by saying, Hello, Miss Simone. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Listen again and repeat. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Bonjour, Madame Simon. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Karen Lee, and you meet your neighbor in the evening. Respond by saying, Good evening. Ready? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Listen again and repeat. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try it anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to use basic greetings in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Helicopter. 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 Le président voyage en hélicoptère. The president travels by helicopter. 
Le président voyage en hélicoptère. Noir. Black. Noir. Noir. Black. Il porte un pantalon noir. He is wearing black pants. Il porte un pantalon noir. Brun. Brown. Brun. Brun. Brown. Elle a les cheveux bruns. She has brown hair. Elle a les cheveux bruns. Gris. Gray. Gris. Gris. Gray. L'éléphant est gris. The elephant is gray. L'éléphant est gris. Se reposer. Rest. Se reposer. Se reposer. Rest. Cette ville est un lieu idéal pour se reposer. The city is an ideal place to rest. Cette ville est un lieu idéal pour se reposer. Entendre. Hear. Entendre. Entendre. Hear. On pouvait entendre une goutte tomber. You could hear a drop fall. On pouvait entendre une goutte tomber. Veux. Want. Veux. Veux. Want. Arrête de parler. Je veux écouter le film. Stop talking. I want to watch the movie. Arrête de parler. Je veux écouter le film. Dégoûtant. Disgusting. Dégoûtant. Dégoûtant. Disgusting. L'homme mange un apéritif dégoûtant. The man is eating a disgusting snack. L'homme mange un apéritif dégoûtant. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Ce grand magasin a 11 étages. The department store has 11 floors. Ce grand magasin a 11 étages. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Mon numéro de compte bancaire contient 12 chiffres. My bank account numbers contains 12 digits. Mon numéro de compte bancaire contient 12 chiffres. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. Il a 13 ans. He is 13 years old. Il a 13 ans. Mail. Email. Mail. Mail. Email. J'envoie un mail à Cécile. I'm sending an email to Cécile. J'envoie un mail à Cécile. Téléphone portable. Cellular phone. Téléphone portable. Téléphone portable. Cellular phone. La femme écrivait un message sur son téléphone portable. The woman texted on her cellular phone. La femme écrivait un message sur son téléphone portable. SMS. Text message. SMS. SMS. Text message. Écrire un SMS. Type a text message. Écrire un SMS. Bouche. 
mouse bush bush mouse avoir une grande bouche having a big mouse avoir une grande bouche joue cheek joue joue cheek elle se demande pourquoi il a du rouge à lèvres sur la joue. She wonders why he has lipstick on his cheek. Elle se demande pourquoi il a du rouge à lèvres sur la joue. Nez. Nose. Nez. Nez. Nose. Quand il fait froid, votre nez devient rouge. When it's cold, your nose gets red. Quand il fait froid, votre nez devient rouge. Cahier. Notebook. Cahier. Cahier. Notebook. J'achète mes cahiers en papeterie. I buy my notebooks at the stationery shop. J'achète mes cahiers en papeterie. Crayon. Pencil. Crayon, crayon, pencil. Elle tient son crayon dans la mauvaise main. She holds her pencil in the wrong hand. Elle tient son crayon dans la mauvaise main. Gomme, eraser. Gomme, gomme, eraser. Puis-je utiliser votre gomme? Can I use your eraser? Puis-je utiliser votre gomme? Blanc. White. Blanc. Blanc. White. Blanche-Neige est une princesse. Snow White is a princess. Blanche-Neige est une princesse. Rouge. Red. Rouge. Rouge. Red. Arrête-toi au feu rouge. Stop at the red light. Arrête-toi au feu rouge. Vert. Green. Vert. Vert. Green. La forêt est très verte cet été. The forest is very green in the summer. La forêt est très verte cet été. Finir. Finish. Finir. Finir. Finish. Ils espèrent finir demain. They hope to finish tomorrow. Ils espèrent finir demain. Commencer. Start. Commencer. Commencer. Start. Je ne peux pas commencer la journée sans café. I can't start the day without coffee. Je ne peux pas commencer la journée sans café. Devenir. Become. Devenir. Devenir. Become. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. My cousin wants to become a pilot. Mon cousin veut devenir pilote. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. Ma fille a 14 ans. My daughter is 14 years old. Ma fille a 14 ans. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. La ville est à 15 km. The city is at 15 km. La ville est à 15 km. 
seize, sixteen, seize, seize, sixteen, seize chaises sèches, sixteen chairs are drying, seize chaises sèches, téléphone, 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 téléphone. Téléphone. Mon téléphone marche bien. My téléphone works well. Mon téléphone marche bien. Oeil. Aïe. Oeil. Oeil. Aïe. Son oeil est ouvert. His eye is open. Son œil est ouvert. Dents. Tis. Dents. Dents. Tis. Se brosser les dents. To brush your teeth. Se brosser les dents. Lèvres. Lip. Lèvres. Lèvres. Lip. Avoir les lèvres rouges. Having red lips. Avoir les lèvres rouges. Photocopieuse. Copy machine. Photocopieuse. Photocopieuse. Copy machine. La photocopieuse est cassée. The copy machine is broken. La photocopieuse est cassée. Bureau. Desk. Bureau. Bureau. Desk. Le bureau est en bois. The desk is made of wood. Le bureau est en bois. Livre. Book. Livre, livre, book. Ce livre est en stock. This book is in stock. Ce livre est en stock. Stylo, pen. Stylo, stylo, pen. C'est ton stylo? Is this your pen? C'est ton stylo. Post. Post office. Post. Post. Post office. Mon bureau est près de la poste. My office is next to the post office. Mon bureau est près de la poste. Bibliothèque. Library. Bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. Library. Je révise à la bibliothèque. I study at the library. Je révise à la bibliothèque. Supermarché. Supermarket. Supermarché. Supermarché. Supermarket. J'ai fait des courses au supermarché. I shopped at the supermarket. J'ai fait des courses au supermarché. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. 
and doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn, one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight-hour day and you want to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you and you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside, and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. 
The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like, so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What are some surefire ways to stay motivated when you're learning a language? In this video, we're going to talk about 10 surefire ways to stay motivated and stay on track. All right, we asked our Premium and Premium Plus members for their tested techniques. You'll find out what worked for them. Number one, you must see your progress. In other words, you have to see it to believe it. There's nothing better than seeing your results firsthand. It's like seeing muscles in the mirror after working out. How do you do this with language? In order to see it, you have to start measuring it first. And you can do that with the dashboard on our website. With the dashboard, you can see how many lessons and how much of the language you've mastered so far. So review the progress you've made with the dashboard on the site. Number two, use the Daily Dose of Language app. With this, you get free daily mini lessons, but that's not all. This app keeps you on track because it actually sends you daily reminders. If you need that extra push or reminder, this app does it for you. And the Daily Dose lessons are quick and easy. They take just one minute of your time. Number three, learn with somebody better than you. A tutor, a friend, and you can even learn with your own teacher with a Premium Plus subscription. Simply having someone better than you by your side is enough to help you improve and motivate you. It's like having a coach. Number four, set a small, measurable goal. For example, finish 10 lessons in one week, or learn 20 words in a week. Most people give up because they have a vague goal, like I want to be fluent, that they don't know how to reach. But if you aim small and make it measurable, you'll have a much better chance of reaching it. Your goal is to learn 20 words, and you know 17 already. Because you know how close you are, you're more motivated to close the gap and reach your goal. Number five, watch movies and shows in your target language. First of all, we recommend this because it's fun. But more importantly, when you understand what you hear, it's a clear sign of progress and you'll feel good about it. Number six, listen to music in your target language. Music is enjoyable, and if you make it part of your routine, you're giving yourself a nice break in between lessons. But you're still immersing yourself in the language. So if you enjoy this routine, you're more likely to stay motivated. Number seven, do the lessons that you enjoy. 
Just like with music, if you enjoy our audio and video lessons, then stick with them. If you have any favorite lessons, remember you can always download them to your device and review them as much as you want. They're yours to keep. Number eight, understand that language learning is a marathon. Learning a new language is not a sprint. Most people think they can study for hours and suddenly get better. But when they realize that it takes time, this can hurt their motivation. So understand that it's a marathon. Remember that it's better to study for a few minutes every day than pulling a five hour cram session that will burn you out. Number nine, keep the big goal in mind. Imagine yourself being fluent. Small, measurable goals are definitely important. But when you just don't feel like learning, which is completely natural, by the way, remember the big goal. Having the big picture in mind will remind you of what's important and put you back on track. Number 10, invest in the language. Make a commitment. Whether you buy a book or a subscription, enroll in a class, or join a study group, by investing and making a commitment, you're much more likely to go through with it. You've paid for it, so you value it more. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Plus, other people expect you to show up. This can be extremely helpful when working towards your language goals. And that's it. There are so many ways to keep yourself motivated. Do you have a favorite way? Leave us a comment and let us know. So to make sure you stay motivated in your studies, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? You'll need to know more words and phrases to really make new conversations and ultimately connections. In this video, you'll discover six ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary list. Here's what makes this study tool so powerful. This is your free library of vocab and phrase lessons. You can learn words and phrases for current events like Halloween or New Year's. There are also many useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. In other words, you learn phrases that you wouldn't normally find in textbooks. And if you want to learn extra fast, you can use the slideshow tool. Just tap on or click on view slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And yes, these vocab lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is through conversations. You get to hear how the words are used. So in every lesson dialogue, you'll come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. So when you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll know them all. Number three, learn with our 2,000 most common words list. Here's a question for you. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000, 5,000? Actually, language experts say you need only about 1,500 to reach conversational fluency. And with this study tool, the 2,000 most common words list, you get the words you need for conversational fluency right up front. That's what makes this study tool so powerful. It's all here for you. And they're broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, and months. Now, 2,000 is quite a lot to learn. Do you have to learn it all? Well, you don't have to learn it all at once. You can go category by category. You can also start with the top 100 words, then move on to the top 200, 300, and so on, until you get to 2,000. So if you're an absolute beginner, you can start with the top 100 words. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to the next category. You can also use other study tools to learn these words faster, right? Such as number four, study with spaced repetition flashcards. Now, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. Picture this. Think of these as a teacher inside of your computer who quizzes you and sorts the words for you. So words that you struggle with, you'll be quizzed on more and more, and words that you know, you'll see less and less. So they display the words as needed, so you never forget them. In every session, they'll refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new ones. That's exactly how our smart flashcards work. And because you get drilled on the words you struggle with, you have no choice but to master them and improve. You have no choice but to succeed. 
You can also study the words from your lessons and vocab lists with the very same flashcard tool. Number five, create printable word lists with the word bank. The word bank is a study tool that lets you save words and phrases from lessons and vocab lists. Think of it as your extended brain. If you come across a new word that you want to review later, you can save it to the word bank. But the word bank also lets you print out your word lists. So click on the printer friendly option inside word bank and print out your collection of words. You can use that sheet for writing practice. Number six, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow it, meaning listen to the audio pronunciation and say it out loud. You should do this because it's the actual practice that gets you to remember it. So say it, write it, listen to it again. Doing this will help lock the words into your memory. So if you want to take advantage of any of these tools for yourself, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you studying a language but starting to lose motivation? In this video, we're going to talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. After six months to a year of studying a language, you might be feeling like you're losing a little bit of steam. Maybe you started out strong and now you're feeling a bit low. Maybe you aren't seeing the results you wanted or you think your efforts aren't paying off. But the reason for that might not have anything to do with your studies. It might be more an issue about your reviewing and your goal setting. One, why you should review your past language goals. When you set goals, do you ever go back to review your progress? It can be a reminder of how far you've come and help you keep your motivation up. Let's say you started learning a language and you've been at it for a few months. In month one, you're excited and motivated. In month two, you're still going at it, but maybe the motivation is not as strong and you wanna make sure that you don't fall off, unfortunately, as most people do. So you work hard to keep at it. By month three, you're kind of on autopilot and learning with whatever has been working for you. That sounds like a good place to be, cruising on autopilot. Well, it may seem like a good place to be, but the problem is by month four, five, or six, if you've been coasting along for too long and haven't had any significant improvements, you may start wondering if you're actually learning or if you'll ever master the language. You might start losing motivation, and worse, you might even quit. If you're learning by yourself, it's hard. And if you're not tracking your progress, by month four or five, you might realize that the textbook you've been using isn't helping you increase your fluency. You might think you're going nowhere. So the reason to review is to check your progress. Maybe you can speak none of your target language in month one, but at the end of month three, you can speak three minutes. So that's some progress. And if you're at eight minutes now, for example, then you can definitely say that you've improved since the start. It's good for motivation, just knowing that you got a return on your time investment. So reviewing is good for progress and motivation. Also, it's natural to lose motivation with anything you're trying to learn or do. So it's something you need to keep up, something you need to keep in mind. What do you do when your motivation dips? You can stop, take some time to review and reflect. Is your motivation dipping? Are you studying less? Do you feel like you're not making progress? And if you say yes to these questions, then you can work on boosting your motivation to help you keep going. How do you boost your motivation? Well, do you remember anchor points? Anchor points are things that connect you or anchor you to your goal, such as a language class or a program. It could even be relatives or friends who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, or an upcoming trip to the target country. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you're watching a TV show in your target language, then it's natural for you to want to understand it better and your desire to learn goes up. If you're taking language classes where a teacher expects homework from you, that's another connection to the language. So you do the homework, you attend classes, you learn more. Ultimately, if you want to boost your motivation and keep going, you should get more anchor points. But how do you do that? Let's jump into the second part. Two, how to review your progress and maintain motivation. How do you review your progress? First, you always set small, measurable goals and always track results. The study resource you're using can be used for your review as well. 
It's easy to get demotivated and think that you've learned nothing. But if you're using a textbook, for example, you can set a number of pages and that can be a really good motivator, something to reach for. Making sure you're getting through and then testing yourself on material is a little harder if you're not actually using your textbook though. So make sure that you actually stick to the plan you set for yourself. Again, the tool you're using is not so important, but just make sure whatever you use, you measure it and track your progress. Reviewing is as simple as looking at your past goals and results. You can also do it the old school way and look through your notebooks, see how much you've written out. In fact, we have something called the Dean's Date with our Premium Plus plan, where our Premium Plus users send in all of the work they've completed with their teacher. The writings, the recordings, the assignments, and you can see it all, everything that you've done. Then you can see your actual results of your three months of work. Everything you've accomplished is in one place. Do you ever run out of motivation? Of course you do occasionally, and it's natural for everyone's motivation to dip after some time. Then if you lose motivation, how do you keep going? Just as we talked about earlier, add more anchor points, more connections to the language, whether that means enrolling in in-person classes at a real language school, planning trips, or signing up for a test. Those anchor points help you stay motivated. Your main ones need to be things that will keep you interested in your target language or the people in your life connected to it. These are the things that will keep you motivated. But it's also important to remember, whether you're struggling or you're progressing rapidly, that you have to keep your learning adaptive. As humans, we are adaptive. We adapt to environments, and this is the same thing. Your language learning path has to adapt as you progress. If you're progressing faster, there's a way to adapt. If you're progressing slower, there's also a way to adapt. Three, how you can keep going past the halfway point. If you've been studying the language for a few months, it's normal to start losing steam. If you're not losing steam and you're progressing, then great job, and maybe you can share some of your tips with us because it's one of the hardest things ever to stay motivated long term. If you are starting to lose steam, remember that this happens with any goal. It can happen to anyone at any time, so you need to learn how to adapt to it. By being aware that these dips are natural and that they happen, you can expect them. So when one does come around, you'll know how to boost your motivation and know how to keep yourself going. Here's what you do when a dip does come around. One, review your learning progress. If you've been setting small, measurable goals every month, then this won't be a problem. The goal here is to see how far you've come, and this will help you maintain motivation. If you can see that you learned 50 words in January, 50 in February, 100 in March, and so on, then you have measurable progress. And this lets you know that you're improving, even when you don't feel like you are. Second, if you're a Premium Plus student, you can also participate in the Dean's Date and submit your work on the deadline. Be sure to ask your Premium Plus teacher about it. Third, if you're a Premium or Premium Plus user, you can also check your dashboard and see how many flashcards you've studied and how many lessons you've completed. We track your progress for you. But of course, it's best to set goals like learn 50 words or speak one minute of conversation because completing a lesson may not mean that you've mastered everything inside. So if you've not been setting goals and tracking them, now is the time to start. Otherwise, do you know how much of the language you can speak? Or how many words you've learned? If you don't know, then you'll feel like you're floating around and not learning anything. So be sure to set small, measurable monthly goals. Fourth, create more anchor points to boost your motivation. Anchor points are connections to the language that keep you anchored to the language and your goal. It could be friends or relatives who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, an upcoming trip to the target country, language classes, or language programs. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you started learning a language because your relative speaks it, that motivation may not last forever. It may help you in month one or month two, but by month four, five, or six, your motivation might wear off. But you can decide to enroll in a class or start watching a TV show in that language. That will give you some new reasons to keep going to the language. In a way, you give yourself more reasons to learn. A lot of the time, the reasons why we start something are not often the reasons why we continue them. So don't be afraid to adjust your motivations as you go along. If you've reached a language milestone and are starting to feel a little less motivated, just take a look at these tips. Thorough review, setting anchor points, and reviewing your study methods will all help you keep going in your studies. For more strategies on how to keep studying, just check out our complete language learning program. 
Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Getting Sick Conversation Cheat Sheet. Are you able to describe your symptoms in your target language? If not, download our new conversation sheet and learn must know words and phrases for the doctor. Second, the Language Learning Starter Pack PDF ebook. If you're new to the language, do you know what words to learn first? With this ebook, you'll get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Start with these words first. Download it right now. Third, can you talk about economics in your target language? Learn how to say profit, demand, taxes, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, 30 must-know opposite nouns. Learn how to say day and night, question and answer, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fifth, free audiobooks for our members only. If you're not a member yet, sign up for a free lifetime account and unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 35% off premium or premium plus with the power up sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when talking on the phone. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for someone on the phone and to put someone on hold. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making a Phone Call PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Bonjour, je voudrais parler avec le responsable. D'accord, un instant. Once more with the English translation. Bonjour, je voudrais parler avec le responsable. Hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. D'accord, un instant. Okay, just a moment. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say hello on the phone. That's... Bonjour. Bonjour. Then, you'll need to learn how to say, I'd like to speak with person. The pattern is, Je voudrais parler avec person. For example, Hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Bonjour, je voudrais parler avec le responsable. Bonjour, je voudrais parler avec le responsable. Now, how do you answer this question? D'accord, un instant. Okay, just a moment. Listen to it again. D'accord, un instant. D'accord, un instant. This French sentence literally translates as, all right, one moment. But it means, okay, just a moment. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk on the phone. The person in charge. Le responsable. Le responsable. A sales representative. Le représentant des ventes. Le représentant des ventes. The manager. Le gérant. Le gérant. 
Customer service. Le service client. Le service client. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Je voudrais parler avec le représentant des ventes. D'accord. Un instant. Je voudrais parler avec le gérant. D'accord. Un instant. Je voudrais parler avec le service client. D'accord. Un instant. OK, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'd like to speak with, person? Je voudrais parler avec... Person. And how do you answer it? D'accord. Un instant. Imagine you want to talk to a sales representative. Do you remember how to say, a sales representative? Le représentant des ventes. Le représentant des ventes. Say, I'd like to speak with a sales representative. Je voudrais parler avec le représentant des ventes. Now say you want to talk to a sales representative and answer it. Je voudrais parler avec le représentant des ventes. D'accord. Un instant. Now, imagine you want to talk to the manager. Do you remember how to say, the manager? Le gérant. Le gérant. Say, I'd like to speak with the manager. Je voudrais parler avec le gérant. Now say you want to talk to the manager and answer it. Je voudrais parler avec le gérant. D'accord. Un instant. Now imagine you want to talk to customer service. Do you remember how to say customer service? Le service client. Le service client. Say, I'd like to speak with customer service. Je voudrais parler avec le service client. Now say you want to talk to customer service and answer it. Je voudrais parler avec le service client. D'accord. Un instant. With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in French. This video is a small portion of our can-do course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to use parting greetings. This is Karen Lee, and she's talking with her former homestay mother, Mathilde Martin. As Karen says goodbye, her children join her in saying goodnight. Focus on the way each person says goodbye. À bientôt. Bonne nuit. Repose-toi bien. À plus tard. Once more with the English translation. À bientôt. See you soon. 
Bonne nuit. Good night. Repose-toi bien. Rest well. À plus tard. See you later. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. First, do you remember how Karen says, See you soon. A bientôt. This starts with the preposition, A, which means something like until in this context. A. A. Next is, Bientôt. Soon. Bientôt. Bientôt. Altogether. À bientôt. Means something like until soon, but it translates as see you soon. À bientôt. À bientôt. Is fairly informal, which indicates a close relationship between Karen and Mathilde Martin, her former homestay mother. Do you remember how Sasha says, Good night. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Literally means good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. You use Bonne nuit. Good night when someone is about to go to bed and often when you don't plan on seeing someone again that night. Do you remember how Ben says, rest well? Repose-toi bien. Rest well. Repose-toi bien. First is, Repose-toi. Meaning rest. Repose-toi. Repose-toi. Note. Repose-toi. Is from the verb. Se reposer. Meaning to rest. Se reposer. Next is. Bien. Well. Bien. Bien. Together. Repose-toi bien. Rest well. Repose-toi bien. Note, this is appropriate for informal situations. Do you remember how Mathilde says, See you later? À plus tard. See you later. À plus tard. This starts with the preposition, À, which means something like until in this case. Ah. Ah. After this is plus more plus plus Pronunciation note. In most cases, you pronounce the s sound in plus. However, in this specific expression, you don't have to. Tard means late. Tard. Tard. Altogether, it's à plus tard. This means something like until later, but translates as see you later. À plus tard. Mathilde uses this to say goodbye to everyone. Even though it is slightly formal, it's a friendly way to say goodbye. With friends, French people tend to shorten à plus tard to à plus. 
In this case, you must pronounce the S. A plus. See you. A plus. A plus. Let's look at the parting greetings once more. Listen and repeat, or speak along with me. À bientôt. À bientôt. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. À plus tard. À plus tard. Repose-toi bien. Repose-toi bien. À plus. À plus. Salut. Salut. Au revoir. Au revoir. Did you notice the last two parting expressions I used? Salut. Au revoir. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. The first expression used was... Salut. Hi. Salut. Salut. In informal situations, you can use the greeting... Salut. Salut is a common greeting in French. However, it's only suitable for informal situations, such as when saying goodbye to friends. Note. Salut is also a common greeting translating as hi or hello. Because of this, you can use Salut both as a greeting and a parting expression. The second parting greeting Au revoir means see you. Au revoir. Au revoir. It's a formal greeting you can use when you're sure you're going to meet the other person again. You can use it to address one or more people. Au revoir. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, see you soon? À bientôt. À bientôt. And how to say, good night? Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Do you remember how to say rest well? Repose-toi bien. Repose-toi bien. And how to say see you later? À plus tard. À plus tard. Do you remember how to say see you? Hint is the shortened version of à plus tard. À plus. À plus. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're talking to Mathilde. Respond by saying good night. Ready? Bonne nuit.
Bonne nuit. Listen again and repeat. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha Lee and you're finishing class. Respond by saying, See you soon. Ready? A plus. A bientôt. Listen again and repeat. A bientôt. A bientôt. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben Lee and you're finishing coffee with your college friend, Justine. Respond by saying, See you. Ready? A plus tard. A plus. Listen again and repeat. A plus. A plus. With these can do videos, you'll see real life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in French. This video is a small portion of our can do course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use essential social expressions, such as thank you. This is Ben Lee, and he's on the train. A fellow passenger drops his wallet as he exits the train. Ben picks up the wallet and chases after the man. He calls to the man by saying, Excuse me. Excusez-moi. Listen to the following three short dialogues between Ben and the man. Ready? Excusez-moi. Oui? Ben hands the wallet to the man. Merci beaucoup. De rien. Ben turns to board the train, but the door is shut. Je suis désolé. Ce n'est rien. Once more with the English translation. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Oui? Yes. Ben hands the man the wallet. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. De rien. You're welcome. Ben turns to board the train, but the doors shut. Je suis désolé. I'm sorry. Ce n'est rien. It's all right. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at these three conversations. First, do you remember how Ben Lee says, Excuse me? Excusez-moi. In this context, Excusez-moi is used to get someone's attention and translates as 
Excuse me. Excusez-moi. First is Excusez. Meaning excuse. Excusez. Excusez. Excusez is from the verb Excusez. Meaning to excuse. Excusez. Next is Moi. Me. Moi. Moi. Together it's Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Excusez-moi. This is a formal expression. Ben uses it because he's speaking with someone he doesn't know. Note, this expression can also be used as a mild apology. But here, Ben uses it to get the attention of the person he's chasing after. Do you remember how the passenger acknowledges Ben by saying, Yes? Oui? Oui? Yes? Oui? Oui? The second part of the conversation takes place after Ben returns the passenger's wallet. Do you remember how the passenger politely says, Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. First is, Merci. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Next is, Beaucoup. A lot. So much. Beaucoup. Beaucoup. All together. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Adds more emphasis when you want to show appreciation. When you simply want to say thank you. Merci. Is enough. Do you remember how Ben says, You're welcome. De rien. First is de, meaning of. De, de. Next is rien. Nothing. Rien. Rien. Together, de rien means something like of nothing, but translates as you're welcome. De rien. After the train doors shut and Ben misses his train, do you remember how the passenger apologizes to Ben by saying, I'm sorry? Je suis désolé. First is Je. I. Je. Next is Suis. Am. As in, I am. Suis. Suis. Is from the verb. Être. Meaning to be. Être. Together. Je suis. I'm. Je suis. Last is. Désolé. Sorry. Désolé. Désolé. All together. Je suis désolé. I'm sorry. Je suis désolé. Do you remember how Ben replies, It's all right. Ce n'est rien. This starts with. Ce. This. Ce. Ce. Next is. Ne. Which means is not. Ne. 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 Not. Ne. E. Is. E. Ne is contracted with e to form 
Ne. Last is. Rien. Nothing. Rien. Rien. Note. Rien. Is a negative pronoun and must be paired with. Ne. Altogether. Ce n'est rien. Means something like, this is nothing, but it translates as, it's all right. Ce n'est rien. This is a common phrase used to express that things are all right. In more casual situations, you can remove the contracted form of Ne. Ce n'est rien. Becomes C'est rien. Note Ce is contracted with Est to form C'est for easier pronunciation. C'est rien. C'est rien. You can use this expression with friends or family. In the conversation, you learned De rien. As, you're welcome. In response to Merci. Thank you. Je vous en prie. Is another way to say, you're welcome. Je vous en prie. Note. This phrase is more formal than De rien. Je vous en prie can be used like the English You're welcome in response to Merci. It means something like I beg of you to do something but translate as You're welcome. Je vous en prie. In informal situations, you can say Je t'en prie. Here, te replaces the more formal vous, and te is contracted with en to form t'en. Je t'en prie. In the conversation, you learned je suis désolé, I'm sorry. In the case of mild apologies, such as accidentally bumping into someone, the phrases excusez-moi and pardon, pardon, are commonly used. Let's look at the expressions once more. Listen and repeat or speak along. Pay attention to the body language. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Oui. Oui. Merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. De rien. De rien. Je suis désolé. Je suis désolé. Ce n'est rien. Ce n'est rien. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how Benly says, Excuse me? Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. And how the passenger says, Yes? Oui? Oui? 
Do you remember how to say thank you? Merci. Merci. And how to say thank you very much? Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Do you remember how to say you're welcome? De rien. De rien. And how the passenger says, I'm sorry. Je suis désolé. Je suis désolé. Do you remember how Ben says, it's all right? Ce n'est rien. Ce n'est rien. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee and you receive a popular French candy from your French teacher. Say, thank you very much. Ready? Merci beaucoup. De rien. Listen again and repeat. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Lee, and a passenger bumps into you. Respond by saying, It's all right. Ready? Je suis désolé. Ce n'est rien. Listen again and repeat. Ce n'est rien. Ce n'est rien. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you see a man drop his wallet. Get his attention. Ready? Excusez-moi. Oui? Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in French. This video is a small portion of our can-do course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to ask about someone's well being. This is Mark Lee, and he's in the office break room. He sees Paul Petit, a colleague, and asks, How are you? Comment ça va? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Once more with the English translation. Comment ça va? How are you? Ça va bien, merci. I'm fine, thank you. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember.
These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks Paul, how are you? Comment ça va? First is, Comment? Meaning, how? Comment? Comment? Next is, Ça. It. Ça. Ça. Finally, Va. Goes. Va. Va. Va is from the verb aller meaning to go aller all together it's comment ça va this literally means how it goes but it translates as how are you comment ça va note the rising intonation of the sentence to mark that it's a question comment ça va let's take a closer look at the response do you remember how Paul says, I'm fine, thank you. Ça va bien, merci. I'm fine, thank you. Ça va bien, merci. First is, Ça va. Literally, it goes. Ça va. Ça va. Next is the word bien, meaning fine or well. Bien, bien. Together it's ça va bien. Literally, it goes well, but translates as I'm fine or I'm well. Ça va bien. Next is merci, meaning thank you. Merci. Merci. Altogether, it's... Ça va bien, merci. I'm fine, thank you. Ça va bien, merci. When using formal French... Comment allez-vous? How are you? Comment allez-vous? Imagine you're Sadia Simone, Mark Lee's French teacher. Use the formal expression for how are you? Comment allez-vous? How are you? Comment allez-vous? This is the most formal and most common expression. It can be used safely with anyone in any situation. An extremely common way to ask about someone's well-being is the phrase ça va? How are you? Ça va? Ça va is a shortened form of comment ça va? The usual response to ça va is ça va. Listen to the following exchange. Ça va? Ça va. Ça va? Ça va. The intonation makes the difference between the question and the answer. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Comment allez-vous? Ça va bien. Comment allez-vous? Ça va bien. Ça va? Ça va. Ça va? Ça va. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Et vous? 
Comment ça va Ça va bien. Et vous Did you notice I added the phrase Et vous Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Ça va bien, et vous? I'm fine, and you? First is et and et et. Next is vous. A formal word meaning you. Vous. Vous. Altogether, it's et vous. Meaning and you. Et vous. You can use this phrase to reciprocate the question when someone asks you about your well-being. For example, if someone says, Comment ça va? You can answer the question, then inquire about the other person's well-being with Et vous? And you? Et vous? Note, Vous? You is formal. For informal situations, you can replace the Vous? With Toi? Et toi? And you? Et toi? Let's review the key words and phrases. Très. Very. Très. Très. Et. And. Et. Et. Vous. Formal you. Vous. Vous. Tu. Informal you. Tu. Tu. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the word for how? Comment? Comment? And do you remember how Markley asks, how are you? Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Do you remember how to say fine? Bien. Bien. And how to say I'm fine? Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Do you remember how to say thank you? Merci. Merci. Do you remember how Paul Petit says, I'm fine, thank you? Ça va bien, merci. Ça va bien, merci. Do you remember the formal way to say, How are you? Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? 
Do you remember the informal way to say, how are you? Ça va? Ça va? Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark's colleague, Paul Petit. Ask how Mark is doing. Ready? Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Listen again and repeat. Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Let's try another. Imagine you're Karen's teacher, Sadia Simon. Ask about Karen's well-being using formal French. Ready? Comment allez-vous? Ça va bien. Listen again and repeat. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sasha and you meet your friend at school. Ask how she's doing using informal French. Ready? Ça va? Ça va. Listen again and repeat. Ça va? Ça va? Aide. Help. Aide. Aide. Help. J'apprécie leur aide. I appreciate their help. J'apprécie leur aide. Apprendre. Learn. Apprendre. Apprendre. Learn. Vous voulez apprendre à cuisiner français? Do you want to learn how to cook French food? Vous voulez apprendre à cuisiner français? Bouger. Move. Bouger. Bouger. Move. Je ne peux pas bouger car j'ai des fourmis dans les jambes. I can't move because I have pins and needles in my legs. Je ne peux pas bouger car j'ai des fourmis dans les jambes. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. Il a 17 ans. He is 17 years old. Il a 17 ans. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Il a 18 ans. He is 18 years old. Il a 18 ans. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. J'ai besoin de 19 boutons. I need 19 buttons. J'ai besoin de 19 boutons. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Il fait moins 20 degrés. It's minus 20 degrees. Il fait moins 20 degrés. Cou. Neck. Cou. Cou. Neck. J'ai le cou fragile. I have a fragile neck. J'ai le cou fragile. Visage. Face. Visage. Visage. Face. 
Cette ombre paraît être un visage. This shadow seems to be a face. Cette ombre paraît être un visage. Oreille. Ear. Oreille. Oreille. Ear. Il a l'oreille musicale. He has an ear for music. Il a l'oreille musicale. Cheveux. Hair. Cheveux. Cheveux. Hair. Tu as un joli nœud dans les cheveux. You have a nice bow in your hair. Tu as un joli nœud dans les cheveux. Montagne. Mountain. Montagne. Montagne. Mountain. Nous partons en randonnée en montagne. We are going on a hike in the mountains. Nous partons en randonnée en montagne. Plage. Beach. Plage. Plage. Beach. Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Tourists are enjoying their free time on the beach. Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Forêt tropicale. Rainforest. Forêt tropicale. Forêt tropicale. Rainforest. La forêt d'Amazonie est immense. The Amazon rainforest is very large. La forêt d'Amazonie est immense. Île. Island. Île. Île. Island. La Corse est une île française. Corsica is a French island. La Corse est une île française. Dictionnaire Dictionary Dictionnaire Dictionnaire Dictionary Mon dictionnaire est sur l'étagère. My dictionary is on the bookshelf. Mon dictionnaire est sur l'étagère. Bleu, blue, bleu, bleu, blue. Le soleil se couche derrière l'océan bleu. The sun sets behind the blue ocean. Le soleil se couche derrière l'océan bleu. Jaune, yellow, jaune. Jaune. Yellow. Un imperméable jaune. A yellow raincoat. Un imperméable jaune. Orange. 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 L'orange est une couleur très joyeuse. Orange is a very happy color. L'orange est une couleur très joyeuse. Couleur. Color. Couleur. Couleur. Color. La couleur de ses yeux est bleue. The color of his eyes is blue. La couleur de ses yeux est bleue. Ennuyeux. Boring. Ennuyeux. Ennuyeux. Boring. Le titre de ce livre semble ennuyeux, mais c'est sans compter le talent de l'auteur. The title of this book seems boring, but it is without considering the writer's talent. Le titre de ce livre semble ennuyeux, mais c'est sans compter le talent de l'auteur. Incroyable. Amazing. 
Incroyable. Incroyable. Amazing. Les paysages sont incroyables. The sceneries are amazing. Les paysages sont incroyables. Important. 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 L'art est important à l'école. Art is important at school. L'art est important à l'école. Carte de crédit. Credit card. Carte de crédit. Carte de crédit. Credit card. On a bloqué ma carte de crédit. They blocked my credit card. On a bloqué ma carte de crédit. Clé. Qui? Clé. Clé. Qui? J'ai encore perdu mes clés. I lost my keys again. J'ai encore perdu mes clés. Permis. Driver's license. Permis. Permis. Driver's license. Ça fait trois fois de suite que je rate mon permis. It's been three times in a row I failed the driver's license test. Ça fait trois fois de suite que je rate mon permis. Forêt. Forest. Forêt. Forêt. Forest. Le cerf vit dans la forêt. The deer lives in the forest. Le cerf vit dans la forêt. Fleuve. River. Fleuve. Fleuve. River. L'ours court dans le fleuve. The grizzly bear is running in the river. L'ours court dans le fleuve. Océan. Ocean. Océan. Océan. Ocean. Je préfère la mer à l'océan. I prefer the sea over the ocean. Je préfère la mer à l'océan. Lac. Lake. Lac. Lac. Lake. J'adore me baigner dans les lacs. I love to bathe in lakes. J'adore me baigner dans les lacs. Document. 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 Le document est prêt. The document is ready. Le document est prêt. Ordinateur. Computer. Ordinateur. Ordinateur. Computer. Cet ordinateur ne fonctionne pas. This computer doesn't work. Cet ordinateur ne fonctionne pas. Fax. Fax machine. Fax. Fax. Fax machine. Avez-vous un fax? Do you have a fax machine? Avez-vous un fax? Imprimante. Printer. Imprimante. Imprimante. Printer. L'imprimante dispose d'un faible niveau de bruit. The printer has a low noise level. L'imprimante dispose d'un faible niveau de bruit. Porte-mine. Mechanical pencil. Porte-mine. Porte-mine. 
Mechanical Pencil. Utilises-tu un porte-mine? Do you use mechanical pencil? Utilises-tu un porte-mine? Règle. Ruler. Règle. Règle. Ruler. Tracer un trait avec une règle. Draw a line with a ruler. Tracer un trait avec une règle. Marker. 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 Le marker est bientôt à court d'encre. The marker is running low on ink. Le marker est bientôt à court d'encre. Bank. 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 J'ai mon argent à la banque. My money is in the bank. J'ai mon argent à la banque. Épicerie. Convenience store. Épicerie. Épicerie. Convenience store. L'épicerie est ouverte 24 heures sur 24. The convenience store is open 24 hours. L'épicerie est ouverte 24 heures sur 24. Hôpital. Hospital. Hôpital. Hôpital. Hospital. Je vais à l'hôpital quand je suis malade. I go to the hospital when I am sick. Je vais à l'hôpital quand je suis malade. Portefeuille. Wallet. Portefeuille. Portefeuille. Wallet. Ma grand-mère m'a donné ce portefeuille. My grandmother gave me this wallet. Ma grand-mère m'a donné ce portefeuille. Sac à main. Purse. Sac à main. Sac à main. Purse. J'ai perdu mon sac à main hier. Yesterday, I lost my purse. J'ai perdu mon sac à main hier. Commande. Order. Commande. Commande. Order. Ce n'est pas ce que j'ai commandé. This isn't what I ordered. Ce n'est pas ce que j'ai commandé. Champ. Field. Champ. Champ. Field. La charrue n'est plus utilisée pour labourer un champ. The plot is not used to plow a field anymore. La charrue n'est plus utilisée pour labourer un champ. Désert. Desert. Désert. Désert. Desert. J'aime le désert en Afrique. I like the desert in Africa. J'aime le désert en Afrique. Patron. Boss. Patron. Patron. Boss. Le patron est en vacances. The boss is on vacation. Le patron est en vacances. Bureau. Office. Bureau. Bureau. Office. Aujourd'hui, je travaille au bureau. Today, I work in the office. Aujourd'hui, je travaille au bureau. Collègue. Coworker. Collègue. Collègue. Coworker. 
Voilà mon collègue préféré. Here is my favorite coworker. Voilà mon collègue préféré. Réunion. Meeting. Réunion. Réunion. Meeting. Aujourd'hui, j'ai eu une réunion. I had a meeting today. Aujourd'hui, j'ai eu une réunion. Gendarmerie. Police station. Gendarmerie. Gendarmerie. Police station. La gendarmerie est au centre-ville. The police station is downtown. La gendarmerie est au centre-ville. Pharmacie. Pharmacy. 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 La pharmacie vend des médicaments. The pharmacy sells medicine. La pharmacie vend des médicaments. Boulangerie. Bakery. Boulangerie. Boulangerie. Bakery. J'ai croisé mon professeur à la boulangerie. I bumped into my teacher at the bakery. J'ai croisé mon professeur à la boulangerie. Cinéma. Movie theater. Cinéma. Cinéma. Movie theater. Je vais au cinéma. I'm going to the movie theater. Je vais au cinéma. Négociation. 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 Il pense que c'est une négociation difficile. He thinks that it's a difficult negotiation. Il pense que c'est une négociation difficile. Contrat. Contract. Contrat. Contrat. Contract. Il va signer le contrat, aucun doute là-dessus. He is going to sign the contract, no doubt about it. Il va signer le contrat, aucun doute là-dessus. Affaire. Business. Affaire. Affaire. Business. L'anglais est la langue des affaires. English is a language of business. L'anglais est la langue des affaires. Affaire. Deal. Affaire. Affaire. Deal. C'est une affaire attirante. It's an attractive deal. C'est une affaire attirante. Chargé. Busy. Chargé. Chargé. Busy. Elle a un agenda chargé parce qu'elle a beaucoup trop de rendez-vous. She's got a busy schedule because she's got too many appointments. Elle a un agenda chargé parce qu'elle a beaucoup trop de rendez-vous. Grave. Serious. Grave. Grave. Serious. C'est une grave erreur. It's a serious mistake. C'est une grave erreur. Fatigué. Tired. Fatigué. Fatigué. Tired. Je ne suis pas fatigué. Je n'irai pas me coucher. I'm not tired. I won't go to bed. Je ne suis pas fatigué. Je n'irai pas me coucher. Supérieur. 
superior, supérieur, supérieur, superior. Son supérieur hiérarchique lui a demandé de ne plus être en retard aux réunions. His hierarchical superior asked him to not be late anymore on the meetings. Son supérieur hiérarchique lui a demandé de ne plus être en retard aux réunions. Entreprise Company Entreprise Entreprise Company Ça se passe bien dans ta nouvelle entreprise? Is it going well at your new company? Ça se passe bien dans ta nouvelle entreprise? Salaire Salary Salaire. Salaire. Salary. À combien est ton salaire? How high is your salary? À combien est ton salaire? Radio. 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 Ils le diffuseront demain à la radio. They broadcast it on the radio tomorrow. Ils le diffuseront demain à la radio. Télévision. Television. Télévision. 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 Nous regardons souvent la télévision. We often watch television. Nous regardons souvent la télévision. Internet. 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 J'ai Internet au bureau. I have the Internet at the office. J'ai Internet au bureau. Journal. Newspaper. Journal. Journal. Newspaper. J'achète le journal au tabac. I buy the newspaper at the tobacco shop. J'achète le journal au tabac. Chaîne d'information. News channel. Chaîne d'information. Chaîne d'information. News Channel J'allume la chaîne des infos le soir. I turn on the news channel in the evening. J'allume la chaîne des infos le soir. Instrument de musique Musical instrument Instrument de musique Instrument de musique. Musical instrument. Savez-vous jouer d'un instrument de musique? Can you play a musical instrument? Savez-vous jouer d'un instrument de musique? Peinture. Painting. Peinture. Peinture. Painting. 
Cette peinture est très artistique. This painting is very artistic. Cette peinture est très artistique. Théâtre. Theater. Théâtre. Théâtre. Theater. La représentation a lieu au théâtre. The show takes place at the theater. La représentation a lieu au théâtre. Comédie musicale. Musical. Comédie musicale. Comédie musicale. Musical. J'ai des billets pour une comédie musicale. I got tickets to a musical. J'ai des billets pour une comédie musicale. Opéra. 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 Je vais à l'opéra. I'm going to the opera. Je vais à l'opéra. Se détendre. Relax. Se détendre. Se détendre. Relax. Détends-toi. Tout va bien se passer. Relax. Everything will be fine. Détends-toi. Tout va bien se passer. Tableau blanc. Whiteboard. Tableau blanc. Tableau blanc. Whiteboard. Le tableau blanc est essentiel pour mes présentations. The whiteboard is essential for my presentations. Le tableau blanc est essentiel pour mes présentations. Tableau. Blackboard. Tableau. Tableau. Blackboard. Je marque mon nom sur le tableau. I mark my name on the blackboard. Je marque mon nom sur le tableau. Control. Test. Control. Control. Test. Il y a un contrôle de maths samedi prochain. There is a math test next Saturday. Il y a un contrôle de maths samedi prochain. Manuel. Textbook. Manuel. Manuel. Textbook. Le professeur lit quelque chose de très intéressant sur le manuel. The teacher reads something very interesting out of the textbook. Le professeur lit quelque chose de très intéressant sur le manuel. Devant. Front. Devant. Devant. Front. Il est devant moi. He is in front of me. Il est 
devant moi. Emploi. Job. Emploi. Emploi. Job. Ce n'est pas un emploi très populaire. It's not a very popular job. Ce n'est pas un emploi très populaire. Président. President. Président. 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 Il est le président. He is the president. Il est président. Industrie. Industry. Industrie. Industrie. Industry. Le tourisme est l'industrie du voyage. Tourism is a travel industry. Le tourisme est l'industrie du voyage. Ceinture. Belt. Ceinture. Ceinture. Belt. J'ai une ceinture noire. I have a black belt. J'ai une ceinture noire. Pièce. Coin. Pièce. Pièce. Coin. Le père donnait une pièce de monnaie. The father gave coins. Le père donnait une pièce de monnaie. Argent. Money. Argent. Argent. Money. As-tu de l'argent? Do you have any money? As-tu de l'argent? Carte de débit. Debit card. Carte de débit. Carte de débit. Debit card. J'ai perdu ma carte de débit et j'ai dû aller au commissariat. I lost my debit card and I had to go to the police. J'ai perdu ma carte de débit et j'ai dû aller au commissariat. Billet. Bill. Billet. Billet. Bill. Je n'ai jamais eu de billet de 500 euros. I have never had a 500 euro bill. Je n'ai jamais eu de billet de 500 euros. Photographie. Photography. Photographie. 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 La photographie est mon passe-temps. Photography is my hobby. La photographie est mon passe-temps. Décoller. Take off. Décoller. Décoller. Take off. L'avion décollera dans 20 minutes. 
The plane will take off in 20 minutes. L'avion décollera dans 20 minutes. Chambre. Bedroom. Chambre. Chambre. Bedroom. Je veux une grande chambre. I want a big bedroom. Je veux une grande chambre. Cuisine. Kitchen. Cuisine. Cuisine. Kitchen. La cuisine est à côté du salon. The kitchen is on one side of the living room. La cuisine est à côté du salon. Salle de bain. Bathroom. Salle de bain. Salle de bain. Bathroom. La salle de bain a une petite fenêtre. The bathroom has a tiny window. La salle de bain a une petite fenêtre. Remise des diplômes. Graduation. Remise des diplômes. Remise des diplômes. Graduation. Je ne suis jamais allée à ma remise des diplômes. I never went to my graduation. Je ne suis jamais allée à ma remise des diplômes. Promotion. 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 J'espère avoir une promotion. I hope to get a promotion. J'espère avoir une promotion. Anniversaire de mariage. Anniversary. Anniversaire de mariage. Anniversaire de mariage. Anniversary. C'est notre anniversaire de mariage. It's our anniversary. C'est notre anniversaire de mariage. Funérail. Funeral. Funérail. Funérail. Funeral. Les funérailles sont un moment de deuil et de souvenir. A funeral is a time to grieve and remember. Les funérailles sont un moment de deuil et de souvenir. Mariage. Wedding. Mariage. Mariage. Wedding. Je vais au mariage de Guillaume. I'm going to Guillaume's wedding. Je vais au mariage de Guillaume. Expliquer. Explain. Expliquer. Expliquer. Explain. Elle n'est pas au courant de la situation. Peux-tu lui expliquer? She is not aware of the situation. Can you explain it to her? Elle n'est pas au courant de la situation. Peux-tu lui expliquer? Derrière. 
back, derrière, derrière, back. Derrière notre maison, nous avons un jardin. At the back of our house, we have a garden. Derrière notre maison, nous avons un jardin. Est. East. Est. Est. East. Le soleil se lève à l'est. The sun rises in the east. Le soleil se lève à l'est. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of textbooks and digital detox. In this digital age where we're all using apps and smartphones to learn languages, you might not think of a textbook as the first resource to turn to, right? But if you're avoiding textbooks, then you're missing out on some powerful language learning benefits. So today you'll learn why textbooks are still a powerful resource in the digital age, why some, but not all, digital resources might hurt your ability to learn, and how to do a digital detox and learn off screen with our program. And we're giving away a brand new conversation cheat sheet, so keep watching. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Getting Sick Conversation Cheat Sheet. Are you able to describe your symptoms in your target language? If not, download our new conversation sheet and learn must-know words and phrases for the doctor. Second, the Language Learning Starter Pack PDF eBook. If you're new to the language, do you know what words to learn first? With this eBook, you'll get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Start with these words first. Download it right now. Third, can you talk about economics in your target language? Learn how to say profit, demand, taxes, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, 30 must-know opposite nouns. Learn how to say day and night, question and answer, and much more. You'll pick up more than 30 words with this vocab bonus. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The power of textbooks and digital detox. You probably have some language learning apps on your phone, right? But do you have any textbooks? Let us know in the comment section. Digital resources like apps and physical resources like books have their pros and cons. But if you're learning with digital resources only, you might be missing out on some benefits that come with physical resources. What are they? First, a digital detox. This is a basic one. A textbook gives you a break from the screen. You're not sitting in front of so much blue light all day, which can have an impact on your sleep. That's just for your overall health. Second, the ability to focus and improve your focus. Here's a question for you. How long is your attention span? Five minutes, 10 minutes? The thing is, attention and the ability to focus are crucial for learning and succeeding with any goal in life. But if you're learning on a device, you'll get pop-ups and notifications. If you're on YouTube, well, the algorithm will have you watching cat videos soon enough. These things are designed to keep you jumping from one thing to the next, and all of this hurts your attention span and your ability to learn. With a book, it's much easier to focus, and consistently learning with one can help improve your focus. Third, if the book has a really good story to follow, it makes it more fun to learn. This may not be something you can find in every textbook, but you can find it in textbook resources like bilingual storybooks. Fourth, you get a clear path to follow. Textbooks give you a linear path from page one to 100. You know where to go next, how far you are from the end, and what you have left to learn. With an app, you'll be forever swiping and not really knowing if you're getting anywhere. Fifth, textbooks have gone through academic rigor, meaning they've been made by teachers or checked by teachers. 
So you're learning the correct forms, the correct language, and you can rely on it to be accurate. If you Google for blogs about phrases to learn, there's a chance the information is not completely accurate. Sixth, textbook lessons are curated and organized so that what you learn on page one helps you understand page two and so on. It builds you up and teaches you crucial language skills that beginners need to know, like how to introduce yourself first, then how to grow that conversation. As an added bonus, you can write in them. What about the downsides of textbooks? There are a few. The content gets old fast. Language always changes. There's new slang. So that's where digital lessons do well. Also, books can get boring and overwhelming. An approach you can consider for a textbook is to put in a certain amount of time, say 20 or 30 minutes a day, and then walk away so you're not overwhelmed. But by providing a digital detox, allowing us a framework for focus, offering reduced distractions, being easy to follow and accurate, textbooks are powerful in a digital world. So, should you go for digital detox and get a textbook? If you can handle a bit of change to your routine, then why not? If you're worried about learning the same thing from two sources, don't worry. Learning something like a grammar rule from multiple angles will only help you understand it better and reinforce your memory. A book will give you a clear direction of where to go, what to learn, and challenge your mind in ways that digital lessons might not. So, how do you do a digital detox and learn with our program? First, you can print out our extensive reading books. Extensive reading is a learning tactic where you read books that are appropriate for your level, and the goal is quantity over quality. You should read a lot and skip over the words you don't know. To access these, just visit the lesson library to find our extensive reading books. Second, download our PDF lesson notes and print them out. The lesson notes give you the lesson in writing, the dialogue, the vocab, grammar explanations, sample sentences, and cultural insights. Find the lesson notes in every one of your lessons. Third, use our printable visual flashcards. With these, you'll learn over 1,500 of the most common words. If you want the link to the visual flashcards, just leave a comment and we'll reply with it. Fourth, you can also use our printable conversation cheat sheets. With these, you'll learn words and phrases for the most common conversation topics. If you want the link to our collection of cheat sheets, again, leave a comment and we'll reply with it. Remember, the ultimate goal here is to go for a digital detox, challenge your brain in a new way, and try new resources. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Have you ever started learning a language but just couldn't continue? Why does this happen? And what do successful language learners do differently? In this video, we're going to talk about why you should put your language learning on autopilot. We asked you, and the number one reason people don't continue is time. Either you don't make the time for learning or you're just too busy. But a lot of the time, this is caused by the resources you're using. If you've downloaded five language apps and bought two books, you'll get overwhelmed about where to start and what to do next. So what do successful language learners do? Successful learners don't overwhelm themselves thinking, what should I do today? They put their learning on autopilot. Imagine this. Let's say you have a favorite TV show. A new episode comes out every Tuesday. So you know what you're doing on Tuesday night. You don't have to think about it. You don't need a reminder, it's automatic. Every Tuesday, you watch an episode. You make it into a habit. Now, how do we apply that to language learning? First, habits. If you have a habit of learning, then you're already on autopilot. So, set a small, measurable, monthly goal with a deadline, like learn 100 words or do 30 lessons by the end of the month. Once you know your goal, you can backtrack. So, for example, divide 100 words by 30 days in a month, and you get 3.33. So you should learn about three words a day. Now you know what to do. Three words a day. There's no confusion. Do those three words and you're done. You don't need to think about what you should be doing because you already know what you're doing. It becomes a habit. The second way to stay on autopilot is with language textbooks. 
This is basically just because books are sequential. You just follow the pages from one until the end. You don't have to think about where to go next, so it's easy to stay on track with what you need to do. Third, the word of the day. Every day you get a new word in your email inbox automatically. You don't have to think about it. Simply check your email, learn a word, and you're done. The fourth way is with our progress tracking tools. They spoon feed you lessons one by one. So let's say you finished lesson one where you learned greetings, then you automatically load up lesson two where you learn a basic conversation that uses the greetings you learned in lesson one. Then you have lesson three and four and so on. You don't have to worry about what to do next because our dashboard will keep you on track. It'll even build upon what you learned in your previous lesson so you won't forget it. The point is to put your learning on autopilot. You need something that guides you from A to B to C, whether it's your own habits or a book that takes you from one to 100 or a learning program that feeds you lessons. So take one of these tips and apply it today. So to put your learning on autopilot, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share this video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time, bye. Are you focused on active language learning or passive language learning? And which is the best way to learn? In this video, you'll learn the difference between active and passive learning and some methods for each. Do you know the difference between active and passive learning? You'll find out the differences between these two. First, the difference between active and passive learning. Here's the difference. Active learning means you're actively engaging with learning material and focusing on it. For example, you're reading in your target language, you're looking up words, you're translating, you're memorizing phrases, or you're speaking out loud. So you're focused on what you're learning and you're really into it. Now, passive learning is different. It requires less concentration. It's usually done when you're doing something else. For example, doing chores, driving to work, or taking the train. You could be listening to an audio lesson or watching a video lesson. But the difference is you're not focused on picking apart every word. You're just passively taking the language in. What about you? How do you usually learn? Do you have a lot of active practice? A lot of passive practice? Do you have a combination? Let us know in the comments. Second, how you can learn both ways with our lessons. If you do a lot of passive learning, say because you're always on the go, then here are four simple tactics you can apply right now. One, press play on a lesson and just listen or watch, just like you would with YouTube. So if you're at home with your computer on, press play on a lesson and take it in. Two, now, if you're outside, if you're going to the store or commuting, you can learn with our free Innovative Language 101 app for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. Again, open a lesson, press play, and that's it. If you want to passively review words and phrases, then check out the vocabulary slideshow tool. This premium study tool is available on every lesson and vocab list. Just press play, and with every slide, you'll get the word, the audio pronunciation, the translation, and sample sentences. You can even put the slideshow on loop and immerse yourself that way. And third, if you have an Amazon Echo device, then you can immerse yourself with daily audio lessons, or you can learn with the quick word of the day. You can just play a lesson and keep it in the background while you're at home. Just look for Daily Dose by Innovative Language on the Amazon Skill Store and download it for free. Now, if you're looking for some active learning practice and you have some time to concentrate, here are five tactics you can use right now. Number one, listen or watch a lesson and read along with the translations. You'll get complete translations in the lesson notes and the line-by-line -line dialogue. This will make your reading and listening skills skyrocket. The best part is you'll understand every single word. The translations are right in front of you. Number two, repeat the lesson dialogue as you hear it. This is called shadowing and it will boost your speaking skills. Just repeat the lines that you hear until you can speak with confidence. To make it even easier, you can also get the lines in the dialogue study tool and in the lesson notes so you can read them out loud as you hear them in the lesson. Number three, record yourself with our voice recorder in the dialogue study tool to perfect your pronunciation and see how close you are to a native speaker. Number four, if you want to boost your vocabulary, study words with our smart flashcards. They sort the words for you. 
so you get the harder words more often until you master them. And the easy ones show up now and then to refresh your memory. And number five, ask questions and practice. Leave a comment in the comment section. If you're a Premium Plus user, you get your very own teacher, and you can ask them to review and correct your writing and speaking. You can also ask for learning advice and get all of your questions answered. Both are great ways to learn, but which one is best? Well, that depends on you. If you have some quiet time to focus, active learning is best. But if you're on the train and you're multitasking, then passive learning is the better option. Whichever you choose, you can apply both with our language learning program. So to test out active and passive learning, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Every language learner wants to speak with confidence, without struggling, and without stopping to think of words. So how do you do this? In this video, you'll learn five tactics to perfect your speaking. Above all, every learner wants to speak in their target language with confidence. We've run survey after survey, year after year, and the results are the same. Listening, reading, and writing are all important, but people want to improve their speaking the most. So how do you perfect your speaking skills? First, shadow the dialogues you hear in the lessons. What is shadowing? It's a learning technique where you mimic native speakers. In other words, you listen and then you repeat what they say. This is a fast and easy way to start practicing speaking. You can do this with any one of our audio or video lessons. And even easier, if you have access to the dialogue section, you can read along out loud as you listen. So shadow as much as possible to perfect your speaking and try harder lessons to take yourself to the next level. Second, read the dialogue out loud. We just mentioned this in tip one, but this tactic deserves its own special mention. Reading out loud is another easy way to practice your speaking. Simply read the lesson dialogue that's available in the dialogue section, the lesson notes, or the lesson transcript. By reading out loud, you're practicing your speaking skills. And here's a trick. If you can get yourself to read faster, you'll be able to speak faster too. Natives tend to speak quickly, and if you can too, that's a sign that you're improving. Third, record yourself speaking to perfect your pronunciation. If you're a Premium or Premium Plus member, look for the voice recorder in the dialogue section. With this tool, you can record yourself and compare your speaking to a native speaker. This is powerful because you instantly hear the difference between your speech and the authentic native pronunciation. And then you can easily perfect your speaking and pronunciation. If you don't have a premium account, record yourself with your smartphone. And while you can't really compare, you can spot where you struggle or stutter. This tactic is used by professional speakers, public speakers, just about anyone that has to give a presentation. Fourth, if you're a Premium Plus member, record yourself and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Here, you're getting instant feedback from a native speaker. They'll point out your mistakes, they'll tell you what to improve and how, and record themselves and work with you until you reach perfection. That's the power of having a native speaker give you feedback. So what do people usually record? Here's an easy one. Record a one paragraph self intro. In fact, we ask all of our new members to do this. Give your name, your age, where you're from, why you're learning, and that's it. It's a great way to get started. Our more advanced students talk about their day. They send three recordings, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. For example, I woke up at 7 a.m. and brushed my teeth. I got ready for work. My train was a little late, and so on. This can dramatically improve your speaking because you're practicing conversations that people have all the time. The fifth way to perfect your speaking, Premium Plus Assignments. With this feature, you get weekly assignments based on your needs and goals, whether they're reading, writing, listening, or speaking. If you want to improve your speaking, your Premium Plus teacher will send you speaking assignments nonstop, every week, and provide you with constant feedback. This is all part of your personalized learning experience. So take advantage of our tools and put these tactics to use. And remember, if you want to master your language with our complete language learning program, now's your chance. 
So to test out these tips and start speaking now, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Renting an Apartment Conversation Cheat Sheet. Learn how to say, how much is the rent? How many bedrooms are there? And much more with this new PDF cheat sheet. Second, printable visual flashcards that'll improve your vocabulary. Want to speak more of the language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new printable visual flashcards, you'll easily master over 1,500 words. Just download and print these flashcards out. Third, the top 50 marine animals and fish. How well do you know animal names in your target language? With this lesson, you'll learn how to say shark, whale, dolphin, and much more. Fourth, how to talk about your day in 20 phrases. If you can't talk about your day yet, this one minute lesson will get you speaking. You'll learn 20 must know phrases, from talking about waking up and brushing your teeth to dinner and going to sleep. Fifth, looking for a new language learning app? With the Innovative 101 app, you learn language fast and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download Innovative 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 35% off basic, premium, or premium plus with the summer sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to make small talk about the weather. This is Karen Lee. She sees her neighbor, Fleur Toussaint, and starts a conversation by saying, It's hot today. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Listen to the conversation and focus on Karen's comment. Ready? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Once more with the English translation. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. It's hot today. Oui, en effet. Yes, indeed. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Karen says, it's hot today? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's start with the word chaud, meaning hot, as in the temperature. Chaud, chaud. Before chaud is il fait. Literally, it makes, but translates as it's in this context. Il fait. First is il, it. Il, il. Next is, fait, translating as, 
is in this context. Fait. Fait. Note. Fait. Is from the verb. Faire. Meaning to do. Or to make. But in this instance, when talking about the weather, it translates as to be. Faire. Last is. Aujourd'hui. Meaning today. Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. Altogether. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Literally, it makes hot today, but translates as it's hot today. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Fleur Toussaint says, Yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. This starts with the expression Oui. Meaning, yes. Oui. Oui. After this, En effet. Literally, in fact, or, in this case, a more natural translation, indeed. En effet. En effet. Altogether, Oui, en effet. Yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. The pattern is Il fait adjective aujourd'hui. It is adjective today. Il fait adjective aujourd'hui. To use this pattern, simply replace the adjective placeholder with a suitable adjective. In this lesson, you'll learn adjectives related to the weather that you can use with this pattern. Imagine it's cold. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Say, it's cold today. Ready? Il fait froid aujourd'hui. It's cold today. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. In French, you can't use any adjective with a construction il fait. It's restricted to a small set of adjectives, such as the adjectives covered in this lesson and some others. Mauvais. Bad weather. Lourd. Heavy, sultry. Gris. Gray. Other adjectives appear in more complex sentences or different patterns altogether. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait frais aujourd'hui. Il fait frais aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait tellement chaud. Il fait tellement chaud. Did you notice how I added tellement? In the last sentence? Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Il fait tellement chaud. It's so hot. Il fait tellement chaud. Tellement is an intensifier. 
and it translates as so, as in so hot in this case. Simply add it in front of the adjective to express a high degree of intensity. The pattern is tellement, adjective. So, adjective. Tellement, adjective. Let's review the key vocabulary. Chaud. Hot. Chaud. Chaud. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Beau. Nice weather. Beau. Beau. Frais. Cool weather. Frais. Frais. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say hot? Show. Show. And how to say today? Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. Do you remember how Karen Lee says, It's hot today? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Do you remember how Fleur Toussaint says, Yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. Oui, en effet. Do you remember how to say cold? Froid. Froid. And how to say nice? Beau. Beau. Let's practice. Imagine your fleur. Comment to Karen on the cold weather today. Ready? Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Listen again and repeat. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Lee. Comment to your classmate on the hot weather today. Ready? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Listen again and repeat. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee. Comment to your neighbor on the nice weather today. Ready? Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Oui. En effet. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. As in many countries, 
Starting a conversation with some remark about the weather is very common, so don't hesitate to use this pattern to start a conversation. France's climate is temperate. The South is famous for its sunny and hot summers, while the Brittany region, La Bretagne, is often perceived as a region where it rains continuously. This is the end of this lesson. Now. Dehors. Outside. Dehors. Dehors. Outside. Il fait à peine un degré dehors. It is barely one degree outside. Il fait à peine un degré dehors. Intérieur. Inside. Intérieur. Intérieur. Inside. Nous avons besoin de faire rentrer le chien à l'intérieur avant qu'il fasse noir. We need to bring the dog inside before it gets dark. Nous avons besoin de faire rentrer le chien à l'intérieur avant qu'il fasse noir. Gauche. Left. Gauche. Gauche. Left. Il est à gauche sur la photo. He's on the left in the picture. Il est à gauche sur la photo. Droite. Right. Droite. Droite. Right. Tournez à droite au prochain feu. Turn right at the next light. Tournez à droite au prochain feu. Première. First. Première. Première. First. La première fois, c'est toujours la plus difficile. The first time is always the most difficult. La première fois, c'est toujours la plus difficile. Deuxième. Second. Deuxième. Deuxième. Second. Pour mon deuxième anniversaire, mon cadeau était un animal en peluche. On my second birthday, my present was a stuffed animal. Pour mon deuxième anniversaire, mon cadeau était un animal en peluche. Troisième. Third. Troisième. Troisième. Third. C'est ma troisième galette des rois de la saison. It's my third king cake this season. C'est ma troisième galette des rois de la saison. Savon. Soap. Savon. Savon. Soap. Se baigner avec du savon et de l'eau tous les jours. Bathe with soap and water every day. Se baigner avec du savon et de l'eau tous les jours. Brosse à dents. Toothbrush. Brosse à dents. 
Brosse à dents. Toothbrush. J'ai oublié ma brosse à dents. I forgot my toothbrush. J'ai oublié ma brosse à dents. Dentifrice. Toothpaste. Dentifrice. Dentifrice. Toothpaste. Nous n'avons plus de dentifrice. We are out of toothpaste. Nous n'avons plus de dentifrice. Shampoing. Shampoo. Shampoing. Shampoing. Shampoo. Si vous avez du shampoing dans les yeux, restez-le avec de l'eau immédiatement. If some of the shampoo gets in your eyes, rinse them with water immediately. Si vous avez du shampoing dans les yeux, rincez-le avec de l'eau immédiatement. Information. 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 J'obtiens les informations à partir d'Internet. I gather information from the Internet. J'obtiens les informations à partir d'Internet. Agriculteur. Farmer. Agriculteur. Agriculteur. Farmer. L'agriculteur s'occupe de sa récolte. The farmer takes care of his harvest. L'agriculteur s'occupe de sa récolte. Secrétaire. Secretary. Secrétaire. Secrétaire. Secretary. Ma secrétaire est organisée et méticuleuse. My secretary is organized and detailed. Ma secrétaire est organisée et méticuleuse. Banquier. Banker. Banquier. Banquier. Banker. J'ai vu dix banquiers avant d'obtenir un prêt pour acheter une maison. I met with ten bankers before I received a loan to buy a house. J'ai vu dix banquiers avant d'obtenir un prêt pour acheter une maison. Écrivain. Writer. Écrivain. Écrivain. Writer. Je travaille comme dentiste, mais je veux être écrivain. I work as a dentist, but I really want to be a writer. Je travaille comme dentiste, mais je veux être écrivain. Essayez. Try. Essayez. Essayez. Try. Il ne faut pas essayer, il faut réussir. You must not try, you have to succeed. Il ne faut pas essayer, il faut réussir. Mesurer. Measure. Mesurer. 
mesurer. Measure. Mesurer sa taille avec un mètre ruban. Measure your height with a tape measure. Mesurer sa taille avec un mètre ruban. Garder. Keep. Garder. Garder. Keep. Tu peux garder le sac, j'en ai un autre. You can keep the bag, I have another one. Tu peux garder le sac, j'en ai un autre. Attendre. Wait. Attendre. Attendre. Wait. Je déteste attendre les gens. I hate to wait for people. Je déteste attendre les gens. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. How do you start a conversation in a language that you're learning? Believe it or not, it's actually very easy to do. And in this lesson, we'll give you tips and resources to get you speaking more of your target language. You'll discover one, talking points for language learners, two, the top five ways to start a conversation, and three, resources to help you master these talking points. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Renting an Apartment Conversation Cheat Sheet. Learn how to say, how much is the rent? How many bedrooms are there? And much more with this new PDF cheat sheet. Second, visual flashcards that'll improve your vocabulary. Want to speak more of the target language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new printable visual flashcards, you'll easily master over 1,500 words. Just download and print these visual flashcards out. Third, the top 50 marine animals and fish. How well do you know animal names in your target language? With this quick lesson, you'll learn how to say shark, whale, dolphin, and much more. Fourth, how to talk about your day in 20 phrases. If you can't talk about your day yet, this one minute lesson will get you speaking. You'll learn 20 must know phrases from talking about waking up and brushing your teeth to dinner and going to sleep. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to start conversations, talking points for language learners. Starting a conversation can be intimidating for most people, even in their own native language. So it's understandable if you feel even more intimidated starting a conversation in another language. But if you do want to speak more of your target language and get more practice, that's exactly what you'll need to do. Have conversations with native speakers. Part one, talking points for language learners. The good news is starting a conversation in another language is much easier because one, native speakers will realize that you're learning and will go easy on you. And two, you don't know enough of the language to worry about saying something clever, and that's totally fine. So you can easily start with basic phrases. So how exactly do you start a conversation? You'll need something called a talking point. A talking point is simply a topic or a thing to talk about. For example, weather's a very common talking point. You can say, nice weather today, to someone and start a conversation from that. And after that, you can ask them where they're from or talk about the city, like, wow, this is a great city, which is another basic talking point. And now you have a conversation going, all from a simple talking point and a simple comment about the weather. So what are some common talking points? Let's get into part two. Part two, the top five ways to start a conversation. 
Again, a good thing about having conversations in another language is that it's okay and natural to focus on simple topics for a while. So here are five easy ways to start conversations in your target language. And if you're already learning with our language program, then you've already learned some of these within your first few lessons. One, introduce yourself in your target language. Sometimes starting a conversation or continuing one is as simple as introducing yourself. You can also use this if you've started with a different topic, like the weather. Then it makes sense to say, by the way, my name is, you'll learn how to introduce yourself in the very first lesson of our program. Two, the weather. People talk about the weather all over the world, so you should learn weather phrases in your target language. Just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation. If you want to talk about the weather, check out our Can Talk About Weather Learning Pathway. This series of lessons teaches you how to talk about the weather in your target language. Three, compliments. Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. You can compliment something about their city, their country, or something about their culture. Four, ask for help. So for example, you can ask for directions about the price of something and let the conversation go from there. These are very basic phrases that you learn in our survival phrases lessons. And five, learn phrases for transactions, like getting a room at a hotel or telling the taxi driver where to go. These are very easy ways to start a dialogue and you can easily move into other topics. Again, you learn all of these with our survival phrases lessons. Of course, these are not the only talking points or icebreakers you can use. If you can think of more, go ahead and use them. Which one would you use? Leave us a comment. Now, how do you actually learn the language around these talking points? Part three, resources to help you master these talking points. First, take our lessons. If you haven't yet signed up for a free lifetime account to our learning program, you can do so now. In every lesson, you learn a basic conversation, like the weather, introducing yourself, asking for directions, and more. And this gives you all the lines you'll need to start and continue a conversation in real life. And if you want to find lessons related to a specific talking point, like the weather, you can find them in our lesson library. Second, use our conversation PDF cheat sheets. These cheat sheets are a quick summary of our actual lessons and give you the must-know phrases and vocabulary for topics like family, weather, travel, getting directions, and much more. Third, come up with a list of phrases and questions you'd want to use in a conversation, and then ask your Premium Plus teacher for translations, or use an online translation tool, although that may not always be perfect. Either way, you'll have lines that you can use to start conversations. Fourth, use our free vocabulary and phrase lists. There, you'll find hundreds of vocabulary and phrase lists across all kinds of topics. Holidays, common phrases, phrases for weather, phrases for restaurants, and much more. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the seven skills you'll need for language mastery. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. You're learning a language, but here's a question. Do you actually remember what you've learned? Or do you forget everything a day later? If you're forgetting everything and not making any real progress, it might be because you're missing a crucial part of the learning process, the actual practice and assessment. For that, you'll want the assessments inside our learning program. And in this video, you'll discover one, how to access the assessments and start practicing, two, how you'll learn faster and remember everything, and three, how you can get your language assessed by native teachers. Let's jump in. One, how to access the assessments and start practicing. First, what are assessments? These are multiple choice and teacher graded exercises that test you on what you've learned so far and give you a chance to practice your language so that you don't forget what you learn. If you're learning with our language program, then you automatically get an assessment after every couple of lessons. This is to make sure you're practicing and retaining the language. 
If you haven't tried the study tool yet, sign up for a free lifetime account and get access right now. You'll find the assessments inside our recommended learning pathway. Two, how you'll learn faster and remember everything. So after you've completed a few lessons, you'll get a quick multiple choice assessment that tests you on all the words and grammar rules you learned. Answer the questions the best you can, and you'll get instant results showing you what you got right and wrong. That way, you'll know if you've remembered anything, and you'll know what your weak points are. But there's more. Just by taking these assessments, you're improving your memory. That's because you're using a science-backed learning method called Active Recall. Active Recall is where you try to recall, or remember, without looking at the answer. And in doing so, you strengthen your memory. Plus, you get to practice and use the language that you've learned, instead of letting it fade away from your memory. Three, how you can get your language assessed by native teachers. You also get hand-graded assessment exercises on speaking and writing, which are graded by our team of native teachers. With these assessments, you can submit a recording of yourself speaking or submit a piece of writing, and our teachers will assess your skills and give you feedback. Getting feedback from a native is one of the fastest ways to improve your language skills. Remember, you'll find our assessment exercises peppered throughout our recommended learning pathway. So, if you want to start learning the language with our learning program and make sure you remember everything with these assessments, sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to learn and speak more of your target language? You'll need to learn more words, and you can do that with printable visual flashcards. So here's how you can learn over 1,500 words easily with a free printable resource that boosts your retention, keeps you focused on one word at a time, and makes learning fun. In this video, you'll discover, one, how to get our printable visual flashcards for free, two, how you'll learn words and phrases even faster, and three, five ways to learn with the flashcards. First, what are visual flashcards? Visual flashcards are our printable flashcards that teach you 1,500 words across 60 topics. All words come with images and translations for easy retention, and they're an easy way for beginners to boost their vocabulary. So, how do you get them? How to get our printable visual flashcards for free. Just click the link and sign up for a free lifetime account to our learning program. Our learning program teaches you the language through audio and video lessons, study tools, and one-on-one -on -one access to a teacher. These visual flashcards are a free supplemental resource for anyone interested in learning. Once you've signed up, check your email to confirm your account and download the free visual flashcards. Then, print out the PDF files, cut out the cards, and start learning. How you'll learn words and phrases even faster. Learning words can be difficult, if you're learning on your phone or computer, you have tons of notifications and distractions competing for your attention. You can also overwhelm yourself by learning too many words at once and forgetting them all. So, how can you learn faster? Our visual flashcards are a physical resource, which means there are no distractions, and they're right in front of you, unlike an app that's buried somewhere in your phone, so you can easily start learning. You get one word per card, so you can focus on one word at a time. No distractions, no giant word lists, just one word at a time, which takes a second to learn. All cards include the word in the target language, the translation, and a picture to help the meaning stick better. And you can easily run through the cards and test yourself until you remember each and every word. With visual flashcards, you learn 1,500 of the most common words, which means you don't waste time learning words that aren't useful for beginners. Five ways to learn with the flashcards. Once you've downloaded and printed the flashcards, how do you learn? One, set aside five to 10 minutes and pick out 20 cards. Spend the first half reviewing the cards and the second half testing yourself on the meanings. Two, for the words that you struggle with, keep them in a separate pile. That way, you can focus on just the hard words and skip the ones you know. Three, since the words are separated across 60 topics, you can focus on one topic at a time and keep at it until you're done with all 60 topics. Four, place the cards on the objects they represent around your home. Or five, turn it into a game with your friends. Have them quiz you on the words. 
pick which way works best for you, and learn with our visual flashcards. So, if you want to boost your vocabulary and speak more of your target language, download our visual flashcards for free right now. Just click the link and sign up for a free lifetime account to our learning program. Since you're learning the language, do you also learn while you're on the go, like on the way to work or on a walk? Do you put small blocks of time to productive use? If not, here's how. In this video, you'll discover how to learn a language anywhere, anytime with our free app. Second, you'll find out how to learn two times faster with study tools. Third, how to test your language skills. Fourth, how to learn with your own teacher. And fifth, how to get free bonus language lessons just for watching this video. So let's jump in. One, how to learn a language in minutes, anywhere you are. First, download our Innovative 101 app for your iPhone, iPad, or Android. Just click the link in the description to download it and sign up for your free lifetime account. Once you're in, we give you one clear pathway of lessons to follow. Just press play on a lesson and you'll absorb a practical conversation. You'll also learn all of the words and grammar rules in minutes. Yes, in minutes, because lessons are just a few minutes long, which means you can easily learn the language while you're commuting to work, going to the store, or while out on a walk. You can put that time to productive use. Two, how to learn two times faster with study tools. If you're a serious learner and want to succeed with the language, check out our study tools to help you master words, grammar rules, and conversations even faster. Just scroll down in the lesson to access the tools. You can, Understand the conversation in full with the line-by-line -line audio and the translations. Review the key lesson vocabulary with the vocab list. And master the grammar with our in-depth lesson notes. Three, how to test and practice your language skills. You also get assessments after every few lessons to test you on what you've learned and give you the chance to practice the language. You'll find assessments peppered throughout the learning pathway and they'll only take a few minutes to complete which means you can easily do them while you're out and about. You get results instantly so that you know what you've mastered and what your weak points are. Four, how to learn with your own teacher on the go. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can also learn with your own teacher. Just visit My Teacher inside the app. There, you can interact with your teacher, practice writing, ask questions about the language, send audio and video recordings of yourself speaking the language, and get corrections and feedback. All of this through the app. Five, how to get free bonus language lessons. Since you've watched this far, here's a free bonus that many users don't know about. We release three to five new lessons a week, every week, nonstop, and they're free for three weeks before going into our lesson library, which means you can learn the language for free and get new lessons every week with our innovative 101 app. How? Just open up the menu inside the app and tap on newest lessons to unlock them. So if you're not yet learning a language while you're on the go, here's your chance to turn those small blocks of time into something productive. Download the Innovative 101 app for your iPhone, iPad, or Android. Just click the link in the description. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Using Transportation Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to get around in your target language? You can learn how. This new cheat sheet teaches you must know vocabulary and phrases, like where can I buy a ticket? How much is the train pass? And much more. Second, the Ultimate Guide to Beginner Language eBook. Want a free way to boost your vocabulary? With this new PDF ebook, you'll master over 500 beginner words and phrases, more than enough to start speaking the language with confidence. Third, can you talk about holiday accommodations in your target language? Learn how to say hotel, guest house, in, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, most common ways to say sorry. Do you know all the ways to apologize in your target language? This one minute lesson will get them in your head, guaranteed. 
Fifth, free language learning audiobooks for anyone who sees this video. If you watch this far, then here's a free bonus. We're giving all of our users free access to our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 40% off premium or premium plus with the Epic sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Karen Lee, and she's in sunny Paris. She's on a long-distance call with Mathilde Martin, her former homestay mother. Mathilde asks, How's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait beau. Once more with the English translation. Quel temps fait-il? How's the weather? Il fait beau. It's nice weather. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mathilde asks, how's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Let's start with the word temps, meaning weather. Temps. Temps. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Temps is masculine and singular, a fact which will determine the form of other words in the sentence. Before temps is quel, what, quel, quel, quel is masculine and singular to agree with temps. Together, it's quel temps. What weather? Quel temps? Next is fait-il. Literally makes it, but translates as is it in this context. Fait-il. First is fait. Translating as is in this context. Fait. Fait. Note. Fait is from the verb. Faire, meaning to do or to make. But in this instance, when talking about the weather, it translates as to be. Faire. After, fait is the subject pronoun il, translating as it in this context. Il. Il. Notice the word order when asking a question. Verb. Fait, followed by the subject, il, fait-il. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject, as in, fait-il. Altogether, it's, quel temps fait-il? Literally, what weather makes it, but translates as, how's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Pronunciation note. Notice the rising intonation indicating a question. Quel temps fait-il? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, It's nice weather. Il fait beau. First is, Il. It. Il. Il. Next is. Fait. Translating as is in this context. Fait. Fait. Last is. Beau. Beautiful or nice, as in nice weather. Beau. Beau. Altogether, it's. Il fait beau. Literally, 
it does nice weather. But it translates as, it's nice weather. Il fait beau. The pattern is, Il fait, weather adjective. It is, weather adjective. Il fait, weather adjective. To use this pattern, simply replace the weather adjective placeholder with a suitable adjective. In this lesson, you'll learn adjectives related to the weather that you can use with this pattern. Imagine it's bad weather. Mauvais. 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 Say, it's bad weather. Ready? Il fait mauvais. It's bad weather. Il fait mauvais. In French, you can't use any adjective with a construction, il fait. It's restricted to a small set of adjectives, such as the adjectives covered in this lesson and some others. Chaud, hot, froid, cold, frais, cool, lourd, heavy, sultry, gris, gray. When talking about the weather, it's common to use some impersonal verbs in French. Impersonal verbs are verbs without a fully stated subject, and which are conjugated in the third person singular. For example, it's raining in French is Il pleut. Il pleut. It's raining. Il pleut. First is Il. It. Il. Il. Next is pleut. Rains, as in it rains. Pleut. Pleut is from the verb pleuvoir to rain. Pleuvoir. Together, il pleut. Literally, it rains, but it translates as it's raining. Il pleut. Pay attention. You'll see another example of this pattern shortly. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Il fait beau. Il fait beau. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Il pleut. Il pleut. Il neige. Il neige. Can you guess what the last sentence means? Il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Literally, it means it snows, but it translates as it's snowing. Il neige. Il neige. First is il. It. Il. Il. Next is neige. Snows, as in, it snows. Neige. Neige is from the verb neige, to snow. Neige. Together, il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Let's review the key words. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Chaud. Hot. Chaud. Chaud. Pleuvoir. To rain. Pleuvoir. 
pleuvoir. Il pleut. It's raining. Il pleut. Il pleut. Neiger. To snow. Neiger. Neiger. Il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Il neige. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say nice, as in nice weather? Beau. Beau. Do you remember how Karen Lee says, it's nice weather? Il fait beau. Il fait beau. Do you remember how to say weather? Temps. Temps. And how to say what? Quel. Quel. Do you remember how Mathilde asks, how's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Quel temps fait-il? Do you remember how to say, it's raining? Il pleut. Il pleut. Do you remember how to say cold? Froid. Froid. And how to say hot? Chaud. Chaud. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee, and it's raining. Respond to the question. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il pleut. Listen again and repeat. Il pleut. Il pleut. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mathilde, and it's hot. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait chaud. Listen again and repeat. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Let's try one more. Imagine your Oog Henry, and it's cold. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait froid. Listen again and repeat. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Bouilloire. Kettle. Bouilloire. Bouilloire. Kettle. Le thé est dans la bouilloire. The tea is in the kettle. Le T 
côté est dans la bouilloire. Casserole. Pot. Casserole. Casserole. Pot. Cette casserole date de 10 ans. That pot is 10 years old. Cette casserole date de 10 ans. Grenouille. Frog. Grenouille. Grenouille. Frog. Les grenouilles sont des sauteuses et des nageuses hors pair. Frogs are exceptional jumpers and swimmers. Les grenouilles sont des sauteuses et des nageuses hors pair. Pigeon. 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 Ne nourrissez pas les pigeons. Don't feed the pigeons. Ne nourrissez pas les pigeons. Guide touristique. Guidebook. Guide touristique. Guide touristique. Guidebook. Un guide touristique te donnera des informations utiles pour ton voyage. A guidebook will give you helpful information for your trip. Un guide touristique te donnera des informations utiles pour ton voyage. Entrée. Entrance. Entrée. Entrée. Entrance. Où est l'entrée? Where is the entrance? Où est l'entrée? Guide touristique. Tour guide. Guide touristique. Guide touristique. Tour guide. Le guide touristique connaît bien la région. The tour guide knows the region well. Le guide touristique connaît bien la région. Réservation. Reservation. Réservation. Réservation. Reservation. Avez-vous une réservation? Do you have a reservation? Avez-vous une réservation? Passeport. Passport. Passeport. Passeport. Passport. J'ai perdu mon passeport. I lost my passport. J'ai perdu mon passeport. Informatique. Computer science. Informatique. Informatique. Computer science. Les cours d'informatique sont le lundi. Computer science classes are on Mondays. Les cours d'informatique sont le lundi. Math. 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 
Je n'aime pas étudier les maths. I don't like to study math. Je n'aime pas étudier les maths. Sentir. Feel. Sentir. Sentir. Feel. Manger du yaourt vous fait vous sentir mieux. Eating yogurt makes you feel better. Manger du yaourt vous fait vous sentir mieux. Dessiner. Draw. Dessiner. Dessiner. Draw. J'ai demandé à l'illustrateur de me dessiner un dessin. I asked the illustrator to draw me a picture. J'ai demandé à l'illustrateur de me dessiner un dessin. Plan. 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 Ce plan semble diabolique. This plan sounds devilish. Ce plan semble diabolique. Vente. Sale. Vente. Vente. Sale. Le service de vente permet le développement de l'entreprise. The sales department is driving companies' growth. Le service de vente permet le développement de l'entreprise. Faire du shopping. Shopping. Faire du shopping. Faire du shopping. Shopping. Hier, je suis allé faire du shopping avec mes amis. Yesterday, I went shopping with my girlfriends. Hier, je suis allé faire du shopping avec mes amis. Quatrième. Fourth. Quatrième. Quatrième. Fourth. Tourne à droite au quatrième feu. Turn right at the fourth traffic signal. Tourne à droite au quatrième feu. Cinquième. Fifth. Cinquième. Cinquième. Fifth. À la fête de mon cinquième anniversaire, il y avait un clown effrayant. At my fifth birthday party, there was a scary clown. À la fête de mon cinquième anniversaire, il y avait un clown effrayant. Sixième. Sixth. Sixième. Sixième. Six. J'ai reçu des habits d'école pour mon sixième anniversaire. I received school clothes for my sixth birthday. J'ai reçu des habits d'école pour mon sixième anniversaire. Septième. Seventh. Septième. Septième. Seventh. Tout le monde chante durant la septième manche du match de baseball. Everyone sings during the seventh inning of a baseball game. 
Tout le monde chante durant la septième manche du match de baseball. Après shampoing. Conditioner. Après shampoing. Après shampoing. Conditioner. Un bon après shampoing enlèvera les nœuds de tes cheveux. A good conditioner will take the tangles out of your hair. Un bon après shampoing enlèvera les nœuds de tes cheveux. Déodorant. Deodorant. Déodorant. Déodorant. Deodorant. On évite de sentir mauvais en se mettant du déodorant après lavage. Put on deodorant after washing to avoid bad odor. On évite de sentir mauvais en se mettant du déodorant après lavage. Savon liquide. Liquid soap. Savon liquide. Savon liquide. Liquid soap. As-tu du savon liquide? Do you have liquid soap? As-tu du savon liquide? Canard. Duck. Canard. Canard. Duck. Les canards du nord volent vers le sud en hiver. Ducks in the north fly south for the winter. Les canards du nord volent vers le sud en hiver. Corbeau. Crow. Corbeau. Corbeau. Crow. Le corbeau cherche quelque chose à manger. The black crow is looking for something to eat. Le corbeau cherche quelque chose à manger. Cafard. Cockroach. Cafard. Cafard. Cockroach. Les cafards seront toujours là quand l'humanité aura disparu depuis longtemps. The cockroach will still be here when mankind is long gone. Les cafards seront toujours là quand l'humanité aura disparu depuis longtemps. Moustique. Mosquito. Moustique. Moustique. Mosquito. Les libellules mangent les moustiques. Dragonflies eat mosquitoes. Les libellules mangent les moustiques. Maçon. Construction worker. Maçon. Maçon. Construction worker. Le maçon mesure le bois. The construction worker is measuring wood. Le maçon mesure le bois. Femme au foyer. Homemaker. Femme au foyer. Femme au foyer. Homemaker. La femme au foyer a aspiré le tapis. The homemaker vacuums the carpet. La femme au foyer a 
aspirer le tapis. Glace. Ice. Glace. Glace. Ice. De la glace s'est formée sur la fenêtre. Ice has formed on the window. De la glace s'est formée sur la fenêtre. Histoire. History. Histoire. Histoire. History. J'enseigne l'histoire. I teach history. J'enseigne l'histoire. Géographie. Geography. Géographie. 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 Il est étudiant spécialisé en géographie avec une mineure en psychologie. He is a geography major with a minor in psychology. Il est étudiant spécialisé en géographie avec une mineure en psychologie. Magasin Store. Magasin. Magasin. Store. Le magasin ferme à 20 heures. The store closes at 8 p.m. Le magasin ferme à 20 heures. Marché. Market. Marché. Marché. Market. Le marché du village est pratique. The market of the village is convenient. Le marché du village est pratique. Prix. Price. Prix. Prix. Price. Quel est le prix d'un Big Mac dans ton pays? What's the price of a Big Mac in your country? Quel est le prix d'un Big Mac dans ton pays? Coupon. 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 J'ai un coupon de 50% de réduction, donc mangeons là-bas. I have a coupon for 50% off, so let's eat there. J'ai un coupon de 50% de réduction, donc mangeons là-bas. Rayon, aisle. Rayon, rayon, aisle. Les épices et les condiments sont au rayon 6. Spices and seasonings are on aisle 6. Les épices et les condiments sont au rayon 6. Sac. Bag. Sac. Sac. Bag. Ce sac est cher. This bag is expensive. Ce sac est cher. Photo. Photograph. Photo. Photo. 
photograph. Il a commandé l'impression d'une de ses photos en grande taille. He ordered a large size print of one of his photographs. Il a commandé l'impression d'une de ses photos en grande taille. Boisson gazeuse. Soda. Boisson gazeuse. Boisson gazeuse. Soda. Une boisson gazeuse contient beaucoup de sucre. Soda contains a lot of sugar. Une boisson gazeuse contient beaucoup de sucre. Neuvième. Ninth. Neuvième. Neuvième. Ninth. Le Ramadan est le neuvième mois de l'année musulmane. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim year. Le Ramadan est le neuvième mois de l'année musulmane. Dixième. Tenth. Dixième. Dixième. Tenth. J'ai finalement marqué un but à ma dixième tentative. I finally made a goal on my tenth attempt. J'ai finalement marqué un but à ma dixième tentative. Huitième. Eighth. Huitième. Huitième. Eighth. J'ai eu un vélo pour mon huitième anniversaire. I was given a new bicycle for my eighth birthday. J'ai eu un vélo pour mon huitième anniversaire. Rasoir. Shaving razor. Rasoir. Rasoir. Shaving razor. Rasoir jetable. Disposable shaving razor. Rasoir jetable. Gants de toilette. Washcloth. Gants de toilette. Gants de toilette. Washcloth. Le garçon se lave le visage avec un gant de toilette. The boy is washing his face with a washcloth. Le garçon se lave le visage avec un gant de toilette. Serviette de bain. Towel. Serviette de bain. Serviette de bain. Towel. J'ai perdu la serviette de bain. I've lost the towel. J'ai perdu la serviette de bain. Cuillère. Spoon. Cuillère. Cuillère. Spoon. Je mange un yaourt avec une cuillère. I eat yogurt with a spoon. Je mange un yaourt avec une cuillère. Fourchette. Fork. Fourchette. Fourchette. Fork. La fourchette est en plastique. The fork is made of plastic. La fourchette est en plastique. Couteau. Knife. Couteau. Couteau. Knife. Pouvez-vous me passer le couteau? Could you pass me the knife? Pouvez-vous me passer 
le couteau, assiette, plate, assiette, assiette, plate. Mon assiette est pleine. My plate is full. Mon assiette est pleine. Abeille. B. Abeille. Abeille. B. Les abeilles font du miel. Bees make honey. Les abeilles font du miel. Fourmi. Ant. Fourmi. Fourmi. Ant. Les fourmis ont six pattes. Ants have six legs. Les fourmis ont six pattes. Serpent. Snake. Serpent. Serpent. Steak. L'anguille ressemble à un serpent. An eel looks like a snake. L'anguille ressemble à un serpent. Lait. Milk. Lait. Lait. Milk. Je ne bois jamais de lait. I never drink milk. Je ne bois jamais de lait. Designer. 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 Il y a plusieurs types de designers, mais je suis un créateur de mode. There are many kinds of designers, but I'm a fashion designer. Il y a plusieurs types de designers, mais je suis un créateur de mode. Artist. 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 Beaucoup d'artistes luttent longtemps avant de réussir. Many artists struggle for a long time before achieving success. Beaucoup d'artistes luttent longtemps avant de réussir. Soldat. Soldier. Soldat. Soldat. Soldier. Dix mille soldats ont été dispersés sur le champ de bataille. Ten thousand soldiers were dispatched on the site of the battle. Dix mille soldats ont été dispersés sur le champ de bataille. Entrepreneur. 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 Les entrepreneurs changent le monde avec leurs idées. Entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. Les entrepreneurs changent le monde avec leurs idées. Nouvelle. Short story. Nouvelle. Nouvelle. Short story. The Gift of the Magi est une nouvelle émouvante pour beaucoup de personnes. The Gift of the Magi is a moving short story for many. The Gift of the Magi est une nouvelle émouvante pour beaucoup de personnes. Classeur. Folder. Classeur. Classeur. Folder. 
J'ai mis les documents dans le classeur. I put the documents in a folder. J'ai mis les documents dans le classeur. Poil à frire. Frying pan. Poil à frire. Poil à frire. Frying pan. La poêle à frire est vraiment pas chère. This frying pan is very cheap. La poêle à frire est vraiment pas chère. Planche à découper. Cutting board. Planche à découper. Planche à découper. Cutting board. Le cuisinier coupe un œuf dur sur la planche à découper. The cook is cutting a hardboard egg on the cutting board. Le cuisinier coupe un œuf dur sur la planche à découper. Évier. Sink. Évier. Évier. Sink. L'évier est presque plein. The sink is almost full. L'évier est presque plein. Bol. Bowl. Bol. 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 Le bol est vide. The bowl is empty. Le bol est vide. Sortie. Exit. Sortie. Sortie. Exit. Où est la sortie? Where is the exit? Où est la sortie? Plan. Map. Plan. Plan. Map. Regarde le plan pour trouver le chemin de ta destination. Check the map to find your way to your destination. Regarde le plan pour trouver le chemin de ta destination. Valise. Suitcase. Valise. Valise. Suitcase. Ne laissez pas des objets de valeur dans votre valise. Do not leave valuables in your suitcase. Ne laissez pas des objets de valeur dans votre valise. Touriste. Tourist. 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 Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Tourists are enjoying their free time on the beach. Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Politique. Politics. Politique. Politique. Politics. Je fais un blog sur la politique et l'économie. I blog about politics and the economy. Je fais un blog sur la politique et l'économie. Biologie. Biology. Biologie. 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 La biologie est l'étude des organismes vivants. Biology is the study of living organisms. La biologie est l'étude des organismes vivants. Chimie. Chemistry. Chimie. 
chimie. Chemistry. Elle est mauvaise en chimie. She is bad in chemistry. Elle est mauvaise en chimie. Physique. Physics. Physique. Physique. Physics. Je connais les bases de la physique. I know the basis of physics. Je connais les bases de la physique. Économie. Economics. Économie. Économie. Economics. Dans cette université, les cours d'économie sont excellents. In this university, the economics courses are excellent. Dans cette université, les cours d'économie sont excellents. Maître. Put. Maître. Maître. Put. Je vais mettre les fleurs sur la table. I will put the flowers on the table. Je vais mettre les fleurs sur la table. Se rappeler. Remember. Se rappeler. Se rappeler. Remember. Je ne me rappelle de rien. I don't remember anything. Je ne me rappelle de rien. Tenir. Hold. Tenir. Tenir. Hold. Les ceintures, c'est fait pour tenir les pantalons. Belts are made to hold your pants. Les ceintures, c'est fait pour tenir les pantalons. Caddy. Shopping cart. Caddy. Caddy. Shopping cart. Le caddy est vide. The shopping cart is empty. Le caddie est vide. Sac plastique. Plastic bag. Sac plastique. Sac plastique. Plastic bag. L'homme porte un sac plastique rempli de courses. The man is carrying a plastic bag full of groceries. L'homme porte un sac plastique rempli de courses. Comédie. Comedy. Comédie. 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 J'adore voir des comédies parce que j'adore rire. I love to watch comedy because I love to laugh. J'adore voir des comédies parce que j'adore rire. Roman. Novel. Roman. Roman. Novel. J'aime les romans à suspense. I like suspense novels. J'aime les romans à suspense. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. 
So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is, are you focusing on only one skill? The seven skills you'll need for language mastery. Are you the type of language learner that focuses on only one skill? Like only speaking or only doing translation exercises? Then you may eventually realize that your language isn't progressing as fast as you'd like. So in today's episode, you'll learn one, why most language learners plateau, two, the seven skills you'll need for language mastery, and three, how to practice the seven skills with our program. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Using Transportation Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to get around in your target language? You'll be able to. This new cheat sheet teaches you the must-know vocabulary and phrases, like where can I buy a ticket, how much is the train pass, and much more. Second, the Ultimate Guide to Beginner Language eBook. Want a free way to boost your vocabulary? With this new PDF eBook, you'll master over 500 beginner words and phrases, more than enough to start speaking the language with confidence. Third, can you talk about holiday accommodations in your target language? Learn how to say hotel, guest house, in, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, most common ways to say sorry. Do you know all the ways to apologize in your target language? This one minute lesson will get them in your head, guaranteed. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Are you focusing on only one skill? The seven skills you'll need for language mastery. Part one, why most language learners plateau. If you observe other language learners, you'll notice that many learners just want to speak and understand the language. And as a result, they focus only on speaking and nothing else. Then you have learners who like to start with reading, so they spend most of their time there. And then there are learners who do translation games and spend most of their time there. All of these are good ways to approach a language, but what happens is learners that focus on speaking seem to speak well, but if you go outside of a topic they've practiced, they'll start struggling. Learners that spend most of their time reading are only good at reading and then wonder why they can't speak. And learners that have been playing translation games are good at translating, but don't understand real life speech. The point is, you'll be unbalanced. If you focus on one skill and skip out on the rest, you'll never become truly fluent, or you'll be able to speak on a few topics you know about, but that's it. But that's not enough for conversational fluency. So if you want to avoid this trap and become truly fluent, you should focus on seven language skills, speaking, listening, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary, and culture. Part two, the seven skills you'll need for language mastery. Now, someone might ask, what's the point of reading if I just want to speak the language? The fact is, all skills complement and improve one another. For example, if you're practicing reading, you naturally pick up new words and grammar rules along the way, which will help you with speaking, because if you want to speak more, you'll need to know more words and grammar rules. Also, reading out loud can help with speaking. If you're learning grammar, this will help you with speaking, listening, reading, and writing because you'll need to be able to speak and use those grammar rules, understand them in written information and in speech, and use it in writing. With writing, again, you're reinforcing words and grammar rules that you'll also need for listening, speaking, and reading. With listening, there can be speaking involved if you shadow what you hear. You can also pick up words and reinforce grammar points as you listen. Then you can use those same words and grammar rules later on during speaking practice all skills feed into each other. And with culture? With culture, you need things to talk about with native speakers, and culture is a great topic. Plus, in certain languages and cultures, you'll need to speak more politely to people who are older or more senior to you. So this involves learning vocabulary and grammar. There's also one more bonus to practicing all seven language skills. Learning all seven skills will actually help you learn the language much faster. Mixing up skills like this is called interleaving. Interleaving is a proven learning tactic where you use different forms of practice to master something. For example, 
If you're learning vocabulary, you can read it, then say it, write it out, study with flashcards, listen to a native speaker say it, and doing so will help you remember better, instead of just reading the word five times and hoping it sticks. It probably won't. So, let's recap. You should focus on the seven skills of language learning because one, you avoid being imbalanced, two, all of these skills feed into each other and improve your overall language, and three, it'll help you learn faster. Part three, how you practice the seven skills with our program. Now, if you wanna take your language to the next level, you'll need to incorporate all seven skills in your study routine. Speaking, reading, writing, listening, vocab, grammar, and culture. So, here's how you can practice each skill with our learning program. One of the most unique things about our program is that you can actually practice all seven skills with it. First, for speaking, shadow the conversations in our lesson dialogues. And if that's too hard, read the dialogues out loud and go slowly at your own pace. Use our voice recording tool to practice saying each line of the conversation. And you can send recordings of yourself to your Premium Plus teacher. For listening, simply take our lessons and listen to the conversations. You can also download the dialogue tracks and review the conversations without the translations. Also, be sure to take our listening comprehension lessons. For reading, listen to the audio and follow along with the lesson notes or transcript so that you don't miss a single word. You can also practice reading with our extensive reading books. For writing, Write out the lesson dialogues and write out the words, phrases, and grammar rules that you come across. You can also try and create your own sample sentences, and you can send them to your Premium Plus teacher for corrections. For grammar, you'll come across grammar rules in our lessons. Write the rules down, try and create your own sentences, and keep taking the lessons and keep on reading. For vocabulary, use our spaced repetition flashcards to master the words. And of course, write them down in a notebook, say them out loud, and save them in the word bank so you can come back to them to review later. And for culture, take our lessons. You'll pick up culture tips along the way. Check out our culture class lessons as well. You can do one skill a day, or you can also try all of them in one study session. Listen to the lesson. Repeat what you hear for speaking practice. Write out the dialogue. Review the vocabulary with the slideshow. Practice the grammar rules and note down the cultural tips. Or focus on two skills a day. Pair up listening and speaking. The next day, do reading and writing. And then vocabulary and grammar. And then culture. And again, you can study all seven of these skills with our program. So if you haven't done so yet, be sure to click the link below and sign up for a free lifetime account. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to write 1,000 words of your target language in five minutes a day with the Daily Dose Diary. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. One of the best ways to learn a language is with a native speaker. But what if you can't afford to take a class? Or what if you're too busy to learn on someone else's schedule? That's why with our program, you get access to your own teacher with a study tool called My Teacher. So you can learn with your own teacher at your own pace, anywhere, anytime. How does My Teacher work? You'll discover more in just a second. But first, to get access to our learning program and your very own teacher, click the link in the description and sign up for a Premium Plus account right now. What is My Teacher? My Teacher is a messenger tool that gives you access to your very own on site teacher. You'll find it in the bottom right corner of your screen. And if you're on the app, just tap on the My Teacher icon at the bottom. So, how do you take advantage of this powerful language tool? One, get your language assessed. With language schools, you take a level check test on the first day, and the same thing happens here. The moment you become a Premium Plus member, you'll take an assessment test so that your teacher can determine your level, understand your weak points, and design a personalized learning plan. You'll find the link to the test inside My Teacher. Once you're done with the test, 
Two, interact with your teacher, ask questions, and get feedback. Getting feedback and corrections is one of the fastest ways to improve. So open My Teacher and start interacting with your teacher. The first thing we ask you to do is to send a self-introduction in your target language as a way to get started. And if you're not sure how, just ask your teacher. You can also ask them language questions, send your writing, practice conversations, and they'll also send you feedback and corrections. You can do this all at your own pace on any device. You can also... Three, send recordings of yourself speaking the language. Just record yourself and send an audio file or video over and get feedback from your teacher on your accent, pronunciation, and how to express yourself naturally like a native speaker. You can also take a picture of your writing for feedback. Four, improve your language skills nonstop with weekly assignments. Your teacher will also send you weekly assignments to test you on what you've learned and improve your language skills. Assignments cover speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So if you want to learn with your very own teacher at your own pace, then click the link in the description to sign up now and become a Premium Plus plan member today. You unlock our complete learning program, plus your very own teacher. Click the link in the description to sign up now. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the airport conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like here's my passport, boarding pass, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the slang words and phrases PDF ebook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free ebook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, 30 romance and love-related words and phrases. You'll learn words and phrases like date, flirt, and breakup with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about Halloween in your target language? With this quick one-minute lesson, you'll learn must-know Halloween words like vampire, trick-or-treat, and more. Fifth, Want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get a big 35% off premium or premium plus with the monster sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Sasha Lee, and she meets her neighbor, Theodore Toussaint for the first time in the lobby of their building. Theodore introduces himself by saying, Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Theodore. Sasha can't catch his name and asks for clarification. Listen to the conversation and focus on Sasha's request. Ready? Enchanté. Je m'appelle Theodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter Je m'appelle Théodore. Once more with the English translation. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse me, can you repeat that? Je m'appelle Théodore. My name is Theodore. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Theodore introduces himself? Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Theodore. First is... Enchanté. Meaning glad. Enchanté. Enchanté. Enchanté is actually a shortened form of Enchanté de vous rencontrer. 
meaning glad to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Theodore uses a shortened version. Enchanté. In his introduction. This is the standard version when meeting someone for the first time and is appropriate for both informal and formal situations. Next is Je m'appelle Théodore. My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Théodore. First is Je I Je Je Next is M'appelle which translates as Call myself. M'appelle. M'appelle. Note. Me. Is contracted with. Appel. To form. M'appelle. Me. 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 Next is. Appel. Call. As in, I call. Appel. 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 Is from the verb. Appeler. Meaning to call. Appeler. Together. M'appel. Call myself. M'appel. After is Theodore's given name. Théodore. Théodore. Note, Theodore only uses his given name. Sasha and Theodore are young adults in an informal situation, so he only uses his given name. Together it's Je m'appelle Theodore. Literally, I call myself Theodore, but translates as My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Theodore. Altogether Enchanté, je m'appelle Theodore. Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Theodore. Sasha can't catch his name. Do you remember how she asks, Excuse me, can you repeat that? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? First is, Excuse-moi. Excuse me. Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. Note. Excuse-moi. Is the informal form of excuse me in this conversation. Theodore and Sasha are of similar age. So the informal excuse-moi is more natural. Next is peu. Can, as in can you? Peu. Peu. Peu is from the verb pouvoir to be able. Pouvoir. Next is tu. You. Tu. Tu. Together it's peux tu? Can you? Peux tu? Peux tu? Notice the word order when asking a question. Verb, peu, followed by the subject, tu, peux tu, in this case. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there is a hyphen between the verb and the subject. Last is, répéter, repeat, répéter, répéter. Note the verb, répéter. To repeat is in its infinitive form. Altogether, Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Literally, Excuse me, can you repeat? But it translates as, Excuse me, can you repeat that? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Pronunciation note. Notice the rising intonation indicating a question. Finally, do you remember how Theodore says, My name is Theodore. Hint, you've heard it before. Je m'appelle Theodore. My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Theodore. 
In this lesson, you learn how to ask for clarification in an informal situation. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse me, can you repeat? To ask for clarification in a formal situation. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Excuse me, can you repeat? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Note the following changes in the formal form. First, Excusez-moi replaces Excuse-moi. Excusez-moi. Excuse me in the formal form. Excusez-moi. Second, Pouvez-vous replaces Peux-tu? Pouvez-vous? Can you when using formal French? Pouvez-vous? Pouvez-vous? Pouvez is from the verb pouvoir, meaning to be able. Pouvoir. Next is vous, a formal form for you, which is singular in this context. Vous is the second person plural word for you, but in formal contexts can be used with just one person. Let's look at the expressions once more. Listen and repeat. Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. Peux-tu répéter? Peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Pouvez-vous répéter? Pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Did you notice the new phrases I used? Je ne comprends pas. I don't understand. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Next is Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Can you speak more slowly? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? First is Pouvez-vous? Can you? Formal form. Pouvez-vous? Next is Parler. Speak. Parler. Parler. After this is Plus. More. Plus. Plus. Finally, lentement, slowly, lentement, lentement. Altogether, pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Can you speak more slowly? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? For now, please remember, je ne comprends pas. And, pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? As set phrases. Let's review the key vocabulary. Parler. Speak. Parler. Parler. Plus. More. Plus. Plus. Lentement. 
slowly. Lentement. Lentement. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the informal way to say, excuse me? Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. And how to say, repeat? Répétez. Répétez. Do you remember how Sasha asks, Excuse me, can you repeat? Remember, she uses informal French. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi. Peux-tu répéter? Do you remember how to say Nice to meet you? Enchanté. Enchanté. And do you remember how Théodore says Nice to meet you. My name is Théodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Do you remember how to say speak? Parler. Parler. And how to say more? Plus. Plus. Do you remember how to say slowly? Lentement. Lentement. And how to say, can you speak more slowly? In a formal way. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben Lee. Theodore introduces himself, but you can't catch his name. Start with, excuse me, and ask him to repeat it using informal French. Ready? Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Listen again and repeat. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Let's try another. Imagine you're Theodore. Karen Lee introduces herself, but you can't catch her name. Use formal French. Ready? Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen Lee. Excusez-moi. Pouvez-vous répéter? Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee. Ask Fleur Toussaint to speak more slowly. Ready? Enchanté, je m'appelle Fleur Toussaint.
Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Listen again and repeat. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Sortir les poubelles. Take out the trash. Sortir les poubelles. Sortir les poubelles. Take out the trash. Est-ce que tu peux sortir les poubelles, s'il te plaît? Can you take out the trash, please? Est-ce que tu peux sortir les poubelles, s'il te plaît? Serveur. Waiter. Serveur. Serveur. Waiter. Je n'arrive pas à y croire. Les serveurs sont tellement grossiers ici. I can't believe it. The waiters are so rude at this place. Je n'arrive pas à y croire. Les serveurs sont tellement grossiers ici. La météo. Weather report. La météo. La météo. Weather report. Il faut que l'on vérifie la météo avant d'aller faire de la voile. We need to check the weather report before going sailing. Il faut que l'on vérifie la météo avant d'aller faire de la voile. Celsius. 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 L'eau gèle à 0 degré Celsius. Water freezes at 0 degré Celsius. L'eau gèle à 0 degré Celsius. Émission télévisée. TV show. Émission télévisée. Émission télévisée. TV show. Je regarde cette émission télévisée tous les dimanches. I watch this TV show every Sunday. Je regarde cette émission télévisée tous les dimanches. Jogging. 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 J'ai perdu 3 kilos depuis que j'ai commencé à faire du jogging. I've lost 3 kilograms since I started jogging. J'ai perdu 3 kilos depuis que j'ai commencé à faire du jogging. Restauration rapide. Fast food. Restauration rapide. Restauration rapide. Fast food. La restauration rapide me rend malade. Fast food makes me sick. La restauration rapide me rend malade. Parc. Park. Parc. Parc. Park. C'est un beau parc. It's a beautiful park. C'est un beau parc. Feu de circulation. Traffic light. Feu de circulation. Feu de circulation. Traffic light. Tournez à droite au prochain feu de circulation. Turn right at the next traffic light. Tournez à droite au prochain feu de circulation. Panneau. Sign. Panneau. Panneau. Sign. Que veut dire ce panneau? What does that sign mean? Que veut dire ce 
panneau, métro, subway, métro, métro, subway. Je prends le métro pour aller au bureau. I take the subway to the office. Je prends le métro pour aller au bureau. Gare. Train station. Gare. Gare. Train station. Excusez-moi, où est la gare? Excuse me, where is the train station? Excusez-moi, où est la gare? 500. 500. 500. 500. 500. Le salaire est de 1500 euros. The pay is 1500 euros. Le salaire est de 1500 euros. 999. 999. 999. 999. 999. Nous avons acheté 999 chaises pour l'événement. We bought 999 chairs for the event. Nous avons acheté 999 chaises pour l'événement. 101. 101. 101. 101. 101. Mon score était de 101 points. My score was 101. Mon score était de 101 points. 400. 400. 400. 400. 400. Mon loyer mensuel est de 400 euros sans les charges. My monthly rent is 400 euros without maintenance charges. Mon loyer mensuel est de 400 euros sans les charges. 900. 900. 900. 900. 900. Cette cuillère ancienne a été forgée il y a 900 ans. This antique spoon was forged 900 years ago. Cette cuillère ancienne a été forgée il y a 900 ans. Pouce. Inch. Pouce. Pouce. Inch. Je viens d'acheter une télévision à écran plat de 40 pouces. I just bought a 40-inch flat screen television. Je viens d'acheter une télévision à écran plat de 40 pouces. Kilo. Kilogram. Kilo. Kilo. Kilogram. Cet ordinateur pèse 2 kilos. This computer weighs 2 kg. Cet ordinateur pèse 2 kg. Centimètre. 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 Les écarts entre les plants de tomates sont de 80 cm. The gap between tomato plants is 80 cm. Les écarts entre les plants de tomates sont de 80 cm. Cacao. Cocoa. Cacao. 
Cacao. Cocoa. Je bois du cacao chaud pendant les journées d'hiver et du thé glacé pendant les journées d'été. I drink hot cocoa on cold winter's days and iced tea on hot summer days. Je bois du cacao chaud pendant les journées d'hiver et du thé glacé pendant les journées d'été. Boisson sans alcool Soft drink Boisson sans alcool Boisson sans alcool Soft drink Les boissons sans alcool sont généralement des boissons gazeuses et servies froides. Soft drinks are usually carbonated and served cold. Les boissons sans alcool sont généralement des boissons gazeuses et servies froides. Jus Juice Jus Jus Juice Mon jus de fruits préféré est le jus d'ananas. My favorite fruit juice is pineapple juice. Mon jus de fruits préféré est le jus d'ananas. Bibliothèque. Bookcase. Bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. Bookcase. Il a acheté une bibliothèque pour y mettre ses livres. He bought a bookcase to put his books on. Il a acheté une bibliothèque pour y mettre ses livres. Li Bed Li Li Bed Je suis enfin dans mon lit après une longue journée de travail. I'm finally in my bed after a long day of work. Je suis enfin dans mon lit après une longue journée de travail. Miroir Mirror Miroir Miroir Mirror elle a un miroir dans sa chambre. She has a mirror in her room. Elle a un miroir dans sa chambre. Commode. Dresser. Commode. Commode. Dresser. Mes chaussettes et mes sous-vêtements sont dans le tiroir du haut de ma commode. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. Mes chaussettes et mes sous-vêtements sont dans le tiroir du haut de ma commode. Balayer Sweep Balayer Balayer. Sweep. Mon père balaye les feuilles d'automne. My father is sweeping the autumn leaves. Mon père balaye les feuilles d'automne. Ranger. Put away. Ranger. Ranger. Put away. Range tes jouets, s'il te plaît. Put away your toys, please. Range tes jouets, s'il te plaît. Passer la serpillière. Mop. Passer la serpillière. Passer la 
serpillière. Mop. J'ai renversé mon jus d'orange, alors je vais passer la serpillière. I spill my orange juice, so I mop the floor. J'ai renversé mon jus d'orange, alors je vais passer la serpillière. Serveuse. Waitress. Serveuse. Serveuse. Waitress. La serveuse tient un plateau avec des verres. The waitress is holding a tray with glasses. La serveuse tient un plateau avec des verres. Degré Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Degré Fahrenheit. Degré Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. L'eau gèle à 32 degrés Fahrenheit. Water freezes at 32 degrés Fahrenheit. L'eau gèle à 32 degrés Fahrenheit. Température. Temperature. Température. Température. Temperature. La température a augmenté jusqu'à 29 degrés aujourd'hui. The temperature has been up to 29 degrees today. La température a augmenté jusqu'à 29 degrés aujourd'hui. Humide. Humid. Humide. Humide. Humid. C'est humide en août au Japon. It's humid in August in Japan. C'est humide en août au Japon. Y avoir du vent. Windy. Y avoir du vent. Y avoir du vent. Windy. Demain, il fera froid et il va y avoir du vent. Donc, porte une écharpe. Tomorrow will be cold and windy. So, wear a scarf. Demain, il fera froid et il va y avoir du vent. Donc, porte une écharpe. Terrain de jeu. Playground. Terrain de jeu. Terrain de jeu. Playground. Au terrain de jeu, il y a toujours une file d'attente pour les balançoires et pour les toboggans. At the playground, there is always a line for the swings and slides. Au terrain de jeu, il y a toujours une file d'attente pour les balançoires et pour les toboggans. Piscine. Pool. Piscine. Piscine. Pool. On se baigne à la piscine municipale tous les jours en été. We swim at the public pool every day in the summer. On se baigne à la piscine municipale tous les jours en été. Tennis. 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 Tu veux jouer au tennis? Do you want to play tennis? 
tu veux jouer au tennis, basketball, 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 basketball. Les filles et les garçons jouent au basketball. The boys and girls are playing basketball. Les filles et les garçons jouent au basketball. Litre. Liter. Litre. Litre. Liter. Ce soir, il a bu un demi-litre de bière. Tonight, he drank half a liter of beer. Ce soir, il a bu un demi-litre de bière. Ri. Rice. Ri. Re -i. Rice. Le riz est une source importante de glucides dans beaucoup de régimes alimentaires. Rice is an important source of carbohydrates in many diets. Le riz est une source importante de glucides dans beaucoup de régimes alimentaires. Pain. Bread. Pain. Pain. Bread. Est-ce que tu as acheté du pain pour le petit déjeuner de demain matin? Did you buy bread for tomorrow's breakfast? Est-ce que tu as acheté du pain pour le petit déjeuner de demain matin? Oeuf. Egg. Oeuf. Oeuf. Egg. L'œuf est un symbole de renouveau. Eggs are a symbol of revival. L'œuf est un symbole de renouveau. Nouille. Noodle. Nouille. Nouille. Noodle. J'aime bien manger des nouilles chinoises. I like eating Chinese noodles. J'aime bien manger des nouilles chinoises. Réveil. Alarm clock. Réveil. Réveil. Alarm clock. Il a éteint son réveil et il est retourné dormir. He turned off his alarm clock and went back to sleep. Il a éteint son réveil et il est retourné dormir. Porte. Door. Porte. Porte. Door. Est-ce que tu peux fermer la porte? Can you close the door, please? Est-ce que tu peux fermer la porte? Télécommande. Remote control. Télécommande. Télécommande. Remote control. Dis-moi comment utiliser la télécommande, s'il te plaît. Tell me how to use the remote control, please. Dis-moi. Comment utiliser la télécommande, s'il te plaît? Essuyer. Wipe. Essuyer. Essuyer. Wipe. J'essuie la vaisselle. I am wiping the dishes. J'essuie la vaisselle. La carte. Menu. La carte. La carte.
carte. Menu. Puis-je voir la carte, s'il vous plaît? Can I see the menu, please? Puis-je voir la carte, s'il vous plaît? Magazine. 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 J'adore cette librairie parce qu'elle a tellement de magazines différents. I really like the bookstore because it has so many different magazines. J'adore cette librairie parce qu'elle a tellement de magazines différents. Livre audio. Audiobook. Livre audio. Livre audio. Audiobook. J'écoute des livres audio quand je vais au travail. I listen to audiobooks during my commute to work. J'écoute des livres audio quand je vais au travail. Jeux vidéo. Video game. Jeux vidéo. Jeux vidéo. Video game. Je vais acheter un nouveau jeu vidéo ce week-end. I'm going to buy a new video game this weekend. Je vais acheter un nouveau jeu vidéo ce week-end. Bon marché. Cheap. Bon marché. Bon marché. Cheap. Je cherche des chaussures bon marché. I'm looking for a cheap pair of shoes. Je cherche des chaussures bon marché. Cher. Expensive. Cher. Cher. Expensive. Ce sac est cher. This bag is expensive. Ce sac est cher. Gentil. Kind. Gentil. Gentil. Kind. Mon voisin est très gentil et il sourit tout le temps. My neighbor is very kind and is smiling all the time. Mon voisin est très gentil et il sourit tout le temps. Effrayant. Scary. Effrayant. Effrayant. Scary. Il est effrayant quand il porte ce masque. He looks scary when he wears that mask. Il est effrayant quand il porte ce masque. Relaxant. Relaxing. Relaxant. Relaxant. Relaxing. Cette musique est très relaxante. This music is very relaxing. Cette musique est très relaxante. Livre. Pound. Livre. Livre. Pound. Une livre fait 16 ounces. One pound is 16 ounces. Une livre fait 16 ounces. Mile. 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 John a couru 15 miles aujourd'hui. Quel sportif! John ran 15 miles today. He's such an athlete. John a couru 15 miles aujourd'hui. Quel sportif! Pied. Foot. Pied. Pied. Foot. Nous volons à 38 000 pieds. We are flying at 38,000 feet. Nous volons 
nous a 38 000 pieds. Maladie. Illness. Maladie. Maladie. Illness. Il a un rhume. Ce n'est qu'une maladie bénigne. He has a cold. It's only a minor illness. Il a un rhume. Ce n'est qu'une maladie bénigne. Rhume. As-tu? Cold. Rhume. Rhume. Cold. Quand j'ai un rhume, je tousse. <rire> When I got a cold, I got a cough. Quand j'ai un rhume, je tousse. Blessure. Injury. Blessure. Blessure. Injury. Les accidents de voiture sont la principale cause de blessure. Car accident are a leading cause of injury. Les accidents de voiture sont la principale cause de blessure. Médicaments. Medicine. Médicaments. Médicaments. Medicine. J'ai besoin d'un médicament contre la douleur. I need a painkiller medicine. J'ai besoin d'un médicament contre la douleur. Douleur. Pain. Douleur. Douleur. Pain. J'ai besoin d'un médicament contre la douleur. I need a painkiller medicine. J'ai besoin d'un médicament contre la douleur. Fièvre. Fever. Fièvre. Fièvre. Fever. Tu as de la fièvre. You have a fever. Tu as de la fièvre. Fenêtre. Window. Fenêtre. Fenêtre. Window. Revérifie que tu as bien fermé la fenêtre. Check again that you've correctly closed the window. Revérifie que tu as bien fermé la fenêtre. Alcool. Alcohol. Alcool. Alcool. Alcohol. L'alcool fait grossir. Alcohol makes you fat. L'alcool fait grossir. Repas. Meal. Repas. Repas. Meal. On peut partager ce repas si tu veux. We can share this meal if you wish. On peut partager ce repas si tu veux. Miam, 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 miam. Brouillard. Fog. Brouillard. Brouillard. Fog. Il peut être dangereux de conduire quand il y a du brouillard. It can be dangerous to drive when there is fog. Il peut être dangereux de conduire quand il y a du brouillard. Grêle. Hail. Grêle. Grêle. Hail. La grêle, c'est dangereux. Hail is dangerous. La grêle, c'est dangereux. Orage. Thunderstorm. Orage. Orage. Thunderstorm. Il y a eu un orage terrible hier. There was a terrible thunderstorm yesterday. Il y a eu 
un orage terrible hier. Aquarium. 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 Ma mère a un grand aquarium chez elle. My mother has a big aquarium at her place. Ma mère a un grand aquarium chez elle. Football. Soccer. Football. Football. Soccer. Je n'aime pas le football. I don't like soccer. Je n'aime pas le football. Zo. 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 Où est le zoo? Where is the zoo? Où est le zoo? Tarif. Fair. Tarif. Tarif. Fair. Dans ce musée, le tarif pour les seniors est très bon marché. In this museum, the senior fare is very cheap. Dans ce musée, le tarif pour les seniors est très bon marché. Arrêt de bus. Bus stop. Arrêt de bus. Arrêt de bus. Bus stop. Je vais descendre au prochain arrêt de bus. I will get off at the next bus stop. Je vais descendre au prochain arrêt de bus. Gram. 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 La pomme pèse 157 grammes. The apple weights 157 grams. La pomme pèse 157 grammes. Mètre. Meter. Mètre. Mètre. Meter. Ce tapis mesure 3 mètres sur 5 mètres. This rug is 3 meters by 5 meters. Ce tapis mesure 3 mètres sur 5 mètres. Kilomètre. Kilometer. Kilomètre. Kilomètre. Kilometer. La ville est à 15 km. The city is at 15 km. La ville est à 15 km. Mal de tête. Headache. Mal de tête. Mal de tête. Headache. Mon mal de tête a empiré depuis hier. My headache has been getting worse since yesterday. Mon mal de tête a empiré depuis hier. Diarrhée. Diarrhea. Diarrhée. Diarrhée. Diarrhea. Tu as de la fièvre et de la diarrhée. You have fever and diarrhea. Tu as de la fièvre et de la diarrhée. Symptôme. 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 Quels sont vos symptômes? What are your symptoms? Quels sont vos symptômes? Mal de ventre. Stomachache. Mal de ventre. Mal de ventre. Stomachache. Hier, j'ai eu un mal de ventre terrible. 
Yesterday, I had a terrible stomachache. Hier, j'ai eu un mal de ventre terrible. Nettoyer. Clean. Nettoyer. Nettoyer. Clean. Je dois nettoyer mon appartement ce soir. I have to clean my apartment tonight. Je dois nettoyer mon appartement ce soir. Sécher. Dry. Sécher. Sécher. Dry. Sèche-toi les cheveux d'abord. Dry your hair first. Sèche-toi les cheveux d'abord. Poussière. Dust. Poussière. Poussière. Dust. Je suis allergique à la poussière. I'm allergic to dust. Je suis allergique à la poussière. Passer l'aspirateur. Vacuum. Passer l'aspirateur. Passer l'aspirateur. Vacuum. Je dois passer l'aspirateur dans le couloir avant que les invités arrivent. I have to vacuum the hallway before the guests come. Je dois passer l'aspirateur dans le couloir avant que les invités arrivent. Croisement. Intersection. Croisement. Croisement. Intersection. Il tourne à droite au croisement. He is turning right at the intersection. Il tourne à droite au croisement. Autoroute. Highway. Autoroute. Autoroute. Highway. Si nous prenons l'autoroute, ça prendra à peu près 40 minutes. If we take the highway, it will take about 40 minutes. Si nous prenons l'autoroute, ça prendra à peu près 40 minutes. Route. Road. Route. Route. Road. Cette route mène à la piscine. This road leads to the swimming pool. Cette route mène à la piscine. Rue. Street. Rue. Rue. Street. Nous nous sommes garés dans la rue en face de l'immeuble. We parked on the street in front of the building. Nous nous sommes garés dans la rue en face de l'immeuble. Intéressant. Interesting. Intéressant. Intéressant. Interesting. L'idée que vous avez présentée à la réunion était très intéressante. That's a very interesting idea you presented at the meeting. L'idée que vous avez présentée à la réunion était très intéressante. Méchant. Mean. Méchant. Méchant. Mean. Certaines personnes sont méchantes et elles ne veulent pas le bonheur des autres. Some people are mean and they don't want others to be happy. Certaines personnes sont méchantes et elles ne veulent pas le bonheur des autres. Ennuyé. Bored. Ennuyé. Ennuyé. 
bored. Mon frère s'ennuie parce qu'on a joué à ce jeu des centaines de fois. My brother is bored because we played this game hundreds of times. Mon frère s'ennuie parce qu'on a joué à ce jeu des centaines de fois. 700 700 700 700 700 Les ours polaires peuvent peser jusqu'à 700 kg. Polar bears can weigh up to 700 kg. Les ours polaires peuvent peser jusqu'à 700 kg. 800 800 800 800 800 Je possède un champ de 800 hectares. I possess a field of 800 hectares. Je possède un champ de 800 hectares. 200 200 200 200 200 Nous avons plus de 200 livres ici. We have over 200 books here. Nous avons plus de 200 livres ici. 300 300 300 300 300 Le billet d'avion pour Hong Kong a coûté 399 dollars. The plane ticket to Hong Kong was 399 dollars. Le billet d'avion pour Hong Kong a coûté 399 dollars. 600 600 600 600 600 J'ai payé 600 euros pour ce piano. I paid 600 euros for this piano. J'ai payé ce piano 600 euros. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to get a return on your language learning investment. Language learning is an investment, but what if you're learning but not seeing any returns or results? And do you even know if you're getting any results at all? In this episode, you'll discover, one, why language learners fail to see results and why they fail, two, why you need to track your language learning sessions, and three, how to track your results. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Going to the Airport Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like here's my passport, boarding pass, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the Slang Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free eBook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, 30 romance and love-related words and phrases. You'll learn words and phrases like date, flirt, and breakup with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about Halloween in your target language? With this quick one-minute lesson, you'll learn must-know Halloween words like vampire, trick-or-treat, and more. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to get a return on your language learning investment. Part one, one of the biggest reasons why people fail. The first big reason people fail with language learning is because they set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent. The problem with these goals is you don't know how you'll ever go from where you are now to achieving fluency. It's too vague of a goal. But the second big reason is lack of time. 
People fail with language learning because they don't put in the time. And language learning is a function of time. The more you put in, the better you get. You can also think of learning a language like a gym. You get out what you put in. If you buy a dumbbell and do nothing, nothing happens. It can do great things for you, but it won't work for you until you pick it up and curl it a few times. If you put in one hour a day, you get results. If you put in 10 minutes a day, you get results. But if you put in zero, you get zero results. And you can't learn a language that way. So here's a question for you. How much time do you put into your language learning on a daily basis? Leave a comment. If you start putting in consistent time, you can also start expecting a return on your time. And this brings us to the second part. Part two, why you need to track your language learning sessions. In the first part, we talked about just putting in enough time. That's the first important step to take. But where should you put in your time? For example, you can put in 10 minutes and use an app to do translation exercises. You can put in 10 minutes and read a textbook or review a word list for 10 minutes. In all these examples, you can put in an equal amount of time, but the results you get will be different. And that's because different methods give you different results and benefits. Using an app may help you remember a few words. Reading a textbook can boost your vocabulary, grammar, and reading skills. And reviewing a word list will just help you with the words. So the second lesson is, you need to know what kind of results you get. You need to measure the return on your time so that you can be confident that you're making progress. In the case of our audio and video lessons, three or four lessons will help you understand and speak roughly one minute of conversation, as well as learn all words and grammar rules inside. This is the return on our lessons. How is this possible? The dialogue tracks are about 20 seconds, and so three lessons, that's three conversations at 20 seconds apiece, which is 60 seconds or one minute of conversation. So if you know the three lessons get you to one minute of conversation, you can know what results to expect. If you do 20 lessons, you're at about five minutes of conversation. 40 lessons, that's around 10 minutes or so of conversation. That's the power of measuring the results. If you track your results, you know what to expect in the future, and you can hit your language learning goals. So how can you start measuring your return? Let's jump into the third part. Part three, how to track your results and hit goals. If you're able to consistently put in time towards learning and maintaining your routine, then it's time to start tracking your time and effort. Why? At the basic level, language learning is simply putting in the time. You don't need a high IQ. You don't need to be talented at languages. You don't need the best possible app. You just need time. The more time you put in, the more results you get out. And aside from setting unrealistic goals, the other reason why people fail at languages is they just don't put in the time. So how can you track your results? Let's look at two ways, an easy way and an advanced way of tracking your time and results. Let's start with the easy way first. Simply track the time you put in. So if you do a 10 minute audio lesson today and then spend five minutes with flashcards, note this as 15 minutes for the day and write down what you did. Then do the same thing tomorrow, that's it. The goal here is to track the time and your effort. You'll want to track it and actually have measurable proof of your work. And also, so you can review what you've been doing and see your progress. So if one day you realize you don't know enough words or maybe you don't speak as much as you'd like, you can look at your notes and review your work. If you see that you've been just watching video lessons, you can spot the problem, which is you've done no actual vocab study or speaking practice. And now you can start doing it. Problem solved, you're on your way to fluency. Another way you can track your time and effort is with the dashboard on our site. So if you visit the dashboard, you can see the lessons you've completed, the number of flashcards reviewed and hours studied. This is the second tactic and it's an advanced one because not only do you need to track your time, you also need to track your results, which is a bit trickier. So how can you do that? With our conversational audio lessons, check the length of the dialogue track. If the dialogue track is about 20 seconds, then that's the amount of conversation you can expect to master. By the way, these tracks are anywhere from 10 to 40 seconds long. Now, if you're studying words with flashcards, take note of how many words you already know. So if you studied for five minutes and can easily remember seven out of 10 words, then that's your return. If you know this, you know what to expect when you learn new words. You can expect to remember about seven out of 10 with a five minute drill. Another thing you can do is boost that number to 10 out of 10. Next, if you're practicing your listening skills, try to gauge how much you understand. 
If you understood about 20% of a three minute conversational lesson, then that's your return for now. Again, by knowing this, you can now start asking questions like, what can I do to understand 50% of this conversation? Will doubling my time double my results as well? Will I understand 40%? Will reviewing this lesson for a few minutes a day, every day, work better than trying to memorize it all now? So then, you put these questions to the test and try them out. And because you know your return, you can see if it really works. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to perfect your pronunciation and speak like a native? The best way to do this is one, listen to a native speaker, two, repeat what they say, and three, the most important part, compare yourself against their pronunciation. In fact, mimicking a native speaker like this, which is called shadowing, is a powerful way to master your speaking. And you can do this all with the voice recorder inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. So, what makes the voice recorder so powerful? First, you can instantly spot the differences between yourself and the native speaker. How? The voice recorder records you and then compares your speaking to the native speaker. Just record and listen. Once you know what you need to change to sound perfect, you can adjust your speaking and your pitch until you match the native speaker. Second, you get to practice speaking the most common words and phrases. In other words, you won't be learning to say random words and phrases. Our lessons teach you practical everyday conversations like introducing yourself, ordering food at a restaurant, talking about where you're from, and more the kind of conversations you'll have with native speakers. And our vocabulary lists teach you the must-know words and phrases for all kinds of topics, holidays, slang, the many ways to say hello, and more. So, how do you use the voice recorder? You'll find the voice recorder in our lessons and vocabulary lists. Just look for the microphone icon. With our lessons, scroll down to the dialogue section. The dialogue section is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the lesson conversation. Next to each line, click on the microphone icon to open the voice recorder for that line. First, listen to the native speaker's pronunciation. Then, click on the round record icon to record yourself. And finally, play the two tracks to compare. Successful learners practice one line three to four times to fully master the pronunciation. Now, if you're using our free vocabulary phrase lists, you'll find the microphone icon next to each word or phrase. Again, click on the icon to record and compare yourself to the native pronunciation. So, if you want to speak like a native with perfect pronunciation, take advantage of this voice recorder, which is available in every lesson and vocabulary list. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Making Movies Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words like actor, screenwriter, director, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and more. Third, can you talk about fishing in your target language? Learn how to say words like fishing rod, bait, and fishing net with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, must know online shopping vocabulary. If you like shopping, then you'll want to be able to talk about it in your target language. With this one minute lesson, you'll learn must know words like sale, add to cart, and much more. Fifth, 
free language learning audiobooks for anyone who sees this video. If you watch this far, then here's a free bonus. We're giving all of our users free access to our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 51% off all basic, premium, and premium plus plans with our special Black Friday deal. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Ben Lee and he's at a cafe doing a language exchange with his classmate, Justine Jérôme. It's the French portion of the exchange, and he points at the textbook and asks, how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? Comment dit-on book en français? On dit livre. Once more with the English translation. Comment dit-on book en français? How do you say book in French? On dit livre. You say book. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Ben asks, how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? The standard way to ask for the meaning of a word in French follows a simple pattern. First is Comment? Translating as how in this context. Comment? Comment? Next is Dit-on? One says Dit-on? Dit. Says, as in one says. D. 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 Is from the verb dire, meaning to say. Dire. Next is on. One, as in one says. On. On. Together. Comment dit-on? Literally, how says one, but it translates as. How does one say? Comment dit-on? Note the word order when asking a question. Verb followed by the subject. Dit-on. In this case. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there is a hyphen between the verb and the subject. After this is the English word, book. Last is the phrase. En français. In French. En français. First is en. In. En. En. After this is français. French, as in the French language. Français. Français. Note, when the context is clear, you may omit en français. Altogether, Comment dit-on book en français? Literally, how one says book in French, but translates as how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Justine says you say book? On dit livre. First is On dit, which literally means one says, but translates here as you say. On dit. On dit. After this is the answer to the question. Livre. Book. Livre. Livre. Altogether. On dit livre. Literally, one says book, but it translates as 
You say book. On dit livre. The pattern is. Comment dit-on English word en français? How do you say English word in French? Comment dit-on English word en français? To use this pattern, simply replace the English word placeholder with the word you want to know. Imagine you want to know the French word for pen. Ask, how do you say pen in French? Ready? Comment dit-on pen en français? How do you say pen in French? Comment dit-on pen en français? This lesson introduces the grammatically complex but commonly used pattern. The impersonal form with on. The on construction is used to express what people do in general, rather than point to a specific person. The pattern is on plus a verb in the third singular person. The example used in the lesson was on dit, one says. Let's quickly look at a few more examples. On appelle, one calls, as in one calls it book. On mange, one eats, as in one eats a lot at Christmas. On dort, one sleeps, as in one sleeps late on Saturday. Also note that all nouns in French have grammatical gender. When learning new words, it's often important to identify this gender so that you can remember how to use it in the future. One simple way to do this is to follow up after someone tells you what a word is in French. You can simply say un ou une after being told the word to clarify if it's masculine or feminine. If the person responds with un, you know it's masculine. And if they say une, It's feminine. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Comment dit-on book en français? On dit livre. Comment dit-on book en français? Comment dit-on peine en français? On dit stylo. Comment dit-on peine en français? Comment dit-on bague? On dit sac. Comment dit-on bague? Comment dit-on pencil en français? On dit crayon. Comment dit-on pencil en français? Comment appelle-t-on ça? On appelle ça livre. Comment appelle-t-on ça? Did you notice how I use a different sentence pattern? Comment appelle-t-on ça? How do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? This literally means, how calls one this? But it translates as, how do you call this? To create this pattern, replace dit says with appel calls appel appel Note also the t between the verb and the subject. It's added to help make pronunciation easier. Also, replace the English word this with ça. 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 Recall. En français. In French. May be omitted if understood from context. Comment appelle-t-on ça? How do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? This is a very useful pattern for using French to learn French. Do you remember the response? You call this book. On appelle ça livre. First is, 
on appelle, which literally means one calls, but translates here as you call. On appelle. On appelle. Next is ça. This. Ça. Ça. After this is the answer to the question. Livre. Book. Livre. Altogether. On appelle ça livre. Literally, one calls this book. But it translates as, you call this book. Let's review the key vocabulary. Sac. Bag. Sac. Sac. Un sac. A bag. Stylo. Pen. Stylo. Stylo. Un stylo. A pen. Crayon. Pencil. Crayon. Crayon. Un crayon. A pencil. Ça. This. Ça. Ça. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say French, as in the language? Français. Français. And how to say in French? En français. En français. Do you remember how to say how? Comment? Comment? Do you remember how Ben asks, how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Comment dit-on book en français? Do you remember how to say book? Livre. Livre. And do you remember how Justine says, you say book? On dit livre. On dit livre. Do you remember how to say this? Ça. Ça. And how to say, how do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? Comment appelle-t-on ça? Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee, and you're having a language exchange lunch with Pauline Petit. You point to the pen and ask, how do you say pen in French? Ready? Comment dit-on pen en français? On dit stylo. Listen again and repeat. Comment dit-on pen en français? Comment dit-on pen en français? Now you want to know the word for bag. Omit in French. Ready?
Comment dit-on bag? On dit sac. Listen again and repeat. Comment dit-on bag? Comment dit-on bag? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sasha Lee, and you're studying with your classmate. Point at a pencil and ask, what do you call this? Ready? Comment appelle-t-on ça? On appelle ça crayon. Listen again and repeat. Comment appelle-t-on ça? Comment appelle-t-on ça? Restaurant. 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 Notre restaurant préféré est complet ce soir. Our favorite restaurant is full tonight. Notre restaurant préféré est complet ce soir. Bon. Bistro. Pub. Bistro. Bistro. Pub. Où est le bistro le plus proche? Where is the closest pub? Ah. Où est le bistro le plus proche? Café. Coffee shop. Café. Café. Coffee shop. Les amis traînent au café. The friends are hanging out at the coffee shop. Les amis traînent au café. Bar. 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 Mon bar préféré était fermé. My favorite bar was closed. Mon bar préféré était fermé. Meuble, furniture, meuble, meuble, furniture. Nous avons dû remplacer tous nos meubles après l'incendie. We had to replace all our furniture after the fire. Nous avons dû remplacer tous nos meubles après l'incendie. Herbe, grass, herbe, herbe, grass. Le gorille se repose sur l'herbe. The gorilla is resting on the grass. Le gorille se repose sur l'herbe. Sol, soil. Sol, sol, sol. Le sol s'est fissuré à cause de la sécheresse. The soil cracked due to the drought. Le sol s'est fissuré à cause de la sécheresse. Terre, dirt, terre. Terre. Dirt. Les vers se tortillent dans la terre. The worms are screaming in the dirt. Les vers se tortillent dans la terre. Rocher. Rock. Rocher. Rocher. Rock. Les deux crabes marchent sur un rocher. The two crabs are walking on a rock. Les deux crabes marchent sur un rocher. Arbre. Tree. Arbre. 
arbre. Tree. Cet arbre a beaucoup de feuilles. This tree has many leaves. Cet arbre a beaucoup de feuilles. Taoïsme. 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 Le taoïsme est aussi connu sous le nom de taoïsme. Taoism is also known as Taoism. Le taoïsme est aussi connu sous le nom de taoïsme. Bible. 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 La Bible est le livre le plus vendu de l'histoire de la civilisation. The Bible is the best-selling book in the history of civilization. La Bible est le livre le plus vendu de l'histoire de la civilisation. Coran. 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 Le Coran est un livre saint de la religion musulmane. The Coran is the holy book of the Muslim religion. Le Coran est le livre saint de la religion musulmane. Prêtre. Priest. Prêtre. Prêtre. Priest. Le prêtre l'a conseillé. He got advice from a priest. Le prêtre l'a conseillé. Judaïsme. 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 Le judaïsme existe depuis plus de 3000 ans. Judaism has been practiced for over 3000 years. Le judaïsme existe depuis plus de 3000 ans. 1000 1000 1000 1000 1000 Il n'y a que 1000 yens dans mon portefeuille. There is only 1000 yens in my wallet. Il n'y a que 1000 yens dans mon portefeuille. Bon. 2000. 2000. 2000. 2000. 2000. Ça coûte 2000 dollars. It costs 2000 dollars. Ça coûte 2000 dollars. 8000. 8,000. 8,000. 8,000. 8,000. 8,000 personnes vivent dans ce village. 8,000 people live in that village. 8,000 personnes vivent dans ce village. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. J'ai 10,000 choses à faire. I have 10,000 things to do. J'ai 10,000 choses à faire. 4,000. 4,000. 4,000. 4,000. 4,000. Le stade mesure 4000 mètres carrés. The stadium is 4000 square meters. Le stade mesure 4000 mètres carrés. Propriétaire. Landlord. 
propriétaire. Propriétaire. Landlord. Le loyer est collecté tous les mois par le propriétaire. The rent is collected every month by the landlord. Le loyer est collecté tous les mois par le propriétaire. Dortoir. Dormitory. Dortoir. Dortoir. Dormitory. J'ai vécu en dortoir pendant mes quatre années d'université. I lived in the dormitory for all four years of college. J'ai vécu en dortoir pendant mes quatre années d'université. Immeuble. Apartment building. Immeuble. Immeuble. Apartment building. Il y a 24 appartements dans cet immeuble. There are 24 apartments in this apartment building. Il y a 24 appartements dans cet immeuble. Ville. City. Ville. Ville. City. Le brouillard couvre la ville. The city is covered in fog. Le brouillard couvre la ville. Ferme. Farm. Ferme. Ferme. Farm. Les chèvres jouent dans la ferme. The goats are playing on the farm. Les chèvres jouent dans la ferme. Tsunami. 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 Le tsunami a touché la ville. The tsunami hit the city. Le tsunami a touché la ville. Avalanche. 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 L'avalanche a détruit la station de ski. Heureusement, personne n'a été blessé. The avalanche destroyed the ski resort, but luckily, nobody was hurt. L'avalanche a détruit la station de ski. Heureusement, Personne n'a été blessé. Feu. Fire. Feu. Feu. Fire. Les pompiers luttent contre le feu sur l'échelle. The firefighters are fighting the fire on the ladder. Les pompiers luttent contre le feu sur l'échelle. Tremblement de terre. Earthquake. Tremblement de terre. Tremblement de terre. Earthquake. Le tremblement de terre qui a touché Tokyo était de 4.3 sur l'échelle de Richter. The earthquake that hit Tokyo measured 4.3 on the Richter scale. Le tremblement de terre qui a touché Tokyo était de 4.3 sur l'échelle de Richter. Tempête de sable. Sandstorm. Tempête de sable. Tempête de sable. Sandstorm. La tempête de sable a touché la ville. The sandstorm has touched town. La tempête de sable a touché la ville. Gant. Glove. Gant. Gant. 
glove. Les gants ne lui allaient pas. The gloves did not fit his hands. Les gants ne lui allaient pas. Parapluie. Umbrella. Parapluie. Parapluie. Umbrella. Je n'ai pas de parapluie et il pleut. I don't have an umbrella and it's raining. Je n'ai pas de parapluie et il pleut. Chapeau. Hat. Chapeau. Chapeau. Hat. Il porte un chapeau pour cacher son début de calvitie. He wears a hat to cover his thinning hairline. Il porte un chapeau pour cacher son début de calvitie. Manche longue. Long sleeved. Manche longue. Manche longue. Long sleeved. C'est bien de porter des t-shirts à manches longues quand il fait froid. Long sleeve shirts are good for cold weather. C'est bien de porter des t-shirts à manches longues quand il fait froid. Manche courte. Short sleeved. Manche courte. Manche courte. Short sleeved. Il vaut mieux porter des t-shirts à manches courtes quand il fait chaud. Short sleeve shirts are better when it's warm. Il vaut mieux porter des t-shirts à manches courtes quand il fait chaud. Douloureux. Painful. Douloureux. Douloureux. Painful. Elle garde des souvenirs douloureux de son divorce. She has painful memories of her divorce. Elle garde des souvenirs douloureux de son divorce. Timide. Shy. Timide. Timide. Shy. Je suis timide. I am shy. Je suis timide. Nerveux. Nervous. Nerveux. Nerveux. Nervous. L'homme d'affaires est nerveux pour l'entretien. The businessman is nervous about the interview. L'homme d'affaires est nerveux pour l'entretien. Anxieux. Anxious. Anxieux. Anxieux. Anxious. La petite fille est anxieuse. The little girl is anxious. La petite fille est anxieuse. Gêné. Embarrassed. Gêné. Gêné. Embarrassed. Je rougis quand je suis gêné. My face turns red when I'm embarrassed. Je rougis quand je suis gêné. Campagne. Country. Campagne. Campagne. Country. Ils ont une grande maison à la campagne. They have a big house in the country. Ils ont une grande maison à la campagne. Village. 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 J'ai grandi dans un petit village. I grew up in a small village. J'ai grandi dans un petit 
village, ville, town, ville, ville, town. J'ai envie d'aller me promener en ville. I want to go for a walk in town. J'ai envie d'aller me promener en ville. Banlieue, suburb. Banlieue, banlieue, suburbs. Il travaille en ville, mais habite en banlieue. He works in the city, but live in the suburbs. Il travaille en ville, mais il habite en banlieue. Pièce. Room. Pièce. Pièce. Room. On a besoin de moquettes neuves dans toutes les pièces de la maison. New carpet is needed in every room in the house. On a besoin de moquettes neuves dans toutes les pièces de la maison. Brûlure. Burn. Brûlure. Brûlure. Burn. Elle a renversé de l'eau bouillante sur sa main gauche et a une brûlure au second degré. She spilled boiling water on her left hand and has a second degree burn. Elle a renversé de l'eau bouillante sur sa main gauche et a une brûlure au second degré. Échec. Chess. Échec. Échec. Chess. Je ne suis pas quelqu'un de patient, donc je préfère les échecs rapides. I'm not a patient person, so I prefer speed chess. Je ne suis pas quelqu'un de patient, donc je préfère les échecs rapides. Langue. Language. Langue. Langue. Language. Le coréen est la langue officielle de la Corée du Sud. Korean is the official language of South Korea. Le coréen est la langue officielle de la Corée du Sud. Sécher. Blow dry. Sécher. Sécher. Blow dry. Le coiffeur sèche les cheveux de la femme. The hairstylist is blow drying the woman's hair. Le coiffeur sèche les cheveux de la femme. Arts martiaux. Martial arts. Arts martiaux. Arts martiaux. Martial Arts. Notre professeur d'arts martiaux pratique depuis 25 ans. Our martial art instructor has practiced for 25 years. Notre professeur d'arts martiaux pratique depuis 25 ans. Satisfait. Satisfied. Satisfait. Satisfait. Satisfied. Je suis satisfait de la note que j'ai eue au contrôle de maths. I am satisfied with the grade I received on my math test. Je suis satisfait de la note que j'ai eue au contrôle de maths. Calme. Calm. Calme. 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 La mer est calme. The sea is calm. La mer est calme. Peigner. 
Comb. Peigner. Peigner. Comb. La femme se peigne les cheveux. The woman is combing her hair. La femme se peigne les cheveux. Se rincer la bouche. Gargle. Se rincer la bouche. Se rincer la bouche. Gargle. Je me rince la bouche plusieurs fois par jour. I gargle several times a day. Je me rince la bouche plusieurs fois par jour. Insatisfait. Dissatisfied. Insatisfait. Insatisfait. Dissatisfied. Il était insatisfait des résultats de la vente. He was dissatisfied with the results of the sale. Il était insatisfait des résultats de la vente. 5000 5000 5000 5000 5000 5000 personnes ont manifesté sur la place. 5000 people protested on the square. 5000 personnes ont manifesté sur la place. 3000 3000 3000 3000 3000 au Pérou, il existe plus de 3000 variétés de pommes de terre différentes. In Peru, more than 3000 types of potatoes exist. Au Pérou, il existe plus de 3000 variétés de pommes de terre différentes. 6000 6000 6000 6000 6000 Il y a environ 6000 îles en Grèce. There are around 6000 islands in Greece. Il y a environ 6000 îles en Grèce. 7000 7000 7000 7 7000 7000 Elle a vendu 7000 albums. She sold 7000 albums. Elle a vendu 7000 albums. 9000 9000 9000 9000 9000 9000 troupes se sont retirées du pays. 9000 troupes withdrew from the country. 9000 troupes se sont retirées du pays. Rose. 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 L'homme est sur le point de donner des roses à sa petite amie. The man is about to give roses to his girlfriend. L'homme est sur le point de donner des roses à sa petite amie. Fleur. Flower. Fleur. Fleur. Flower. Tous les dimanches matins, j'apporte des fleurs fraîches à ma femme. Every Sunday morning, I bring my wife fresh flowers. Tous les dimanches matins, j'apporte des fleurs fraîches à ma femme. Lys. Lily. Lys. 
lisse. Lily. Il y a plus de 100 variétés de lys. There are more than 100 species of lilies. Il y a plus de 100 variétés de lys. Tournesol. Sunflower. Tournesol. Tournesol. Sunflower. Les tournesols peuvent faire 8 à 12 pieds de haut. Sunflowers can grow to heights between 8 to 12 feet. Les tournesols peuvent faire 8 à 12 pieds de haut. Pissenlit. Dandelion. Pissenlit. Pissenlit. Dandelion. Le pissenlit se mange en soupe ou en salade dans certains endroits. Dandelions are eaten in soups and salads in some places. Le pissenlit se mange en soupe ou en salade dans certains endroits. Voyage. Traveling. Voyage. Voyage. Traveling. Les hôtesses de l'air doivent aimer le voyage. Flight attendants must love traveling. Les hôtesses de l'air doivent aimer le voyage. Faire du sport. Exercising. Faire du sport. Faire du sport. Exercising. La femme fait du sport par terre. The woman is exercising on the floor. La femme fait du sport par terre. Séance de sport. Workout. Séance de sport. Séance de sport. Workout. Il faut faire une séance de sport de 30 minutes par jour pour rester en bonne santé. A 30-minute workout every day is necessary to stay healthy. Il faut faire une séance de sport de 30 minutes par jour pour rester en bonne santé. Lire. Reading. Lire. Lire. Reading. J'adore lire des livres. I really like reading books. J'adore lire des livres. Jouer aux cartes. Playing cards. Jouer aux cartes. Jouer aux cartes. Carte. Playing cards. On joue souvent aux cartes en été. We often play cards in summer. On joue souvent aux cartes en été. Boucle d'oreille. Earring. Boucle d'oreille. Boucle d'oreille. Earring. Ma mère porte ses boucles d'oreilles en diamant. My mother is wearing her diamond earrings. Ma mère porte ses boucles d'oreilles en diamant. Collier. Necklace. Collier. Collier. Necklace. Le collier que tu portes a de belles pierres précieuses. The necklace you are wearing has beautiful gems. Le collier que tu portes a de belles pierres précieuses. Bag. Ring. Bag. Bag. 
ring. Où as-tu acheté ta bague? Where did you buy your ring? Où as-tu acheté ta bague? Caleçon. Boxer shorts. Caleçon. Caleçon. Boxer shorts. Le caleçon est un sous-vêtement pour homme. Boxer shorts are an undergarment for men. Le caleçon est un sous-vêtement pour homme. Jupe. Skirt. Jupe. Jupe. Skirt. Elle porte une jupe jaune. She's wearing a yellow skirt. Elle porte une jupe jaune. Hamburger. 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 Le hamburger a été inventé aux États-Unis. Hamburgers were invented in America. Le hamburger a été inventé aux États-Unis. Cheeseburger. 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 Un cheeseburger est un hamburger avec une tranche de fromage. A cheeseburger is a hamburger with a slice of cheese. Un cheeseburger est un hamburger avec une tranche de fromage. Pizza. 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 La pizza est un plat italien qui est aussi populaire à travers le monde. Pizza is an Italian dish which is also popular around the world. La pizza est un plat italien qui est aussi populaire à travers le monde. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Les hot dogs sont riches en sel, matière grasse et conservateur. Hot dogs are high in salt and fat and contain preservatives. Les hot dogs sont riches en sel, matière grasse et conservateur. Pour boire. Tip. Pour boire. Pour boire. Tip. J'ai laissé un pourboire pour la femme de chambre sur l'oreiller. I left a tip for the maid on the pillow. J'ai laissé un pourboire pour la femme de chambre sur l'oreiller. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. If you're learning a language all by yourself, then you should know that there's a way to boost your chance of success, boost your motivation, your progress. It's simply by including other people in your language learning journey. And in today's episode, you'll discover one, how adding a human dynamic boosts your motivation, and two, how you can apply this tactic to your language learning. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Making Movies Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words like actor, screenwriter, director, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. 
This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and more. Third, can you talk about fishing in your target language? Learn how to say words like fishing rod, bait, and fishing net with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, must know online shopping vocabulary. If you like shopping, then you'll want to be able to talk about it in your target language. With this one minute lesson, you'll learn must know words like sale, add to cart, and much more. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. Part one, how adding a human dynamic boosts your motivation. So first, here's a question for you. How do you think most people start learning a language? Leave a comment. Most people start learning by themselves. They'll either watch YouTube videos like this, download an app, or if they're a little more serious, buy a textbook. But after the first week or month, most self-learners also end up falling off because of a lack of motivation. It's pretty hard to motivate yourself and keep yourself going. It's hard because you have to, one, rely on yourself to motivate yourself, two, do the learning, and three, do the practice. All of this is a lot of work for one person. Sure, there's a small group of super self-motivated people out there that can do it and stick with it, but that's not the case for most of us. So then, if you want to boost your motivation and not have to rely on yourself, that's where you should start getting other people involved in your language learning journey. Just picture a graph where on the y-axis you have motivation, and on the x-axis you have the chance of success. So first you have self-study, and that's probably closest to lower motivation and probably a low chance of succeeding. As you move further to the right where you start involving tutors or joining group classes, the higher your motivation and chance of success becomes. Does this mean motivation is lowest when you're on your own? Yes and no. There are people who are very motivated on their own, but motivation tends to come and go for many of us. And the last thing you want to do is rely on a feeling that may not always be there. But when you start including more personal connections, live interactions, maybe someone you speak with at a cafe, you have more reasons and more pressure to keep on going. For example, if you have a tutor that expects you to do homework and come prepared next time, if you have a language partner whom you want to impress, or if you're in a language class, you want to be better than other students. The point is, the more people you involve, the more anchor points and commitments you have to the language, and these boost your motivation. In psychology, this is called social facilitation, or the audience effect. When you're with other people, or when you think someone is watching you, you put a little pressure on yourself. And for many people, this can have a positive result. But if you're on your own, you wouldn't try so hard. So just to recap, a lot of us start learning on our own. And in the case of language learning, there will always be self-study involved. But if you want to take it to the next level, then you should follow that graph. The only issue is, the more you go up that graph, the more expensive it gets. It's very affordable to learn on your own. Once you start involving others, such as a teacher, it starts getting expensive. So it's up to you as the learner here. So, if you're interested in adding a human dynamic, what can you do? Part two, how you can apply this to your language learning. One, give our Premium Plus plan a try and get access to your own teacher. You also get weekly assignments from your teacher, which adds a nice layer of accountability to your learning. Two, enroll in an online class. And this is something we started offering for a few of our major languages, Japanese, English, Chinese, Italian, Korean, French, and Spanish. Three, get an online or in-person tutor. Now, teachers and classes can be pricey, but there are other ways to learn with others. Four, Get a study buddy or join a learning community. Learning and competing with others will definitely have a positive impact on your motivation and language progress. Five, simply talk with others about your language goals and your current progress. When you're surrounded by people talking about how much they've learned or what goals they hit or missed, you'll be more inspired to hit your own goals. Six, track your progress and share it on your social media for others to see. For example, if you keep a daily planner, write in, I did three lessons today, or spend 30 minutes on learning a language, and share that. 
Once you start involving more people in your language journey, whether for learning or for practice, adding that extra human element will boost your productivity and motivation and help you reach your language goals. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to learn a new language in the new year. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Since you're learning the language and coming across new words all the time, do you have trouble remembering new words? If you do, then there's a proven and powerful learning method that'll help you learn new words and phrases fast, easily remember the tough words you struggle with, and get you fluent sooner than later. In fact, all serious language learners use this learning method in one form or another. And the good news is, you can do this all with our flashcards inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Now, how do flashcards help you learn words and phrases faster? These flashcards use something called spaced repetition learning, which is a science-backed learning method that spaces out your learning over time and quizzes you on words at the right times so that you never forget them. Here's how the flashcards work. Once you start learning, they start tracking your progress and sort your cards for you. So the tough words that you struggle with, you'll see them more often in a study session. And the easy words that you get right, they'll start getting spaced out. You'll see them again in two days, then five days, then 13 days, and so on. At which point, these words will start going into your long-term memory and you'll never forget them. Once you're done with a study session, that's it for the day. Your flashcards will remind you when to study again, so you never forget what you learned last time. So here's how you take advantage of this powerful study tool. Simply access flashcards in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. Inside, you already have the 100 must-know words deck prepared for you. Just click on study and start session to start learning. You'll see a flashcard with the word in the target language. Do you know the meaning? Click on show answer to confirm the meaning. Then, mark it as correct or incorrect. Based on your answer, the flashcards will start sorting and spacing out the words for you. Then, move on to the next card in the deck until you're done with the session. You can study with three modes. Recognition. Get the word in the target language and see if you know the meaning. Production. Get the meaning and see if you know it in the target language. Or listening. Hear the word or phrase and see if you know the meaning. Choose one two, or all three modes of learning. You can create flashcard decks from key phrases presented in lessons, the 2000 core word list, words saved in your word bank, and our free vocab lists. Want to see how many words and phrases you've mastered? Visit My Stats for your daily, weekly, and monthly progress breakdown to see your personal study stats. So take advantage of the smart flashcards right now. The top 100 must-know words deck is already ready and waiting for you. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you want to learn your target language with our learning program, and if you're wondering which plan to choose, then today you'll discover how our premium plan helps you master the language with one clear learning pathway to follow, which makes sticking with learning easier than ever. Special lessons that get you speaking and understanding conversations in minutes from beginner to advanced and over 15 study tools that will lock the language into your brain. But first, if you don't have access to our language learning program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Now, how does the premium plan help you learn a language faster? One, you get one simple learning pathway of lessons to follow. If you've always felt that language learning is overwhelming because there's so much to do, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and vocabulary, and there's no clear path to take, well, you're not wrong. So that's exactly why you get one learning pathway with our program. The learning pathway is simply a pathway of lessons for you to take. 
meaning you now have a clear path to follow instead of wondering about how you should learn the language or what to do next. Just follow the pathway, take the lessons and complete the assessments from lesson one to two to three and from the absolute beginner level up to advanced. Now let's talk about the lessons themselves. Second, you learn the language fast with audio and video lessons, which means you won't be reading walls of text here. Our audio and video lessons are easy to finish and allow you to absorb the language as you listen or watch. Plus, you get exposed to native speech, something you won't get in textbooks. So press play on a lesson. You'll learn a practical conversation, get every word and grammar rule explained by our teachers, and start speaking in minutes. All of this takes minutes because lessons are just a few minutes long, so you can learn fast and in small blocks of time, whether on your computer or with our app if you're on the go. The lessons alone are enough to get you speaking, but to make sure you practice and retain the language, you can use our study tools. Third, you get 15 plus premium study tools that lock the language into your memory and help you learn faster. Here's a small taste of what you can do. You can practice speaking and perfect your pronunciation with the voice recorder, reach conversational fluency with our 2000 most common words list, Master words and phrases fast with our spaced repetition flashcards. Read along with the lesson notes to help the grammar rules sink in faster. Understand everything instantly with the translations. Sharpen your listening skills with the line-by-line -line audio for each lesson. Immerse yourself in native conversations with the dialogue tracks. Test yourself on what you've learned with assessments and much more. So if you want to learn your target language, and if you don't have access to our learning program, then sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account, and you'll get a free seven-day trial to our premium plan. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.